going to have a, a big role to play in it. And uh, I think uh, it's just a matter of uh, playing good defensively in our zone and uh, trying to make the simple plays and uh, use the board. That's what we know from them. They have a great offensive team. And so we have to be uh, really disciplined. And uh, I think we have to keep the same way that we, we've done in the past in the series. You know, we had some discipline. We played a good defensive game. And uh, I think that's going to be the key tonight because we know they can score a lot of goals. So we're gonna be, uh, we have to be really smart defensively, especially in our zone. That's been the key to score goals, put traffic, you jam the net, and go for rebounds. So uh, you have to be a, a defenseman. You have to play the third guys uh, in, the, in a smart way, you know, to be in front of them and try to push them away so we can see the puck really good. Well, I don't think uh, we got to relax. I think you just got to be excited for tonight's game. Like it's the Calder Cup Finals, and uh, I just think uh, we got to come out uh, the way we did in that pregame skate today and just be uh, focused on start having a good start to the game. It's going to be the biggest series I've ever played and uh, for me hopefully I hope I just have a good series and uh, hopefully the team comes in on top. You know, we've got a lot of guys in there who have uh, playoff experience before. We've got an awful, awful lot of guys in the room who have won championships and they're really making sure that they stay focused uh, game at a time by themselves. So our veteran players have done a real good job making sure the guys are ready to go. And our veteran guys sure provide us with some timely leadership and some well-needed leadership, but you know we've got some younger guys in our room too uh, who have a lot of good experience, uh, and we encourage them to lead when they have the opportunity. So we feel we've got a, you know different leadership from a lot of different uh, guys in our room. It has been that way all year, and uh, for us, uh, it's nothing new. It's just business as usual. Well, you can't discount the importance of tonight's game for the Hamilton Bulldogs, and incidentally, Hamilton and Houston did not meet during the regular season. But on paper, folks, it might look good because Hamilton is 2-0 when coming off a loss on home ice in the playoffs. And they're 3-0 in game two of the three previous series. So things look good on paper, though, but it isn't played on paper, is it, Scott? Well, they came out in game one in about the first seven minutes. If you, for some reason, had to leave after that point, you would have figured the game would have ended 10-0 because the Bulldogs came out and they were all over them from the beginning. They were up 7 nothing in shots at one point, and I think it was about 12-2 to two at one point as well. Then all of a sudden, Houston's forechecking started kicking in, and Hamilton started having a little bit of problems, which brings us to the three things I think Hamilton's going to have to do tonight. The first thing, they're going to have to be way better at getting the puck out of their own end quickly and not spending a lot of time in their own end. They're going to have to cut down on a lot of the ticky-tack and fancy passes they are doing in the neutral zone, which wasn't being effective. Get the puck in. Uh, don't play around with it in the neutral zone because they were just being picked off. And the third thing is, we've said this all year long, they have to get traffic in front of the net. Holmquist, the goalie, was outstanding. He made probably the save of the season at Cops Coliseum last game, a glove save late on Tony Salmolainen. But they have to get traffic in front of him. If they do, the stats that you just had about their success will continue. If they don't, if they play like they did for a lot of the middle of the game, by the last five minutes of the game, they were back doing what they did at the beginning. But for about 35 or 40 minutes, they weren't playing typical Hamilton Bulldogs hockey and what has happened is Houston has shown they're in the finals too they're not there by fluke they're a really good team they're very fast they're very disciplined and they have a great forecheck and if you don't try and break that down by playing smart and doing a few things differently from what they did they're not going to have a lot of success and one of the things that has impressed me about Houston in these playoffs so far is how well they play on the road and that usually gets you through some series and that's what they've been doing they do and, and Scott Brock brings up a very good point in, uh, in what Hamilton needs to do is get a guy in front of the net one of the guys who really stood out for Houston was Kyle Wanvig and this is a guy six foot two two twenty right right winger and this is a guy who was a Memorial Cup MVP in 2000 2001 with Red Deer and uh, he, he knows what it takes and he's been he, he drove the defense absolutely bananas and he was strong and, and it, Hamil Hamilton needs to get whether it's Sylvain Bluin or whether they dress Benjamin Carpentier and put him in front somebody some guys are gonna have to get in front because you, want, you don't want Holmquist to get into the groove as he was in game one. And the one guy for Hamilton who was going to the front last game is a guy who's been doing it all year, which is Benoit Graton, but he's not the, the guy you want standing in front of the net. He's a playmaker, and plus, at the end of the last game, with about five minutes left, uh, he took a penalty that wasn't great timing when he did run right over the goalie. They need a big body in front of the net, not a guy who, who's a small guy and who also you need him for his playmaking ability. A guy that basically does it to make a living at that's, this that's uh, right. stage That's right. You need someone who's, who's going to take up a lot of space. The go most goalies can see over Graton's head. That's yeah. right. So you need a guy who's going to block <laughs> the view. And Graton, incidentally, he's on a four-game assist streak with the team. That leads the team right now. And the other big gunner is uh, Jason Ward, 
who is also leading. He's leading the league, leading the league. in uh, playoff points, nine goals and eight assists for 17 points, and he is currently on a six-game point streak. So while it's the big guys who are getting it done for the Bulldogs, getting some points in that, it's them doing what they do best. And that's not Graton standing in front of the net. No, that's not. They, Jason Ward, the reason he's leading the league in scoring right now in the playoffs, if you look at the numbers, he's also leading the team in shots by a big margin. Jason Ward, every single game that he's involved in, that he plays in, he's involved. Every, you don't see Jason Ward, and this is a reason why he's the Canadiens' top prospect now. Every game he plays, you notice Jason Ward on the ice. He doesn't float around. He may disappear for a few minutes here and there, but you are going to see him every period. So at some point, you're going to say, wow, you know, the, he just did something there that made him stand out above a lot of the players. They need everybody doing that in this game. And uh, this is not to say that most of the guys weren't. There was a good effort last game, mm -hmm. but they had to change some things the way they were doing it. It's not a question necessarily entirely of effort. It's effort plus the way you pull it off. One of the things that happened the other night, Glenn, was everything was a good goal. And uh, both goalies played really well. You'd be shocked if either coach went to another goalie tonight. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, we don't know who's starting right now because we, we're not in that contact with Cops Coliseum. But I would have to say that I would think it, was, it would be Ty Conklin and Johan Holmquist, Holmquist for Houston. Uh, but one thing that I, if Hamilton plays like uh, you, you were talking about Tony Salmalainen and, and uh, Rafi Torres. Both those players uh, were probably the hardest working Bulldogs in game number one. Giving out bone crushing checks was Rafi Torres. I know the rest of the Bulldogs are going to step up and play that way tonight. Game two, Calder Cup Finals, coming at you right now. Let's go back down to uh, Cops Coliseum. Todd Crocker and Roger Turnin. Guys, take it away. We're here at Cops Coliseum, a packed house and more here at Cops as the Houston Arrows and the Hamilton Bulldogs face off in game two. Starting out for the Bulldogs, Ty Conklin in net, Kari Hakana on D, and you're looking at Tony Salmelain in the left wing as the puck drops, picked up by the Houston Arrows right off the top, and they move it behind the net quickly, looking for the first offensive opportunity out there. The net knocked off its moorings as we get the first whistle. Conklin working back and forth in front of the crease, trying to get a read on the forward behind the play. Make sure no one tucked in an early one. The Bulldogs certainly don't need that. We there we get a look at Conklin. Strong game in game one. A good game looking one. goaltender that in game one faced so many shots. Roger was so good. 37 saves on 39 shots fired at him by Houston. Get a quick look at a home squin. Home quest rather. Johan, Johan home quest in the net for Houston. He's got quite a run going since being acquired at the trade deadline. Up along the board, Salma Lane and dishes that one out. And it rolls all the way the other way. Jason Ward goes chasing after it. Benesek as well, former Bulldog. Dumped back into center ice as Francois Beauchamp on there to pick it up. Jason Ward started out at right wing. Mike Bishai at center. And the scratches for tonight. Carpentier is the puck dumped in there. Nate DiCasmiro, Sylvain Bluan, Ben Wagraton, and Peter Hogan. All scratches for tonight for Jeff Ward's. Hamilton Bulldogs. Jeff Ward coming in in the latter half of the season, Roger, and doing a spectacular job as far as the Bulldogs are concerned. And yeah, a very difficult task for Julian unexpectedly, obviously, getting the Montreal Canadiens head coaching job. Leaves the reins to uh, his then assistant, Jeff Ward, who's done a very admirable job. Here we get a quick look at the uh, Houston Arrows head coach, Todd McClellan, former NHLer. He and Jeff Ward, uh, assistant coaches for Claude Julian at one point in the Canadian junior system. Pavlikovsky dumps that one in. Conklin goes behind the net, picks it up. Fired up along the boards. Skitters at the blue line, kept in. And now traffic keeps it in again. Picked up in the shot by Dominic Kelly. Backhand in the air, and it's missed. And the Bulldogs are able to pick it up and move it back into center. And a late addition here to the Bulldog lineup, number 57, Joseph Ballet. Late hit over by the Bulldogs boards, and we got a first penalty of the game. Well, the Bulldogs end up with a fairly solid lineup out there. Only two scratches on behalf of the Houston Arrows. Eric Reitz and Mark Cohen. Here comes the penalty to number 26, Kyle Landvig. And the Bulldogs are going to go to the power play. A quick look there at the uh, boards. Bulldogs would love an early goal in this game, Todd. Beat home, quest early, and get some confidence going. Bulldogs 12 for 98 on the power play. Fuche in there against Jarrett Stoll. Too many men on the ace of the uh, call. 
Stoll wins that draw. Right back out front. Bulldogs get set up. Little D help from Hakana. Real opportunity here. The Bulldogs' fourth-ranked playoff in the uh, fourth-ranked power play unit, rather, in the playoffs this year in the American Hockey League against the Arrows, who are only 18th on the penalty kill. Back up for Hosa. That one goes by him. And the Houston Arrows and the Hamilton Bulldogs, two teams that look similar, of course, only a couple of points separating the two of them as far as the top of the American Hockey League is concerned overall. And we've got and another, get another penalty coming up here Step as Stefan Bayou grabs a seat. Arrows leading playoff score goes into the box and there's a double benefit. Dogs can get him off the ice for two minutes as well as the two-man advantage. Certainly not hesitating to blow the, uh, blow the whistle tonight. Referee Dan O'Rourke. It was an early goal in game one that looked like the Bulldogs were storming the net for the first eight to ten minutes, and then they just fell off toward the middle of that period and never came back. Komisarek gets it down low, back door! Not there for Jason Ward. He couldn't get control of the puck. Roche in the corner, pulls it out of there, and fires at the length of the ice. Good attack there at the edge of the net, and just went and missed Ward's, uh, Ward's stick there on the back door play. Minute ten left to go. In the two-man advantage, Plakanek across to Ward. He looks out front, fires it up high in the slot, and Sal Malanen couldn't pull that one in. Still looking for something. Hainsey down low. They try to go back, cross up to Konosarek, but the diagonal pass didn't get through. It's a good penalty killing there by a tired arrows bunch as they go off for a change. 45 seconds left in the two-man advantage. Hainsey across the line. Rolls that up along the near boards. Hosa in there, digging it out of there. Getting a little help, Ryder behind the net. Looks out front, Hainsey couldn't corral it, and it's fired out again. And a good job being done here by the Houston Arrows as far as the penalty kill is concerned. 25 seconds left in the two-man advantage. Here comes Marc-Andre Bergeron with it. He's apt to shoot hard at the net. When he gets an opportunity, this time he dumps it in. Hosa throws it back out front. Chopped down by Stoll. And now off the boards, Bobby Allen picks it up. Controls things. Six seconds left in the two-man advantage. Bergeron! Three now! Backhander Ryder sends it off into the corner. Now back to five on four. Bergeron. Out front! Laying there! Backhanded! Scores! Michael Ryder! Beautiful rebound control by Ryder into the top of the crease. He picked up off home from his pads, went to his backhand and roofed it. The Bulldogs up early 1-0 a few short seconds after the first Houston Arrow penalty had expired. Ryder continues that hot run of uh, regular season that Michael had. Here's the replay. Bergeron goes into the corner. It's fired out in front. The pass goes awry. Ryder goes over to his backhand. The defenseman there not in time to take it away from him. He rifles it up in the stick side corner in behind Holmquist. The Bulldogs up one to nothing on that power play marker. Nice looking control from Michael Ryder, and the Bulldogs score first again, as they did on Monday night, or rather Wednesday night, in a 2-1 loss. Knocked down by Ballet, he wants another chance. Here's Placanek out of the corner. The Bulldogs still coming hard. Komisar gets it behind the net. Now off into the corner. And back out come the Arrows across the blue line. They've got some offense of their own that they can put out there and nearly do there. Back out into center. Rita goes chasing and rolls in on Holmquist. He's able to cover that one up and get the whistle. Jared Stoll and Bergeron, just like the replay show, getting the assist on that marker time. 3.32, the official time of that goal. And you say the Bulldogs got out early in game one, but then just kind of backed off about 10 minutes into that first period. Uh, Houston controlled, and there were some great saves. There was nothing that Holmquist could do on that. Nobody there to bail him out. And on the defenseman, only a second too late to tie up the stick. Michael Ryder, good control out front. Hakana battling on the far board. He dishes it back into the corner. Rafi Torres is there. Gets it back out front. Hinge was all tied up. And for a moment, the red light went on, but the goal, or the puck, rather, never entered the goal. Here's Wallin. He dumps it in. And Houston hasn't had too many offensive opportunities. One of those rare occasions where the tip-in, I think, actually helped in stopping the puck. 
Wallin again. This time moves it into Kyle Wanvig. Wanvig tries to wrap around, throws it up front, and a shot on the backside from Wallin. Hits the side of the net. Jump back the other way. Bill Lindsay goes back for this one. The Bulldogs make a change. We're 5-10 into this first period. The Bulldogs up 1-0. Thank you for joining us all across the Golden Horseshoe tonight in Game 2 of the Calder Cup. This one slides past everybody. And the Bulldogs go in to try and take control with Michael Ryder doing the forward checking. Dump back out. Nearly gets by Bobby Allen, but he picks it up. Allen off a skate. This one taken away, but unable to control it was Pavlikovsky, and it's dumped back out into center. Houston, with the last three or four rushes, really getting the Bulldogs back on their heels and the uh, speed of the forecheck, pushing the defenseman to make plays quickly. Back the other way, Pavlikovsky. Allen gets in there, knocks it around, rolls out front, and Conklin is quick to put the glove on that and hang on. And now some pushing and shoving out front of the net. John Guy Trudeau with the extra whack. That will quickly be taken care of. They should get the message already that O'Rourke will not hesitate to throw a couple bodies in the box if he has to. John Guy Trudell is one of those enigmas really in the American Hockey League that can put the puck in the net in this, uh, in this league, it seems, at an alarming rate, and then just never seems to be able to do it when he gets to the NHL. Uh, knocking a lot of high-scoring high, uh, high scoring American Hockey League players, and in the IHL days, IHLers as well, was that uh, given, given an opportunity in the NHL, they're not afforded the ice time or the line mates to try and get that sort of production done. They end up on the fourth line in a checking role and don't get to show their wares. Blue Jay against Bashai. Now it's picked up by the arrows. On the half boards. Right in on Conklin and he makes that save. Conklin awake early here. Important for him to have a solid period. Not that he didn't the other night with 37 stops, but certainly you want that confidence to continue. Well, these two teams look raring to go at morning skate today, both with a lot of speed in both their practices, both short practices officially, but both teams, almost to a man, stayed on the ice after the coach called the practice uh, for a good long time afterwards. And if we take a look uh, around the crowd here tonight, uh, just an outstanding crowd here in uh, Cops Coliseum to come and support the Bulldogs. Looked like the message has got out as far as the Bulldogs are concerned. You got the bottom bowl, I would say almost at capacity, Todd, short of a couple of empty seats, but the upper bowl is more than making up for it. Certainly a large crowd compared to regular season. And somewhere out there, there are some uh, wonderful fans who have donned some playoff beards. The Bulldogs gave out a thousand beards tonight to a section in Cops Coliseum, and uh, those folks are, are sporting their playoff beards as well as the players, of course, out there doing, uh, some of them doing the same thing. <laughs> the AHL, the age of the players, sometimes prevents the full beard. <laughs> End up with a little stubble chin. You mentioned before, Todd, about the speed of the game day practice today, and real compliment to the parent organizations. The Oilers, of course, famous for good skating teams and, and drafting the players that, that play that style. Minnesota, of course, the parent organization of the Houston Arrows, much the same, all their success in the NHL playoffs due to team speed. And that's a big factor, and I, I think how a lot of these clubs can uh, build themselves competitively against the higher price clubs. Into the circle goes Kluche and Bashai again. Kluche takes it into the corner. Nice little dish. Doesn't hardly go anywhere as Bashai puts a stick on it. Now nobody seems to want it, and Hainsey does come in and get it and clear it out. The arrows control, however. Dumped in by Roach. Jay Henderson in there doing a fairly good job for the Arrows. Bumped off the puck. Sylvain Cloutier trying to get to it again, and Hainsey just hand passes it up the boards. A little shot goes nowhere as it ricochets off Komisarek's skate. And a free ride there over top of Conklin. They'll take advantage to rub the goaltender if they get a chance. Houston captain Sylvain Cloutier. A few words to say for Komisarek. We watch Dan Kavanaugh. A little slow to get up, Kavanaugh was. And... Uh, Probably, probably wise considering you're all over the goalie. <laughs> a lot of pressure there in that particular shift by the by the uh, arrows forwards, really pushing the uh, Hamilton Bulldog defenseman. Stick around, folks. The Hamilton Thunder game is coming up next. Canadian Professional Soccer League. At, uh, fantastic level of soccer being played here in Hamilton as the Thunder play their home opener, and that will be on after this game. 
at the blue line. Picked up by the Arrows. Down into the corner. Placanic goes after. Bobby Allen in there digging for it for the Bulldogs. Seven minutes off the clock, and the Bulldogs up 1-0 here in the first period of Game 2 of the Calder Cup Final. And now the crowd getting a little excited as they'd like to see the Bulldogs clear this puck, and they get it done there. Oshaman to Zolino with a little uh, push and shove after the play. Back across the line, but offside as Tuzzolino just had a step ahead. He had a great goal this morning, Tuzzolino did. He, uh, he fell down coming across that uh, heightened blue line that they have in practice. He tripped up, but he still scored. Peter Cockham was out there, and he just kind of half gave up as, uh, as Tuzzolino knocked one in as he was sliding into home base. He got pretty excited about it. Don't know if we'll see a repeat of that here tonight. Probably not. Based on the way these two goaltenders stood on their head in game one, I do very much if you'll see it. Too much on the line. Stoll dumps that one in, and it gets by, and Holmquist has to come out and play it along. Back up at the line. Kept in by the Bulldogs. Stoll still working on it on the half boards. Comes loose. Michael Ryder, who's got the goal here tonight. So far, Juan Big up along the far boards for the Arrows. Hakana working it too. Michael Ryder does some nice stick work to get that puck loose, but didn't have any help after that. Dumped in by the Arrows. They're going to make a couple of changes. Eight minutes off the clock. Bergeron battling down there in the corner. Picked up and dumped back out, and the Bulldogs are going to make some changes. Stoll and Ricard Wallina all tied up at center ice there. Preventing Stoll from getting away and fighting that icing call, and the faceoff's going to come way back into the Bulldog zone. Chris Diamond trying to buy a couple of favors from the linesman there, picking up the puck. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that actually works for him. Yeah. Never does. No. Certainly not in the third period if he picked it up in the first. <laughs> Pick up the check, perhaps, for lunch. Yeah, yeah. You know, then maybe you've got something. Making some friends. Down in the corner. Little battle for it. Allen intensifying the battle just a little bit, throws the leg in there, trying to get it loose. Bill Lindsay goes fishing, pulls it out and gets it to Chad Hens. And Hens, careful with the puck, moves it along to Lindsay. He's got Torres on the opposite side. Bill Lindsay moves it down the boards. He's rubbed out a little bit by Diamond. And now it's back up, and the Bulldogs are making a defensive change, and Komisarek has to come back. Picks that one up for icing, and they get the whistle and an opportunity to bring it all the way back deep inside Houston territory. 11-20 left in the first period, Todd, four to three. Low shots on goal fired so far by both clubs, but uh, obviously one that did the trick for the Bulldogs. Uh, game one, probably a real feeling out process, just getting their first look at the arrows and the arrows of the dogs. Off the draw, the arrows win that one. Put up along the far boards. Comes loose. Still working on it, Hainsey, and we've got a penalty coming up. Delayed call by O'Rourke there. He was almost as if he made the call up after the uh, after the uh, elbow struck Kavanaugh. Accidental for sure, Hainsey heading off. It should be a two-minute minor for the elbow. It is, in fact, and Hainsey will grab a couple of minutes for a seat. And uh, Kavanaugh afterwards didn't seem immediately affected, but... Yeah, but just a little, a little bit after that, he did seem like he realized, realized, hey, that was an elbow. Hey, I got an elbow in the head, and uh, I better play this up. Get a look at Hainsey, who should be uh, probably on the Montreal Canadian blue line next year. And, of course, if he's not, he'll be a Hamilton Bulldog. Absolutely. The Bulldogs, of course, all their Oiler prospects will head off to be the Toronto Roadrunners. Tom Kelly can't do anything with it, and it's knocked back by the... Bulldogs as they are on the penalty kill here at the moment. Rafi Torres out there buzzing around. And takes a huge shot at Pavlikovsky and leaves him lying on the ice. And this is a penalty for Rafi Torres. And the Houston Arrows are going to get Pavlikovsky. He, he, he ran right through him up the half boards. Blind trying to do the toss of pass and Torres, what I believe was a clean hit. Torres grabs a seat. He skated by Pavlikovsky just to see if he was okay. He dropped like a stone as soon as he was hit. I don't. I didn't see a lot of acting on that one. 
A minute 30 is going to be the advantage as far as the Houston Arrows are concerned. Keep an eye here as O'Rourke reports to the timekeeper's bench. Here's the replay. He comes over to the half boards to make the play, and Torres maybe a touch high with the arms, but... Yeah. Pavlikovsky was bent over, hard to say, but he did get the uh, did get the gloves out there in front of him. He, he probably didn't even need to do that. He could have run him over just the same otherwise. But I would have thought they would have went with the elbow just by the way his arms were extended on the collision, but uh, they've called him for roughing instead. Nonetheless, it doesn't look like uh, Pavlikovsky may not be of use uh, anytime soon to the Houston Arrows. Out of Slovakia, a veteran. Played in Sweden last year. High hopes when he was initially drafted into the uh, National Hockey League. Never really materialized. Another smaller uh, player during the heyday of a large player in the National Hockey League. Penalty killing for the Dogs, second in the AHL, so obviously uh, that'll come in handy during this set. Uh, and Pavlikovsky being helped off the ice there by Henderson and Cloutier, and he'll go right down the tunnel. Straight to the room as we get a look at Torres, who's joined uh, Hainsey in the Bulldog penalty box. Power play for the Arrows, 10th this season in the AHL uh, playoffs. Of course, this is the same situation the Bulldogs got their goal on. A five on three, though it was the five on four. And just to the tail end conclusion, which is all too familiar for the uh, non-power play team goal. And so for the penalty kill out there, the Bulldogs have decided to go with Jason Ward, Mike Bishai, and Bobby Allen. And the Houston Arrows get things started by dumping it in. Bobby Allen leans hard into it, but it's kept in. Juan Big in the corner. Trudell out there as well. Also working the puck, Curtis Murphy. He throws it over. Big shot and gloved by Conklin. John Guy Trudell leaned into that one with a lot. Mark just off the side of the net, Nat Domicelli. Alternate captain for the Arrows, longtime AHLer. Calgary fans will remember him for a few days at St. John's. Well, after this season, they'll remember him for a few days ago in St. John. <laughs> also out there, of course, Dominic Kelly, Travis Roche. Here's Trudell again. Goes down low. Picked up on the backside. No, Bobby Allen breaks it up, knocks it to the corner. And Stoll is able to put it off the glass and knock it down the ice. 45 seconds left to go in the five on three. They're going to leave the same guys out there. We'll battle along the boards. Donna Kelly puts it up. Roche. Back to Murphy. Murphy wanted to lean in. To Trudell Murphy. Big shot. Scores. I believe you're going to see a tip in right at the front of the crease. Perhaps by Dominic Kelly as the puck rose over Conklin when it went in and he saw O'Rourke answering a question from one of the Bulldog defenders. And he looks like he's signaling the jersey number. Here's the shot from the point from Murphy. He goes over to the wing, takes the one-timer back to get Allen at a position, fires it, and you'll see it rise there right at the very end. Dominic Kelly parked on top of the crease. That beats Conklin to tie the game at one. Hainsey automatically released from the box and still a minute three on the power play for the Arrows with Torres' penalty. So the Arrows were able to do what the Bulldogs could not and that is score with the five on three. And now they've got a five on four to work with for 50 seconds. Bill Lindsay who leads the American League in the playoffs in shorthanded goals is out there. He's working with Hens. Lindsay will go off now. That brings on Jason Ward. Beauchemin out there as well, Marc-Andre Bergeron. Down into the corner, Bergeron picks it up, puts it into the corner, trying to get this one up and out. Ward doesn't take a whack at it, but it ends up outside anyway. McCulloch, couldn't do anything with it. Waleen moves it back to Bayou. Down into the corner. That one. Bubbles down the ice, and way out of the net is Holmquist to play it. He moves it up, and Ward nearly traps it. He does. Bashai steals it away. Ward couldn't get loose. First week of the season, that's an obstruction call. Here in the playoffs, no way. Cavosi moving the puck now for the Arrows. He's bumped off of it. Bobby Allen moves it up and out, and we're at five on five. Chad Hins works it down to Bobby Allen. 
And the Bulldogs happy to clear that one out and get things sorted out as far as personnel is concerned. One apiece to score here at Cops Coliseum with just over eight minutes left to play in the first period. Bill Lindsay picks it up. Goes over to Chad Hins. Hins has got some help in Torres. Drifts one in there, hoping to find Torres streaking in, but it was broken up nicely by Roche. Down in the corner, the battle continues. Torres wants the backhanded wraparound, and it squirted out. Laid there, and Henderson picked it up as the only player near it. Goes a long one at Conklin. Passed that one Torres on that last brush, and one off the back of the net to himself. Dumped down into the corner. McCullough couldn't do anything with it. Bergeron wanted to take the big shot. He's hit from behind into the boards and knocked back in. Bergeron took just a little too much time setting that one up. Here's Joseph Ballet, late addition here for the Bulldogs. Battling along the boards. Dominic Kelly couldn't do anything with it. Placanic cleans in and sends it wide. He rebound on that shot as he made his way left of the net and kicked it to the right after hitting the backboard. Here come the arrows back the other way. Tuzzolino throws it down into the corner. Jean-Guy Trudel is back there. Beauchemin picks it up for the Bulldogs. Yosef Ballet couldn't do anything with it. Now <laughs> over skating it and able to pick it up. Here's Ballet. Wallin couldn't get it done. Beauchemin long shot. Weak and kicked away easily by Holmquist. A lot of back and forth action and chances for both teams. Great opportunity for the Arrows and Hosa takes his man and plants him right in the net. He got tied up right in front of Conklin at the last second you saw Hoss, Hosa hold up. Conklin moves to his left. Insert the arrow forward. Well, we'll take this opportunity to take a break and come right back. Let's go to the studio. Joining us on the set now, Rick Natras, uh, Calder Cup winner, Stanley Cup winner, and uh, Rick, good to see you again. Thank you. Tell us about uh, what the Hamilton Bulldogs have to do defensively. Well, I think I went to the first game. It was a pretty good game. It was a game of goaltenders that game, but I thought the Hamilton Bulldogs, their defensemen weren't moving the puck quick enough, and as a result, they were standing still. And when you stand still as a defenseman, it makes the opposition... Uh, very easy to track your passing, meaning your passing lanes are minimized, and then when that happens, you're not going to make good passes, and you're not going to be able to go stick to stick, and I thought Hamilton didn't do a very good job at that, and one of the reasons why is because Houston has got a, such a strong forecheck, and they finished their checks, and Hamilton as a defensive corp, they got to get back, do a little bit of interfering for their partner, make that stick to t stick pass, or off the wall, and make it a foot race in the neutral zone. It wasn't a big surprise to any of us to see uh, Hamilton with the two-man power play advantage. And then a little later on in the period, um, Houston comes back and they get a two-man advantage as, as well, Glenn. Well, uh, first of all, I mean, the, to, to put your team down uh, two men with a very undisciplined penalty, is, uh, is it, w it was a bad penalty to take. And Houston will... Uh, moved the puck very quickly, and, uh, and, and they, they took advantage of, of their, their five-on-three chance. 1-1 one, one through uh, the little bit of the first period here. Some action remaining. Let's go back down to Cops Coliseum. We're back here at Cops Coliseum. We'll just take a uh, quick look at this again. And they see cut of the net. Hosa had him tied up. Not necessarily a trip, but certainly a guiding move. Failed over the last second. Hosa finds himself in the box for two minutes. And the Bulldogs down a man again. Both goals, power play goals so far in this contest. From both clubs, it's tied at one. Little chip out front and a nice move by Walleen, but it didn't get done. Mayu now on the half board. Goes back up to Rose, set up nicely. Lot of traffic and Coughlin smothers that one. Looked dangerous. When big went to war there with Andre, uh, Mark andre Bergeron right on top of Coughlin's crease. Good ability by Coughlin to find the loose puck to get the trapper on it to get the whistle. Dan O'Rourke, very liberal with the whistle tonight. His linesman, Mark Shuchik and Kevin Hastings. See the Bulldogs fans with the uh, Thundersticks made famous by the Anaheim Angels during last series, last season's rather, World Series run. Now does that mean the Bulldogs are pulling out a rally monkey a little bit later in the series? Yeah. There's on speculation. Now. Perhaps this north, it'll be a rally beaver. Along the half boards, Veyu. Up to Murphy. Veyu goes down, 
behind the net, gets it back. Wallin, back to Bayou, a little pitch and catch behind the net now. Back up high, Murphy picks it up, wanted to lean in, didn't have anything. And now they're trying to find the right shot, the perfect shot. Down low they go again, 45 seconds left to play in the power play. There's a little slider out front, and holding is going to be the call here. The Bulldogs in a situation where they were doing a great job holding off that, that power play. Kept Houston to the perimeter, wouldn't give him that break-in move. Ricard Wallin, that's the call. Third leading scorer for the Arrows this uh, playoff season. We'll just go over the goals at 332 of the first here. It was uh, Ryder on the power play from Stoll and Bergeron. And then answering back on the five on three was Dominic Kelly from Murphy and Wanbig at 1015. And that's where we sit right now with 520 left to go here in the first period. One apiece. I'm Todd Crocker with Roger Turnin here at Cops Coliseum for game two of the Calder Cup Final between the Houston Arrows and the Hamilton Bulldogs. Cavosi moving it through center, across the blue line, bumped off the puck, good job by Stoll and Hakata, and now behind the net. Picked up by Stoll again, he comes down the right one, leans in, and a rebound left there, but the Bulldogs were making a change. Michael Ryder the only one there, but he's dangerous enough for two. Six seconds left in the four on four. Here comes Hosa. Comes right out, Tuzzolino dumps it in and the Houston Arrows are going to make some changes and put some penalty killers out there. Definitely get some fresh legs out there as the speed picked up. Now the power play for the next minute. Try and get one back on the board for the Bulldogs to try and get, escape this first period with the goal advantage would be a huge benefit of it, obviously. Tough to find a flow, I think, for both these teams. And all you have is special teams. Ward with a big shot, and that one ends up going high. And he's pleading for the deflection to get the face off inside the zone. It Certainly was, looked like he had home push. Ooh. Was deflected, and Ward is going to go off for delay a game, it looks like. I don't know how they can ever make that call. Why would a player with, a, with an open net the shot at the net ever decide to fire it over the glass? Of Jason Ward's caliber. No call, but he does bring the face off outside the blue line. Well, that's one time when you argue it, and it seems to have paid off. Commissar. Here's Veyu. And the arrow's trying to break out with it. Off the skate of Hainsey. Commissar goes back for it. Moves it back up for Hainsey. And here comes Jason Ward. Slides it past the line, and what a move by Ward at the line. But nobody in the slot to take it the rest of the way. 3.35 left to play at 12 seconds left in the advantage for the Bulldogs. They may get one more shot at this. Coming in for it, Lindsay looks out front. Torres just couldn't get it back to Bobby Allen, and now Waleen comes in all alone. Boshamon gets quick to him, takes the shot on Conklin, who's good for that one. That was a beautiful little dump in play there. If, if, the, if the replay will include it from Boshamon, who put a high roller, real soft, caught Lindsay in full stride about center ice, who beat the defenseman back to the puck. Just couldn't get a winger free to get that shot on net. 3.15 left to go. A shot of the packed house here in the lower bowl at Cops Coliseum. It's great to see the hockey fans out here enjoying this extreme, extremely high level of hockey. And we are going to take a quick break and head things back to the studio at this moment. One-one here in the first period. Both teams scoring on the power play, but a 
Hamilton usually plays well with a big crowd, and it's a big crowd down there tonight, Scott. Yeah, I don't know if they have the graphic ready yet at this point, but uh, Hamilton has, has traditionally, this season anyway, done very well, done actually better the bigger the crowd is. And uh, you can see from the monitor today uh, from on TV that the crowd, uh, they've got a big crowd. If we look on here, under crowd of under 3,000 this year, they're playing 500. If it's 33,000 to 6,000, they're at a 741 clip, and 6,000 or more, they're at 889. Uh, we just talked to them down there tonight. They're expecting they're probably about 11. Uh, 11,000. The bottom bowl is full, and they've got about uh, six or seven sections upstairs that are full, and people still coming in. I was down there just before I came here tonight, and uh, they got a great thing going on. I almost wish we were down there tonight. They had a band playing, and they had shirts being thrown and shot off the roof of Cops Coliseum with the Master Blaster, and they had uh, free barbecue, and and the people were enjoying it. And it sort of says, uh, uh, you know, people will come out if it's an event. And it says something about, you know, it's not just the hockey game tonight. It's a big event, and people are willing to come out. They're willing to pay the uh, 28 bucks. And obviously, we're seeing the numbers there that uh, they seem to be enjoying themselves at this point. That's for sure. And one of the other things going on is a beard giveaway, a playoff beard down at the Coliseum. Take a look at the fans. They're, they're full grown down there. Let's go back to Todd and Roger. Bulldogs gave out 1,000 beards to a uh, section here at Comps Coliseum. People, of course, with their playoff beards on are uh, winning prizes all over the place. Three minutes left to go here in the first period, tied up at one apiece, and we're playing five on five. Do I sound surprised? You bet. Lots of penalties here in the first. There at the line, Ward steals it away. Great job by Jason Ward. Gets loose and then couldn't do any more with it. Sent back the other way, and the Bulldogs intercept. Bergeron. Waiting for help. Gets it. Sal Mullane and Ward. Ward is going to go off. Sal Mullane couldn't quite get to it again. Chad Hins out there working with him. And now they bring Bill Lindsay up. Hins comes across the line. Lindsay Hins throws it at the goaltender. And Holmquist makes the good save. Lindsay out front. Picked up. Hins takes a whack at it again. He's hungry for it. Oh, Shaman, a little flutter shot. And... Holmquist is able to get to that one. 2.09 left to go here in the first period, tied at one. And snake bit there on one of his opportunities in front of the net. Arrow defenseman actually stumbled and was falling to the ground, didn't jump in front of the shot, but merely tripped, landed right in front of him and took away the whole shot. We look at Dominic Kelly, who's on the scoreboard of the Arrows goal tonight. See a lot of playoff beards with the Houston Arrows over there. Just look at their whole bench. They're not really a, a high growth bench. Houston talk. <laughs> you see Ty Conklin with his mask off. He looks like Grizzly Adams. <laughs> Stole. Here's Hose out front back. Hitter still lying there. And Holmquist gets the phone books in the way. Stole jumps up on top of the crossbar to keep his skates away from the arrow netminder after the whistle. Beautiful little move by Hose there. Almost snuck it underneath the pads. See off the replay right off the face off there. The failed shot by Hosa picks up his rebound, goes to the backhand. Holmquist gets down with the stack just in time. Stoll there looking for the rebound and then dumps out of the way. Stoll. A lot of rumor mill talk in the NHL. He'll be the third or fourth line center next year in Edmonton and hopefully replacing what everyone assumes to be the departing Todd Marchand via unrestricted free agency. Off the draw. Stoll is tied up. And Cloutier looked like he had him pinned for the 10 count. But now they both get back up and join the play. Stoll throwing the body around. Jean-Guy Trudeau can't do anything with it. Here's Ryder. He's got some room. Still working it. Throws it out front. And Hosa had his stick lifted at the last moment. That sticks down. That puck is in. I don't think Holmquist would have had a chance to get over and make the stop. Minute 33, some good defensive play and good back checking by the Houston Arrows. Save one there. Lindsay coughs it up at the blue line. Comes back to help out again. They give it away to Veyu. Round behind the net, picked up out front, still laying there. Conklin looked like he wanted to play uh, hacky sack there with the puck and then decided, had enough of that game, going to hop on top of it. Minute 15 left to go. One apiece to score here in the first period of Game two of the Calder Cup final. Wanvig and Bergeron doing battle again on top of the crease line, and it was actually Wanvig with the one-handed tap that got a chance to dance that puck near Conklin, who got the trap on it to make the whistle. And Wanvig right over to O'Rourke to complain about Mark andre Bergeron. You see O'Rourke look at Bergeron, and then look back at Wanvig, and I think you really take care of yourself there, Kyle. 
Jarrett Stoll. One to Yanni Rita. Haven't called his name much tonight. It's Ward ducks and lets that one slide by him. Picked up by Murphy as icing is waved off. They feel that somebody could have got to that. Last minute of play here in the first period. Dumped in. Up along the far boards. That one dumped out by the Bulldogs. Rafi Torres is caught in deep there. The arrows come back out. Wallin throws one back the other way. Juan Vig puts the high stick on that one. And referee Dan O'Rourke calls that. They'll bring the play or the faceoff, rather, outside the blue line. Gordon Wallin. Get the intensity of a playoff series now. In the first period of the second, uh, second game getting underneath their belts. It's been a long old grind for these both these clubs as well. Well, there is, uh, there is only one must-win game in a series. But the Bulldogs sure have to try and uh, put a W in the column tonight. I don't think you want to go to Texas with the next three in Houston's barn. That's, that's bad news all the way around. Dump down into the corner. Beauchemin leans in, sends it up, but not out. Now it's picked up by Kavanaugh. Bashai tries to get in the way of that one. Allen down there, too. About five seconds left. They move it in towards Conklin, but Beauchemin puts a stick on it, and that's how the period will end. Well, one apiece to the score. Ryder at 332, and Dominic Kelly for the Arrows at 1015. Now, one heck of a hockey game here, and we set it off the top. Roger, if you were looking for a defensive battle, you weren't going to find it here. No, well, 11 power play opportunities awarded in game one. We're already halfway to that, and we've only played a period. Uh, six already tonight, and, and two of those, in fact, two-man advantages for both clubs, ironically, where the both goals come from, but certainly see the success the power play is going to have. Improved penalty killing. I thought Houston, uh, in the early stages of the first period, seemed to have the Bulldogs' defenders back on their skates a little bit, especially in the defensive zone. That forechecking was causing a problem. Bulldogs seem to become accustomed to that. We had a, saw a lot of sloppy play. Both teams are playing so well defensively. They're finding hard ways to try and break in and make some offense. Well, uh, we appreciate you as a viewer, and we thank you for watching all across the Golden Horseshoe on Talk Rocker with Roger Turnin. Stick around for the intermission. We will go back to the studio presently with Steve Foxcroft. One, one through one down at Cops Coliseum. And incidentally, if you're tuning in to our uh, station tonight to check out the soccer action, that will be coming up immediately following Calder Cup action here on the Cable 14 network. That's the Hamilton Thunder taking on Toronto. Soccer action coming up immediately following the game. An interesting first period, Glenn. I thought Hamilton came out on fire a little bit, but they looked to be a little panicky with that two-man advantage. Well, we go back to the two-man advantage, but again, they, they, they came out and working hard, but again, they've gone back to what they've done in game one. And Houston actually is taking this game to them. Uh, all Hamilton's chances really are from the perimeter uh, when they do get a chance, and they're not getting anybody to the net. And if they continue over the next 40 minutes like this, I, I, I look at the same result happening and going down two games and none. They have to get that puck to the net. One of the things they need to do, uh, we were talking about this in the studio, is they got to stop the cutesy little passes, the little dump passes, little behind the back. They got to get the puck in, beat their defenseman in, and they have to get to the net. They got to shoot from everywhere. They got to, they have to make some changes here. And one of the things I know Scott and, and Rick are going to add some to this, and, and, and that is, uh, it's one thing Hamilton being quick and being fast skaters, but so are Houston, and Houston forwards are big. One of the things that uh, concerned me was early on with the two-person advantage, they were getting their passes intercepted, and you shouldn't have that happen on a two-man advantage. They did get things going, and let's go to the first goal on the power play, Rick. Hamilton, they have the one man out of the box, so it's a, a one-man advantage right now. Michael Ryder gets it done 
in front of the net. Yeah, what Glenn alluded to is you've got to have people in front of it, especially on the power play. If you don't, I mean, these are quality goalies. They didn't get drafted to, you know, National Hockey League teams and playing in this league because they're not good goaltending, good, good goaltenders. They're there because they have the talent, and the talent will shine if you let them see the puck. If you don't let them see the puck, then they're going to have problems with uh, stopping it. And on that first goal we talked, Glenn said no one was in front of that for most of the game, but on this goal, Ryder picked up a loose puck right in the uh, to high slot or deep, uh, deep into the slot and put the backhand in. So, I mean, it's success there's success but to, to have success you have to pay for success and to pay for it is to put your body on the line and one of the things one of the breaks that you get by putting the puck to the net and it reminds me it goes back all the way to the st john series back in 96 97 george larock just spitting and firing putting a puck on goal and it went in and finally hamilton started doing just that mm -hmm. shooting from everywhere but what happens is is the puck gets in front of the net, it hits a defenseman's skate mm -hmm. and comes back to Ryder. And that's where your breaks are going to come from. And I think that's where the change has Last to be. Last game, one of the one few chances the Bulldogs almost scored on Holmquist was a shot that, again, you're talking about shooting it on net. It's never a bad idea. They dumped it from the blue line. And Holmquist, just for a moment, he was brilliant all game, had a bit of a gag, and his toe strap kept it out. It slid under him and just stopped on the line. Mm -hmm. That was as close as they came for most of the game. And the fact that they're not, you're talking about not getting a lot of shots on net and doing a little too much uh, moving around, not getting a guy to the front, not taking shots when you have the chance is trying to be a little too pretty, I think. And, uh, you know, they're going to need to do better than that. Well, we'll bottom see. line, it comes down to sacrificing your body for the good of the team. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to that, do that. And it's, you know, they got a lot of rest after them. This is the last possible series they can play, so they've got a lot of opportunity to rest up those bruises. And if you don't do that, you're not going to pay the, you're not paying the price. And if you don't pay the price, you're going to lose an opportunity to win a Calder Cup. And Let's almost go. a week off after tonight, too. You talk about rest. Yeah. It's not till next Wednesday, the next game. So if, if they're worried about being sore, don't worry don't about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's try and get a look at this goal. Michael Ryder getting it done in front, picking up that loose puck, and then going upstairs on uh, Tom Quist here. Goes down back to the point, it's going to go back into the corner. And here's the centering pass, and it goes off. That's where it goes off the defenseman's skate, and Ryder's right there, stick on the ice, looking for that puck. And uh, Rick, that's what these guys have to be doing. they got to get somebody in there. And one of the things, too, uh, an old, uh, old war vet of the NHL uh, used to teach an elite hockey camp and that's Pat Stapleton and one of the things I noticed too is when you get an opportunity to be in front of the net or around the puck don't turn your back on the puck watch how Michael Ryder follows it always keeping the puck in front of him and that's when the puck squirts and one of the things that it, it, it sometimes happens in junior and AHL and NHL is guys turn away from the puck thinking that the chance has gone by them and uh, Pat Stapleton used to talk about that all the well, time. Well, what the thing is, Glenn, and you got you got to do is you got to be aware of where the puck is. So if your back's turned away from the puck and the puck's behind you, then you're not going to know. So you know when the points at uh, the puck's at the point, the forward in front of the net's got to be facing the point. Yeah. When the puck's in deep, he's got to be facing the goalie. And as you saw there, things happen when you put the puck near the front of the net. You know, you, sometimes you get lucky, and certainly that's a lucky mark. You got to be good to be lucky, and lucky to be good. So I think that in that point. Right there should just be a uh, learning point for all the rest of the Bulldogs is, hey, look what happens if we get the puck to the front of the net. Things can happen, and they did right there. So they went up that one, uh, one nothing at that time. And one of the things that allows Michael Ryder to do is see how he can beat the goalie, too. You saw him go take the puck, move it to his backhand, and then go upstairs and get the job done. For the a lot of time there. That was a little surprising. Right. With you, you, know, you had a little gonna, bit of time. There was a surprise that no one uh, well, I think the put a little Sherwood mark on his arm or something. <laughs> the defenseman who had it hit him was kind of following the puck across. And when yeah, it hit they got skin. caught in between, and that gave them the opportunity. Yeah, yeah and sure. right now, for the first for this first period, it's looking a lot like what happened in the first game. That Hamilton came out, played mm -hmm. really well for the first few minutes, had, had an early penalty or a power play, took advantage of the power play, and then Houston decided that uh, it was time to play again. And uh, the period has gone almost as a carbon copy of what happened in the first game. In game one, the Houston Arrows went 0 for 7 on the power play. So my thinking is, it's just a matter of time before the bubble's going to burst. Uh, with the power play with them and one of the things we talked about is the need for Hamilton to play physical. We take a look at this next graphic and this is, uh, in my mind guys, this isn't physical, this is undisciplined and this is the, pen let's take a look at the graphic first though. Uh, Scott, tell us, uh, tell us about what these numbers are well, showing. Well, all it's showing really is that uh, it, it's pretty appropriate that both teams sort of balanced out on the power play in the first period because if you look at their numbers, they're basically identical in their special teams. 12.2% to 12.5% on the power play, 86.3 to 84.3 on the penalty kill. Neither one is going to have a big advantage. You don't have a team with one great power play and bad penalty killing or vice versa. So as I say, the fact that both of them scored a power play goal is just going to 
keep the numbers almost the same all the way around. Both teams are pretty strong at both ends of that, so it, it's probably going to balance out by the time the series ends. But one of the things that always seems to hold true is bad penalties are much tougher to kill. And uh, that's what happens here. So to get back to the point is I think Hamilton needs to play a little more physical, but discipline physical. And uh, let's take a look at Torres here coming along the boards and I think taking a cheap shot. And there's the end result, but here it is again coming in and he reaches out. That's a, that's a head shot, Rick. Well, it certainly is. And I don't know, you know, some people feel because, you know, that hometown crowd type of like my mother says, you know, the hometown uh, armchair quarterbacks are, you know, players right there. They always see everything that is favorable to the home team. But that right there was a bad penalty across the board. You, I don't care who's watching it. If they know anything about hockey, you're not allowed to talk, uh, attack the head. And he was lucky he got away with just a minor there. Mm -hmm. It could have been worse, and it cost uh, Hamilton to go down uh, five against three. And as we saw, they scored on that goal. I mean, toughness comes in a lot of forms and packages. Taking a hit, giving a hit. Clean, you know, sacrificing yourself when you go to the net and certain things like that, blocking shots. But if you don't do that and you don't and you uh, and you don't have success with that, you're not going to win hockey games. And what causes you to lose hockey games is taking bad penalties, thinking that you're playing aggressive, and really all you're doing is putting your team in a bad spot. And, and you were saying we were talking about Rafi Torres before the last game. He had a few mm -hmm. big, big hits, really laid mm -hmm. a few guys out. But you were saying there was more to what he was doing in that game than just those couple of hits. Well, I find Ralph Torres when he was in junior hockey in Brampton, his his, his skill was speed and his, and toughness. This kid's in great shape. He's got a, a you know a body made of stone right here. But if he does not skate, he's not, he's like anybody else. He's not a good hockey player. And I think right now he's got to learn as a pro that if he does not skate, he's not going to be successful. And he'd come to now from the Islanders to uh, to the Edmonton Oilers organization, which is a great team because they rely on that speed and transition game. And if he does not pick up his feet and move his uh, move his feet and play that physical presence, clean physical presence, then he will not get a shot at Edmonton right now so he's got to play more of a 60 minute game or in his part 18 minutes he gets on the ice or whatever it is he better play a full 18 minutes because right now he's picking his spots and when you pick your spots everybody in hockey know that you pick your spots and they don't need a guy that's going to play out of 18 minutes only about you know 30 seconds here for two seconds there they need a guy that's going to go uh you know, but uh, I can't even say what I wanted to say because it was going to come out. But I'm saying he wants to give everything he's got that hangs between his legs every shift that he's got. <laughs> hey, for those of you tuning in to catch out some soccer action, again a reminder: uh, Toronto Super and Hamilton Thunder, the season opener of the Thunder, is coming up. CPSL Soccer tonight, following the hockey game. So uh, stay tuned. A great sports night here on our Cable 14 network. So as you guys <laughs> talked about, Rick, and as you so almost said, yeah. talk about penalties. the string. The yeah. string. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bad penalties are the <laughs> tougher to kill off. So uh, let's take a look at the result of this. They're playing with a one-goal lead. Oh, uh, we digress. A bad, yeah. They take a bad penalty, and uh, Nat Domicelli gets things done for Houston to tie this game up. And uh, it's a big goal here uh, coming up on the power play. Here it is. Watch how they yep. move the puck around. Their, their passes, we talked about how Hamilton got their passes intercepted. But again, Rick, you talked about this earlier, is they, they get some traffic in front of the net, and it's it's a, a deflection. Mm -hmm. that uh, it, And it's going to take deflected goals to get by both these goaltenders. That, you know, and you hate to be crazy. It's easy for me to sit here and say, well, you know, the, the, the diamond out of the, you know, the penalty killing wasn't good. The top guy was moving around too much. And I think they got a little, they got a defenseman up high there, which really isn't the proper positioning. You should have a forward there, and he should go from side to side, not from down to a top. And what happened? He got sucked down, and then the guy moved in, and they teed it up from the top of the circle. And then, unfortunately, it was deflected for them. But, I mean, anybody that shoots from the top of the circle has got a great opportunity to, you know, a one-timer. But, again, we talk about bad penalties coming to hot you. You take a good penalty, your team kills it off a bad penalty. You know, he's going to come back to the bench and the coach is going to say to Ward, he's going to say to him, hey, you know, we need you to be physical, but we need controlled aggressiveness. And uh, Ralphie Torres is, you know, I, as I said, a guy with a lot of talent, but he's got to control his pro hockey because it's not junior anymore. And I think he's got to see that. And right now, with uh, for the uh, Houston, that's a huge goal because, as you said, they're 0 for 7 in the first game. You get your power play working. Okay, we could t we'll give them those bad. Uh, we'll give them the bad penalties. We'll take advantage of it. And now Hamilton, they see, hey, these guys moved it around pretty good on the power play. We better not take those up. But you know, you gave them. He, they gave them life on the power play exactly. because they didn't have any life on the power play, and that that, that little bit of a door was open mm -hmm. with the five on three, five on four. 
I bet you they, they're still offers. Mm -hmm. But if you look too at that play in the replay there, if you just watched, if the old style goal crease is not the round ones, but the old ones that used to be square, if that was still in place, you had two arrows players, one on each point of that uh, of that goal crease, right in front. We were just talking about the Bulldogs needing to get action in front. They weren't directly in front of Conklin, but as he came across, they were providing enough of a distraction and maybe a bit of a screen. We can't tell well, from the exact angle, but they're right there. They're when the guy teeing it up from the top of the circles, I'd move out of the way too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but they're causing confusion it's in front. Like they're no. in there and the they're there is congestion in, those, in that area, and they get, they're at an opportunity if there is a rebound to put it in there. Yeah. Bulldogs two for six on the power play. Houston one for nine at this point in the series. Let's uh, take a break now and go back and show you highlights of game one from the other night. Now Jason Warren at the near circle drops it to Komasarek. Wrist shot and a goal. Big for the arrows, the big second year man. Stops behind the net, looks for the play, rolls it in front. A shot and a goal! The arrows have tied it up! A great play by one big! And a big finish right on the doorstep. Now played by Dama Kelly. Weaves his way along the blue line, bounces one in front. A shot and a goal! Pavlikovsky tied up, kicked it to Trudell! The arrows get a 2-1 lead! Jean Guy Trudell! Houston. A boarding penalty late in the game on a hit apparently at center ice. Oh my! They'll have a chance to pull the netminder for two. A two-man advantage. Oh my! Houston well McCulloch who gave the cross check to the back. They're gonna get, get him for two minutes for boarding. A tough break. The net is empty. The arrows bounce one. Sliding, sliding, Conklin diving, pokes it away. Roach is there, but it's played by Hamilton. 44 seconds to go, and here comes Ryder. Moving him with a long shot, stick save to the far side. Now behind the net, Ryder. Now a drop pass deflected, and the arrows clear it to center ice. They roll it back to the cage again. A wrap around. It dropped to the point. Shot knocked down. And Kluge, just get it out of there. Slide. And it goes to center ice. Six seconds left. They clear the zone. They carry back in. Knocked down. Kept alive. A shot knocked down. And a shot right on the doorstep. A save. And that's it. The hockey game is over. The puck went in, but after the horn, no goal. A scramble at the Houston net. The arrows for the ninth straight opening game. Playoff series have scored a win this time in spectacular fashion, two to one over Hamilton. Well, a great finish to that game as well. But uh, back to game two tonight, second period, they go in tied one one. I'd like to see Hamilton get a little more physical. Guys, your thoughts on how the second period well, should shape up? You know, we talked in the, in the previous rounds leading up to this, the, the final, that I thought Hamilton still hasn't played 60 minutes hockey, and I think this is a perfect time for them to start playing some 60 minutes. Even though they had some success and some bright spots in that first game, I don't. Th I think the Houston dominated most of the game myself personally, and this game right now, they've got to come out the same way they come out for every beginning of the, the games with a lot of fire and vinegar and right now they're causing themselves to wait and watch and when you wait and watch you're watching the other team usually put the puck in the net. Rick do you feel I'm, I'm sorry I didn't jump yeah. in there Steve. Do you, do you feel Hamilton when they when they're are they squeezing their sticks just a little bit here for whatever reason I, I thought there, there's times and I don't want to turn it into a, a bulldog bash here but mm -hmm. it sometimes it just feels like the they're not doing some of the things that come natural and they're on their heels a little what? bit is, is would that come well, from? Well, I agree with uh, I think Scott. You said uh, in the paper uh, yesterday's, or I can't remember. I, honestly, I apologize. I read you every day. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know they're trying to be a little too fancy, and yeah, we've talked about that. Uh, you know, uh, Steve, that we want. You know, we as a group uh, or as uh, as a team, you want your team to do the things, the simple things, and sometimes the simple the simple things are the most successful thing. Mm -hmm. That extra pass, those little, you know, behind the pass, back passes and all that kind of stuff you know they look pretty but the percentages are you know not in your favor most of the time with that kind of thing put the puck to the net get guys driving to the net get people in front of the net those are the things that win you hockey games and I think Hamilton has that ability but they were so successful doing whatever they wanted during the regular season they need to become a little bit more 
easier flow, get the puck to the net, keep it simple, and work hard at uh, winning the small battles. Scott, your take. Well, just Hamilton has to do what they did for the first five minutes of the game and what they did for the first five minutes of the last game and what they did for the last five minutes of the last game. All three of those little spurts were great, and they dominated the play. In between... So that's like 15 minutes. That's good. We've been able to see that for those little bits of time, they've been yeah. able to control the play, and they've been able to show their stuff. The rest of the time, it's mm -hmm. been not them. The yeah. power play, very effective for both teams through the first period. It's 1-1 one, one after one. Second period action just moments away. Let's go back down to the Coliseum and join Todd and Roger. Guys, take it away. Welcome back. The second period imminent here at Cops Coliseum and the Bulldogs and the Houston Arrows tied up at one apiece. I'm Todd Crocker along with Roger Turnin. And Roger, that first period was, uh, there was some serious offense and you expect more. Lots of opportunities, certainly six power plays afforded, three each to each team and uh, obviously three each. And one goal each on the power plays at the conclusion of two man advantages. Off the draw, the Arrows Going to control this one. Benesek goes back for it. The Bulldogs and the Arrows have played some serious offensive hockey. The goaltenders were a big part of the reason why it didn't get out of hand in the first game. We'll have to see if that continues through for the next 40 minutes. Here's Cullen with it. Going to hang on to the puck for a little while. He threads that one through. Jumped in by Jay Henderson. Conklin moves the puck. Kavanaugh tries to roll it out front, but couldn't get the wood on it. Right back the other way, Jason Ward. Ward across the blue line. Dips that one back to Bashai. Big shot. Rebound hanging there. And the D didn't jump up to pick up that one. Uh, just laying back a little bit. Boshaman was a few steps away from that puck. Late change coming off the bench in a safe zone. Now Bergeron just sky dumps that one in there. It's picked up for icing. Bergeron heads to the bench. And they'll bring this one all the way back. Just right, to go over the scoring for you again, Ryder at 332 on the power play and Dominic Kelly at 1015 on the power play. They have changed that goal. Dominic Kelly got it, but Murphy and Jean-Guy Trudel, not Kyle Wanvig is awarded the assist. Not as if Trudell needed any help getting points. Here's a shot right on from Dominic Kelly. He wanted another one, but Ty Conklin had none of that. Took away that five hole as quick as the shot arrived. Conklin playing very confident tonight. Stopping eight of nine fired so far. Dog successful on only one of their 11 shots. And you see the folks here at Cops Coliseum enjoying themselves and uh, Pretty relaxed at the moment. They'd like to see their Bulldogs score a couple more and even up this series at one game apiece before they head off to Houston for next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Out front, that got through a lot of people before it ended up with Jarrett Stoll. Back the other way, it's picked up by Roche. They put it up, and Tuzzolino takes a mouthful for that one. Both teams kind of tapered off at the end of the first period. But when you're playing this fast, here's Ryder. Tried to slide a little one in there, but his stick broke, and it comes right back out into center. Ron Hainsey paired with Bo Shaman. Tried to send it through for Hosa. That didn't work out. Wanvig gets loose. Hainsey rolls into him. Wanvig gets the shot off. Conklin stops it. Rolls behind the net. Bo Shaman picks it up. Back up along the near boards. Cullen with a long shot, hoping to get a tip or something up front, but Conklin saw all of it and stopped it. Hosa not quite enough mustard on that clearing attempt and shot back in by the Arrows defenseman right on Conklin with the save. Pavlikovsky left in the first period after that big hit along the sideboards during one of the penalty kills by the, uh, by the Arrows. Rafi Torres with a hit, and he has not returned. Looked very groggy when he left. Placanic in for the draw. He'll face Sylvain Cloutier. Off the draw. Bulldogs clear the puck out into center. 
Two and a half off the clock. One apiece the score here in the second. Both teams still trying to get something going here in the second. The Bulldogs with one good opportunity and a good scoring chance for the Houston Arrows as well. Ballet battling in there with Yanni Rita. Rita has almost been non-existent here in the first period. He hasn't had a lot of shifts and hasn't made his presence felt, that's for sure. That one will slide the length. Conklin decides to play it as Commissar couldn't get back to it. Kavanaugh intercepts that one up the boards. Mechanic still battling in there for it. Hainsey too. Now it's dumped out. Kavanaugh wheeling around with it. <laughs> uh oh, tripped up now, and they're not going to call that one. As it comes back the other way, Sal Malanen has a little help out front with Jason Ward, and he couldn't get the puck to him. Mahalik gets in the way. Ward steps out front, and he throws a backhander up there for someone to knock down, and it didn't work out. Back the other way. Tuzzolino with the puck. There's the shot over and knocked down by Hakana, and that's a beautiful defensive play as Cavosi was just taken right out of it as far as the two-on-one was concerned. Drop down to take that shot away and perfect timing by the defenseman to take the uh, block shot. Beautiful pass by Tuzzolino who sold shot initially. Pulled away from the middle of the ice to bring Conklin across. Made it a pass over to the winger on the two on one. Shot at Tuzzolino heading off. Former Cincinnati Mighty Duck. Tuzzolino, a veteran here in the American Hockey League. Played with Providence last year. And has had a solid career in the American Hockey League. Born in Buffalo, New York, just down the road. Beauchemin down into the corner. Trudell knocked loose. Hens trying to move that puck himself. The arrows keep it back in. Now the pace seems to have picked up just a little bit, and Hens loses control of that one on a speed wobble. Back the other way. Trudell waiting for help. He gets it. Dominic Kelly takes it and hits the side of the net with it. Tries to slide it out front again. Puck still there. As Torres was going for a ride, he left that puck to get a little help, and now Rafi Torres comes back, working with Beauchemin. Up for Torres, and he looked like he had a clear drive to the net. Couldn't get the puck. Here's Bill Lindsay behind the net. Torres back there as well. That backhander sent the length of the ice. Komasar going back for it, picked up by Conklin. Up through the middle, Stoll didn't control that one, but a two-line pass nonetheless. Jarrett Stoll is, comes from a family, Roger, that is going to make some big impact in hockey. Over the next few years, his brother, of course, played in the top prospects game. Definitely a hockey family. Stoll, of course, uh, as we mentioned before, may very well find himself on the fast track to the National Hockey League. Certainly quite uh, after four years of uh, Major Junior in the Western League and a year here in the AHL. His rookie year, he leads all rookies in scoring in the American Hockey League playoffs. Jarrett Stoll as that one is picked up for icing. That'll bring this one all the way back. Just about five minutes off the clock here in the second period, one apiece the score. The Bulldogs and the Arrows in game two. Jared Stoll, one of those uh, one of those projects uh, or one of those prospects anyway in the Edmonton organization. Those Western Hockey League guys that uh, always seem to be found in the Oilers lineup. Jason Chimera comes to mind. And well, they take a few swings over the years too. Chad Hens, big Western Hockey League star, big scorer in Edison High. And Chad Hens was uh, of course the third leading scorer in the Western Hockey League in his final year. In Moose Jaw, rather, Medicine Hat was Chimera. That's where the confusion lies. Me. Ah, there you go. And Mike Comrie, of course, with that half season with the Cooney Ace. Yes. Nothing like being in complete control. And how about this? Ron Hainsey leans in, and that one off the stick of David Cullen and into the netting. Possibly even into the crowd. Would have been kept a little lower. Hainsey had uh, Holmquist beat because he drilled everything he had into that shot. Hainsey and Komisarek, easy to see when you notice the minutes they log for head coach Jeff Ward here on the Bulldog blue line. Certainly going to be a couple of bookends to deal with in Montreal over the next few seasons. Volcanic 
conversion for the draw. Wallin wins that one clean. Kept in by Ballet. That one rolls up along the near boards. Rita moves it back for Placanic. He looks out front. He's got Ballet still there. Cross the crease. But Ballet couldn't get a stick on it. Right back the other way, and Ballet knocks his man down, and we get a whistle here. On the offside. On the offside, Komisarek there is. He looked for somebody to hit on the play as well. Play picking up a little bit in intensity as well. We noticed the speed there a few shifts back. Mike Komisarek out of West Islip, New York. It sounds like uh, some place where they held the Great Gatsby or something like that. <laughs> West Islip. Or rather wrote the Great Gatsby. I, uh. I don't think the Great Gatsby was a race or anything like that. <laughs> Here's Placanic. Tried to send it through the slot, hoping for some help. Didn't get it. There's a shot, and Holquist stops that one. That was a long one that could have got a, a little trouble in the works. Nice play by Belay to find Akana, who is totally unguarded. Get back at the blue line for that clear shot on Holmquist. Sal Malena now picks it up. Placanic was going off. Sal Malena will have to do it himself. Holmquist stopped it. A lot of speed in those little legs of Sal Malena's as he cut across the top of the circle there and took the defenseman right to Holmquist in the net. Boschman picks that one up for Rising, and we'll take the opportunity to take a break. For Roger Turner, I'm Todd Crocker. You're watching Game 2 of the Calder Cup. Well, one of the issues, of course, in tonight's game is the scratch of the Bulldogs captain, Benoit Graton. And, uh, Scott, I think uh, we can show the viewers the reason why. Well, we were trying to figure it out, and I think if we watch the clip that we saw at the end of the highlights uh, from the last game, there was a skirmish right in front of the net. Just the end, that's Benoit Graton in it right there. After he got plowed into the net, he got up and was a little upset. Ooh. And if you see him go down, he lands right on his head and then takes another couple shots. And I think the best guess is probably that uh, yep. that he had a big boo-boo on well, there. Well, you don't take your leader out, you know, out yep. for no reason. I mean, if he had one bad game, it's the color Cup. I imagine Ward would keep him back <laughs> in. So I was wondering myself, and, you know, as we saw that clip, we mentioned that that's probably what the reason was. And I would have to think it's a strong reason why he's out of the lineup. They want to be careful or... Hopefully he doesn't have anything too serious. Yeah, and, and we also haven't seen uh, Radislav Pavlikovsky come back either after taking that Rafi Torres hit and his helmet flew off and he landed on his head. So there could be two rather key guys in this series uh, you know, who may have had bumps on their head already that are missing some time. That's right. So uh, glad we could fill the viewers in on that. And uh, before we go down to the uh, Coliseum again, we just want to thank the Houston Arrows for helping us uh, get that footage to you, that footage courtesy of the Houston Arrows. Let's go back down to the Coliseum, guys. Well, the Thundersticks are making some noise here at Cops Coliseum and the teams are supposed to be getting some energy from them. Let's see if it works. Beauchemin slides one across. There's one flicked at the net a little high. Beauchemin tries to send his own in there. Beauchemin and Bobby Allen knock that down at the blue line. Bobby Allen does a good job of getting his stick on that one. There's a long one in on Conklin. He's going to have to cover that one up. Well, every year they seem to bring out more and more players out of the OHL, the Western Hockey League, the Q, the USHL, NCAA, and that puts a lot of pressure on these folks right here playing tonight to continue to bring their game to a higher level. They say it's a tougher jump from junior in the NCAA than it is uh, into the A, than it is from the A to the National Hockey League. And you sometimes wonder if maybe the veterans uh, coming over from Europe after a few years of professional hockey there have that sort of uh, benefit at the, at the front end. But if they don't capitalize on it, certainly uh, by history will show you that the junior players and the NCAA players that do arrive here don't take long to climatize. The ones that are really going to rise to the rise to the occasion and make it to the National Hockey League do not take long after they're here. Off the draw. And that's why it's so important to get this far <laughs> when you're a veteran out there to showcase your stuff to the teams in the American Hockey League. To the side door, they roll it out front. Loose comes back to the point, turning around, and loose puck out there. Trudeau can't get to it. 
And Conklin covers it up. It's a good point you mentioned, uh, Todd, about uh, the veterans playing and getting as much exposure as possible, obviously, all the way to the final. You remember the year the St. John's Flames won the Calder Club. I believe it was 12 regulars left at the end of that season and off to other franchises. And the Flames, of course, are no more out of St. John, New Brunswick. No, they're off to uh, dual affiliation next season. The Lowell Lock Monsters with the Carolina Hurricanes. Now Tampa Bay looks like they may split with Hershey. And these Springfield Indians, of course, alone with uh, the Phoenix Coyotes. Falcons, you're going way back in the American Hockey League. <laughs> Johnny Bauer on my mind with that <laughs> pregame presentation. That's right. Here's Stoll. Gets it across the line. Ryder goes in after it. Working it behind the net. Michael Ryder. Want to talk about a guy that elevated his game this year. That's it. Right there. Kyle Wanvig comes back the other way across the blue line. Tries to cut in. Push behind the net. Throws the puck out there. Conklin still trying to keep it in play. That first one was kicked at the net. I don't believe that would have counted as a goal, but it certainly kept the pressure on top of Conklin. Bulldogs yet to clear the zone. Bulldogs in a little bit of trouble here at the moment. Need to pick up the game just a little bit. Houston, though, has not turned up the dial either. You got multi-time uh, all-star defenseman out there, Curtis Murphy, for over from the IHL, of course, now in the American League. Well, we see Marc-Andre Bergeron, who had a stint up with the Edmonton Oilers as they rode out their playoff string. And really, it looked like the Dallas Stars were to be had by the Edmonton Oilers in that series. Out front, giveaway, Conklin makes a save on Henderson. It was right on, and now beside the net, here's Henderson again. Moves it along, but Ballet is right there to Yanni Rita. Rita takes it off the skate, comes back with the puck, fires it at the net, kicked out by Holmquist. Ballet puts it in behind the net. Placanic can't quite get to it. Rita knocks it back to him, up along the far boards. Kept down in the corner. Loose now. Mahalik in there trying to get it. Komisarik dumps it into the corner. Rita is there. The puck taken away by the Arrows. Off a skate. Hainsey goes after it. Knocks it back into the corner. Rita goes after it there. Ballet digging for it. The Arrows come away. Bring it up to the line, but not out. And now the puck lay there behind Rita. He didn't know it was there. And Ballet getting into a push and shove on the far side of the ice. He goes off. It was... Dan Kavanaugh, he was getting involved with. Kavanaugh been pretty busy tonight, actually. <laughs> right back the other way, down into the corner for icing. And now Hangey comes in. A late hit on the icing by Commissarek. Saw it coming, too. Zolino's got himself tied up with Commissarek. A little bill presentation by Hangey as the price has to be paid, he figures, for the hit on the icing. Probably going to see a trade-off here of Miners. The arrow player doesn't think he did anything wrong other than get the free hit. Hainsey seems to want to say more. Looks like Jeff Hogan heading off for the arrows. Hainsey, I believe, is going to get a minor as well. It is Hogan. And now a little more conversation. And that is going to be it. Hogan is going to be the only penalty, and the Bulldogs are going to go to the power play. They have one power play goal so far in this contest. Their only goal, Ryder from Stroll and Bergeron at 332. So Hogan goes in for roughing. And they even get the benefit of the decent icing call as uh, the Bulldogs... Faceoff will come deep inside Houston territory. In to take it, of course, Jarrett Stoll. Bulldogs' fourth power play opportunity of the night. The Yorkton, Saskatchewan native. Halfway through the period, Todd No works first penalty. The second period, he called six in the first period. Back up and out. It gets by the Bulldogs, and Kavanaugh goes back. Bergeron moves it along. Michael Ryder picks it up. He's got Stoll with him and Hosa. Stoll's going to have to chase that one if he hopes to get to it. Puts Diamond on it, but Hosa was right there at the side of the net waiting for it from Ryder. Hakana. 
Trying to move that puck. Hosa gets up at the point. Rolls by everybody. Ryder in the corner working on it. Here's Stoll. Trying to create a little bit of room. Ryder picks it up now. Stoll knocked to the ice. Ryder goes right to the goal and can't put it in. Hosa goes back over for Hakana. Hakana along to Bergeron. Fires it and that got through but Holmquist was there. Here's Stoll. Stoll and Ryder gets by. Hakana now trying to knock it down. It's knocked by Stoll and that is a high stick. They'll bring it out across the line. Minute two left to go in the power play with 9.24 left to go in the second period. We're over halfway through this game and we are tied up at one apiece. Michael Ryder is putting on quite a show on the power play. Nice job by the arrows trying to contain him, however, though. Off to the uh, right-hand side of goaltender Holmquist, down in the corner. Both defensemen were cycling, rolling off the Bulldog forwards as they were attempting to cycle in the corner, just keeping all that pressure to the outside of the perimeter and not letting the puck squirt back to the defense for an open shot. What a season for Michael Ryder. I mean, last season he spent uh, about 20 games with the Mississippi Sea Wolves in the East Coast Hockey League. That tells you where that he got his head around the game and nearly a giveaway by Boschemann. Along to Lindsay, gets by everybody. 43 seconds left to go in the power play. Cullen tries to move it along. It's up and not out. Bobby Allen there to stop it. And now it comes up and out. Coming back the other way, Trudell. He's dangerous, but not this time. Boschemann now. Bulldogs not having a lot of success on this power play. Pass off the mark. Up, and this one doesn't seem to want to get out across the line. It does now. Lindsay out there with Hins. Chad Hins. Bill Lindsay. Rafi Torres. The energy line that so many coaches have in their arsenal now. We got an offside call. Three seconds left to go in the power play, and the Bulldogs had a couple of decent opportunities, but some good pressure defensively on the uh, penalty kill by the Houston Arrows. Remember the most success the Arrows had, obviously, preceding their goal for the early stages of the first period where they seemed to contain the Bulldog defenseman back, even limiting that first pass. Not only the second one that's so familiar to the, the fans that are critical of the trap that's played in the neutral zone, but certainly that first pass and that heavy pressure down low by the wingers cutting off those avenues. Off the draw, Hainsey knocks that one in. Hogan comes back on the ice, and he joins the play. Five on five, and it's knocked all the way back to Ty Conklin. Conklin gives it right away, and he's lucky to make the save. Trying to drive up his percentage, I guess. We're tied up at 14 apiece on the shots on goal. And Blood now pressure. It's picked up by Ward. Ward has Selma Lane and going to the net. He goes around, picks it up. Here's Hainsey. That one drifts wide. Komasaric throws it behind the net. Trying to get to it is Bashai. And now Selmalin and Bashai putting it out front and juggling it was Holmquist, but he's good enough to trap it. 7.42 left to go in the second period, tied up at one apiece, and we're going to take a break here and say try and figure out everybody's okay. Everybody's just split apart. No more conversation unless you're going back to the studio. <laughs> Welcome back to our AHL Live Control Center here. Steve Foxcroft, Rick Natra, Scott Radley, and Glenn Allen with us. And guys, what I think, I don't think the Bulldogs are necessarily being more physical, but they're starting to use their speed a little bit more in the second period to create chances. Rick, your thoughts? I think we talked about them needing to play more of a 60-minute game. I think this period, you know, there's flaws in every game. That there's flaws because, uh, you know, it's a game of chance out there all the time. You make decisions, so not all the time. Hopefully, they're, they're the right ones. But Hamilton's going to the net, as we saw, even on the power plays and different things. Now this period, they're, they're dominating a little bit more because of the fact they're using their speed and they're going to the net and they're just putting the puck at the net, as we talked earlier. The best play in hockey is getting Get the puck to the net and see what happens. Want to uh, remind the viewers, games three, four, and five, we switch to Houston. Game three, the Bulldogs at Houston goes next Wednesday, June the 4th. Games uh, four and five, Friday, June 6th, and uh, Saturday, June 7th. And incidentally, we are in negotiations with Houston to try and bring those games to you. So uh, here's a little graphic. Possible TV games. Things are looking good. 
but nothing is etched in stone just yet. So hopefully we'll be able to bring you some exciting Calder Cup action as the series switches. And quickly, before we go back to the game. I was just going to say, uh, you know, Houston, we don't have a problem. <laughs> exactly. Let's go back down to the Coliseum with Todd and Roger. Guys? It's like Mr. Rourke on Fantasy Island back there at the studio. Smiles, everyone, smiles. 7.42 left to go. Here's Beauchemin off the draw. Takes the shot off of Trudell's skate. Here's Lindsay now battling along the boards. Diamond comes away with it. And the arrows bust out with it. Now McKelly goes after it down in the corner. He's got some help. Trudell is out there. They're dangerous. Trudell behind the net. Taken away by Beauchemin. That was leisurely. Trying to move it along to Lindsay, but it gets by him. And Beauchemin puts a stick on it. That one ends up in the bench, and there's going to be a draw in center ice. 7.15 left to go, tied up at one apiece here in the second in game two of the Calder Cup. These two teams, the energy level has dropped a little bit in the second, Roger. Just a little bit. I think the checking's getting tighter, and uh, Rick made a good point there in the break that uh, both teams are going to have to take advantage of just getting the puck on the net. Good things happen, and that's the best play in hockey. It's certainly uh, indicative of this game so far. Knotted up at one, and the uh, shot total is not rising near as high as they did, obviously, in the uh, game one thus far. Anyways, tied at 15 apiece. Here's Placanic through center. Drops that one in. Holmquist gets to it. Out of his net, just a little bit. That lay puts it back behind the net. Here's Cullen. As the arrows try to get things rolling here and get out of their own end. They do get that going as Placanic ends up with Henderson down on the ice. Way up for Placanic. Placanic has a step. Tries to move it backhanded, but Murphy tied him up nicely and legally, apparently. Some of that speed by the Bulldogs forwards beginning to be a problem in the neutral zone for the Arrows. Murphy comes back the other way. Kavanaugh leans in. The shot stopped by Conklin. He didn't see it, but he made the save. Here's Ryder with it now. Dumps it in. Stoll goes chasing. Picked up behind the net. Little backhander. Stoll trying to get up. The wraparound doesn't work from Hosa. And Hosa took a high stick in the face, unnoticed by the referee. Now Stoll finally gets up as uh, he and Curtis Murphy were becoming an item. Along the near boards, Hosa. Along to Ryder. Ryder's got Stoll trailing. Stoll trying to pick it up, Hosa out front, knocked away. Good defensive play. And right back the other way come the arrows. One big has that into his skates and the pass is just not crisp now. Here's Ryder across the line. Boschelman tries to knock it in. And we got some back and forth action now the last few shifts back and forth with the charge. The pass is just not tape to tape here though. As Here's Jason Ward with an opportunity. Bergeron trying to pick it up. The crowd here completely into this game. Ward now has that one slide by him. Haven't heard the building here at Cops roar like that in some time, but the, you're going to get a look at the replay here and a beautiful play by Ward after the strip at the blue line of the defenseman. The shy now. We've got a couple uh, going off as Wanvig is going to grab. Wanvig is now having a conversation with O'Rourke, the referee. O'Rourke's got both gates open. A shot of Wanvig there, who's a little more settled down now than he was certainly at the start of the exchange with the referee. Here's the replay. Ward finds the wide side winger, Bashai. One timer right off the post in behind Holmquist. Beautiful play. Now, as they sort that out, let's take a quick visit back to the studio and see what the guys are saying. Well, we talk about the Bulldogs using their speed. They get a great scoring chance there. I thought Holmquist went down maybe a little quick, Rick, but you're saying no. Well, for me, in road hockey days, I mean, that, <laughs> that, 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 that post to post pretty quick, too. That's, a, I mean, in tight, a great pass. you got to get over there. You went post to post quick? Yeah, well, you know, a <laughs> couple <hockey>. steps. <laughs> but I think, you know, Hamilton, as we talk seriously, though, this is a bit, I, their best period of hockey that I've Absolutely. seen in a little while. And for them to uh, utilize their speed, it's effective. 
and hopefully they continue with it. They're creating chances, Scott. We talked right at the very beginning about who's the guy who uh, is in the middle of everything all the time, and it's Jason Ward. He was the one who made that great pass there. And, uh, uh, you know, they're just, they've so far been getting a little bit unlucky around the net. Um, you know, they hit the post there. Jarrett Stoll was absolutely robbed twice last game. Uh, Sal Malanen was uh, the unbelievable save at the end of the game. If they keep this up, if they keep pressing, uh, they'll, get, they'll score some goals. Let's get back to the Coliseum action back underway. Todd, take it away. Thanks, Steve. Well, you know, things are uh, getting a little wacky here in the playoffs. Scott Radley was one of the options on, uh, on the big screen as far as the trivia question was concerned. The answer was Fidel Castro's beard. You do the math. I know. I feel like Alex Trebek now. You're supposed to come up with a question. <laughs> Here's Torres, trying to go cross ice to Boschman. He sweeps it away. That's a tough pass in any league. Torres came looking for it. Boschman now down into the corner. Comes loose. Ends went one way, the puck went the other. Right through to Murphy, and he can't control it. Conklin thinks better of it. Let's uh, slow things down a little bit. 4-10, left to go. It does seem a little out of control out there from both sides. A little looser here, and like I alluded to, the Bulldogs forwards are causing some problems with the arrows, and you wonder if the arrows are just trying now to adapt and take advantage of what they can off the boards, counter-attack as quickly as possible, and hopefully catch a couple of those swift skating Bulldog forwards up ice. Murphy there had a clean chance as he broke away from Lindsay for a little bit of his check at the uh, blue line. He would have got a handle on that first shot. He was fine. Lindsay right there, however, to tie him up as quickly as he got the puck. Off the draw, the Bulldogs pick it up. Commissaric. Up along the far boards, chips it along to Plekanec. Plekanec through center, just throws that one into the near corner. Rita goes after it, tips it along, but Tuzzolino is there. Up past everybody, Bergeron races back for it. Picked up down in the corner, he thought it might have been icing. Tuzzolino battling Conklin out front, and nobody there from the Arrows to take advantage of that one. 3.35 left to play here in the first period or second period rather, one apiece is the score, Commissaric along to Ballet. There's Plekanec, along to the blue line, has it knocked off his stick. Right back out into center, Bergeron. Here's Cavosi waiting for Henderson to get onside. Cavosi working the puck and Bergeron just steps in, takes it away, puts it on at the backhand of Sal Malanen. He's got the shy with him. Good defensive work out there from Travis Roche. Well, that was like suspended animation there for a couple of minutes. Ward just couldn't get a stick free to make contact with the puck. Boy, if you, here's Bashai back across the blue line. He had the great opportunity. Ward sends that one up into the screen. And we get the whistle. Wow, I tell you, if you need to get the paddles out, rub them together, and jumpstart yourself again, feel free to take this moment to do so because that few moments just seem to last forever. Cue up the defibrillator. Ward looking at the replay up in the score block here. Cops Coliseum. Replaying the opportunity in his mind as it landed right there. He's frustrated. Scott Radley alluded to there in the last break, Todd. They do seem to be a little snake bitten around the net right now. Off the draw. Here's Bergeron. Fires one in. That's right on the crest of Holmquist. Not going to beat him that way. Now the arrow goalie, he's not going to give you the easy goal, and neither is Conklin tonight. Up already, 18 saves by, uh, by Holmquist tonight. 15 for Conklin. 2.38. Left to play here in the second. Tied up at one since the first period. The Arrows and the Bulldogs. Bulldogs hoping to get a split here at home in this best of seven. We've got a delayed penalty coming up. Commissar with the shot! And Holmquist got that, and we've got an elbowing penalty coming up as the Bulldogs will go to the man advantage. 2.25 left to play, and... Kyle Wanvig, who uh, the last break was so vocal in trying to complain to O'Rourke, recipient of this two-minute. And here's another power play advantage for the Bulldogs. Frustrated Todd McClellan over on the Houston bench. Not vocal, but definitely frustrated. Bulldogs really have to capitalize on these opportunities because you don't know it's not going to go the arrows way in the third. 
only 225 left here. It's something that doesn't get talked about very much, but the pressure on uh, on the referee here with all the big brass from the American Hockey League, from the officiating crew, and from the officiating staff of the American Hockey League. Uh, I'll tell you, there's got to be a little pressure on that guy. Well, and you know, with the opportunities that exist now in the two referee system, even in the National Hockey League, that's a succession plan. That's a career path for, for these guys to take on this role. Off the draw, Torres finds Beauchemin. He waits for it. Throws it in there, hoping to find Lindsay. Allen goes back into the corner. Lindsay holds off his man. In there to help his hens along the near boards. Beauchemin throws it at the net. Slow motion save, kicked out by Holmquist. Here's Lindsay out to Hens. Hens dances around with it. Looks for help out front. Torres battling out there. Lindsay steps out, trying to go backhand, and Hens trying to clean up. Bouchemont back for Allen. He has a little trouble with it. Torres comes in, picks it up, rides the rail into the corner. Hens trying to find it. Bouchemont does. Hens turned around on it. Bouchemont still working in there. Lindsay comes loose with it. Moves it around to Torres, and we've got another penalty coming up. And the Bulldogs might be wise just to get somebody to touch it. Bobby Allen, just to get the five on three for as long as possible. Here's Beauchemin, there's the shot, stopped by Holmquist. Torres out front, Lindsay can't find it. Looks in the shot. Gets by everybody, and finally, it is touched, and the Bulldogs will go to the five-on-three. And the slashing call coming up here from O'Rourke. Well, Kyle Wanvig is having a conversation with a fan behind him down in the penalty box, just as Bill Lindsay's having a conversation with Mahalik. <laughs> in goes Curtis Murphy, a good guy to get off the ice for Houston. Well, now at least Wanvig doesn't have to have a conversation, I suppose, with the guy wearing the Vince Carter sweater down there. I, I don't think it's Vince Carter, really. He's, he fills it out a little bit differently. Different locations, anyways. Minute four left to go in the second period, and the Bulldogs have a great opportunity here with 39 seconds to go in a five-on-three. Off the draw, that one comes to Ward, back up for Bergeron. Bergeron looks in, winds up, doesn't have it. Ward tries to throw it over to Salmelainen. Salmelainen steps out front and is upended. And here comes Conklin out of his net to play this one. Bergeron picks it up. 18 seconds left to go in the five on three. Bergeron across the line, hangs up there, Placanic. Gets it back to Bergeron again. Cross ice. Hainsey. The crowd encouraging him. Takes the shot. It's there and knocked away. Good defensive play by the Arrows. Sal Malinen. And down there with Ward. Bergeron. It's back to five on four. Tipped out front by Placanic. He couldn't get it to fall. Hainsey didn't get the one on that. Ward. Placanic. The shot. Here's Ward again. And now finally cleared out. The Bulldogs. Back to Wanvig. Wanvig who came out of the penalty box. Join the play. And that is the way it is going to end after 40 minutes. The Bulldogs will come out in the third with a man advantage for 56 more seconds. But they just wanted that too badly, Roger. Right from that failed attempt in front of the net uh, where Jason Ward just couldn't get a stick on, on, on the puck and we showed the shot on the uh, on the replay of him over the bench frustrated. And from then on in, it was Bulldog pressure through the end of the period. Obviously, the power play helps with that. But a lot of pressure around the Houston net. Pulling the trigger, just can't seem to get that clear rebound. They're getting the rebounds from Holmquist, who's, who's getting screened. Uh, you, you waited for Hainsey to take that shot and take that shot. What he was waiting for was a screen to develop right in front of Holmquist, catch him off guard and throw it on the wide side, and it worked. The rebound was there, just couldn't capitalize off the opportunity, but shots on goal will indicate 24-16 now at the end of the second in favor of the Bulldogs. You can certainly see where the pressure lies. Well, they showed Fidel Castro's beard on uh, on the big screen, and Scott Radley was one of the answers. He was C, Fidel Castro was B, and that follows my logic in high school that always pick B, because you never know. I think you'll end up with 50% on in, in that way. Nonetheless, we head back to Fidel Castro, Steve Foxcroft, and the guys back in mission control there on Dundurn Street. Guys? 
If there's an A, a B, and a C, first of all, congratulations on making the jumbotron. I, I know, very good. Obviously, you can see what a good beard I have. I got a but worse if, beard than Ron Hainsey when I try to grow it. If there's an A, a B, and a C, how do you score 50% <laughs> if you take the by B. just taking B? <laughs> I shouldn't say because education wasn't one of my strong points, but I got that answer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't your forte, beautiful. as Bob Abilovich would say. Right right. Well, hey, they played a good period of hockey, but in that last four minutes, I think they kind of gave away a bit of the accolades we were giving them, guys. First of all, they're on the power play. They see the referees calling another penalty, and they go another 20, 30 seconds, tossing it around back to the neutral ice area. Don't you give the guys the puck? To, wow. to get the two-man advantage? Smart hockey would say you do. I mean, we can't say that whole period to you. I don't want to, you know, that was their best hockey, I thought, they played in this series so far in, this two, in the one and, a half, one and two third games. So I think that's important for everybody to understand. But the power play there was so crucial, and they gave themselves an opportunity, so short an opportunity on the five-on-three because they did not just put the puck at the net or hand it to the guy. Pick it up and hand yeah. it to him and say, here. <laughs> so I think, you know, that will be addressed by Wardy in the dress room. But, again, don't take away the good thing things just because they had that little lapse there. Yeah, I, I think the some, sometimes y you get to a point, especially with the momentum, I really felt there's a momentum shift in the second period and as we've spoken about the, how well the Bulldogs have played in the second period, sometimes you can try too hard. And I, I don't want to sit here and be overly critical of them because I don't think there's cause to be critical, overly critical of them right now. I think some of their mistakes are coming just because they're trying too hard. But I can tell you in the second period, Three things that needed to happen. They needed to start playing nasty, they needed to start playing ugly, and they needed to start playing desperate, and I sensed a little bit of that. That's good to hear. And uh, well, let's take a look. It all comes down to the good decisions, and we've kind of pinpointed the uh, Bulldogs' defense and how important it is for them to make good decisions coming out of their own zone. And let's take a look at a highlight here. It's Bergeron behind the net, and a bad decision here leads to a great scoring chance and Cox, Conklin has to make a good save. So, uh, Rick, you're the D guy here. Well, we talk about a direct pass all the time and then, you know, you make certain passes that it's not stick to stick. Why isn't that Why isn't that an easy pass being made there, you know what I mean? One of the, one of the reasons I'd like to say, not just to, you know, to bring fault to just to the defenseman, is the forwards left the zone a little too early there. Yep. And when that happens and when the mistakes are happening, there's no one to cover, cover those mistakes. And I think that was the play there and a little too soft by the defenseman. Bergeron was a little too soft. You've got to play with that edge, and that edge means moving the puck stick to stick and hard. Because the old question used to be, Barkley Plager said, if your teammate's not going to get it, make sure they don't get yeah. it. And that's the biggest thing. The result there was they got it, yeah. and it was a good scoring chance. Conklin uh, had to stand on his head a little bit there to not get caught surprised. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to point out, I think the best defensive play of the period uh, was actually by a forward by the Bulldogs. There are two ladies who are in the crowd in Section 108 tonight who came all the way up from Miami, paid a thousand bucks U.S. each to come up here because they're big fans of Bill Lindsay from his days in Florida Panthers. And Bill Lindsay, I think, made the best play of the period. There was a pass out front. Uh, the defense left the, the center of, in front of the net open, and a Houston player picked up a pass and it would have had a clean shot. Bill Lindsay hustled back and tied up his stick enough that he took away that chance. That could have been a great opportunity for Houston to take the lead. And it shows again what Rick is just talking about. It's not just the defenseman, it's about the forwards also helping out, pinching well, in and making sure know, that Scott, if someone falters. He, it was a great recovery because I think that was a defenseman moving in from the point and it actually might have been Lindsay's defenseman. So I don't want to I don't want to rain on your parade there, but you know, Bill's an experienced uh, NHLer and, and this is his first well, long period of time that he's played in American Hockey League. He's a great player, and those people certainly paid that kind of money if he wasn't a great guy also. So I think that, you know, sometimes you get mesmerized by the puck no matter how much experience you got. And I think that incident there, I don't want to, you know, Scott, I'm always picking on you, but I want to say that that was, I think, a defenseman that moved in from the point, and he got a little mesmerized by the puck, and then he was able to recapture his composure and get back and interfere with the guy getting a shot on that. And we so. certainly want to welcome those uh, hockey fans to Hockey Town here in Hamilton and they are uh, Gene Logan and Marion Kiley making their way up from sunny Miami to check out a little Calder Cup action here in Steeltown. So uh, welcome to those and I uh, hope they enjoy the hockey and the city of Hamilton and our great area. Let's get back to the highlights and a uh, chance for the Bulldogs here. Uh, Bishaw 
who gets a chance right in front. This one just goes off the post, but I think it's an example of Hamilton getting their feet moving here, doing good things. We'll talk about example. pressure on the puck, Glenn. Sorry. You talk about pressure on the puck and a great pass by Ward there. But again, you know, that's part of the equipment. That's not an actual shot on net, unfortunately, for the Bulldogs, as they'd like to have scored. But it's a great opportunity, and they used it off a of floor check on pressure on the defenseman. If it happens, you know, when Houston does it against their defenseman, the Bulldogs defenseman, there's no reason why it doesn't happen against the other, uh, other way around. And they proved it right there that if you put pressure on D, there are mistakes that are going to be made. Yeah, these guys, the Houston defense, are, they're no different than, uh, than the Hamilton defense. And as you say, Rick, with, uh, with that forecheck, uh, it's obvious. And then Jason Ward, to give that up to someone like Jason, who has soft hands, made a beautiful pass so over to Bashai and uh, as you said, goes off the goalpost. And uh, you, somebody alluded to earlier that Holmquist went down a little bit early. And again, in the third period, if they can combine the ugliness, the nastiness, the desperation, and get some people in front of that net and, and start bumping them. If you watch when Houston comes into the Hamilton zone and they come in on Conklin, somebody's going through the crease. And in the third period, I think if Hamilton combines all that and gets right back on track, you're going to see them win the third period here and tie the series. We're going to take a minute and go right back down to Cops Coliseum. Todd Crocker is standing by with a very special guest, Ray Ross, who is a uh, Calder Cup winner from his days gone by, the Hamiltonian. And let's go to Todd Crocker now. Well, thanks, guys. I'm here with Ray Ross, three-time winner of the Calder Cup. And you must know how these guys feel out here right now, Ray. It's a great feeling to be in the Calder Cup. There's nothing like it. It's just like the if you're in the Stanley Cup. It's the same thing, really. Anytime you win a championship, it seems to bring teams closer together. Do you still keep in contact with some of those guys? Uh, fairly. Uh, we have a, in Providence, Rhode Island, we have a, a get-together every year down there. And I've uh, seen players down there that haven't, I haven't had, have been in contact for 35, 40 years. It's, it's oh. quite, a, quite a thrill. Oh, ab absolutely. Well, the things that you remember the most about those, uh, well, now there's three of them to choose from. So, uh, you know, it's a, I'm sure you've got many memories, but uh, is there one that stands out in particular? Well, not really one. I, it was just uh, quite a thrill that in my first four years that I, I was a pro, I had I was three uh, Calder Cups under my belt, so to speak. And uh, I played with some great players like uh, John DeBauer, Emil Francis, uh, Fred Sherrill, Steve Kraft, Glenn Sonmore, Jack Stoddard, all Hamilton boys, those three. And Andy Bathgate, that played with him in Cleveland. Zilio Tavazzini, Camille the Eel. I mean, they're all great hockey players. And in those days, there were only six teams in the league, the same as the National Hockey League. So it was quite a, quite a good league. Well, as far as what you're seeing here tonight, are you enjoying it? I think it's a real good, fast game tonight. They're both teams are evenly matched, and it's, it's going to be a toss-up who wins this game. Now, all this offense has got to, uh, it's got to get everybody a little more excited as opposed to some of the defensive hockey we've been seeing. Well, that's true, too, but uh, it just to me, there just seems to be too much interference, hooking, uh, cross-checking from behind, which I don't like to see in hockey, and uh, a little bit of spearing. So you're still a fan, absolutely. You still see as many games as you can? I try to get down here to cops as much as I can, but uh, to tell you the truth, I just don't like the brand of hockey they're playing now. <laughs> hey, although it seemed to be, when you talk to some people, a little rougher then. Well, I think we had a pretty, it was pretty rough when I played, but there was, I think there was uh, a little more competition, and uh, they seemed to uh, have more best regards, like more regards for each other. Huh? Like when I see the, the hockey today, there's too much stick work uh, going on as far as I'm concerned. Now, Ray, one last question before we go. Let me uh, let me ask you this. Do you at all miss riding the bus in the American Hockey League? Well, not really, but we were very fortunate in Providence. For, we had a, a, an airplane. Our owner at the, t at the time was Lou Peary, who owned the Boston Celt Celtics. So we flew quite a bit. But then there was lots of bus rides later on uh, with Cleveland. Ray Ross, three-time Calder Cup winner. Thank you for joining us here on Cable 14. Guys, back to you. We got to sit. I'll say so. Okay. <laughs> and the fans behind to showing the world who's number one. That's <laughs> what <laughs> 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 speaking. And, uh, Go Hamilton. Thank, thank Ray Ross. Uh, uh, 
for joining us in that interview segment. But before we get back down to the action for the third period, I want to show you one opportunity that the Bulldogs had, and that's a great chance right out in front by Ward, who just couldn't corral the puck, control it, and put it behind Telmquist in the, in the nets here. Let's take a look at this one, guys. You know, when, uh, as, a, as the dogs, uh, Tony Sullivan comes in, and he, again, he was one of the guys who played, had such a strong first game. Uh, when when Jay, Wardy must have been in front of him, time must have stood still for him <laughs> there, guys, because he saw the puck, it must have looked like about four by four, and, and couldn't get his hands on it. And uh, really, that, that kind of sums up a little bit of how they've been snake bitten in front of the, in, in front of the net in, in the Houston zone. But uh, poor, poor Wardy sitting and having the puck right in front like that, not being able to corral it. Um, I don't know what was going maybe on. Maybe he saw the two goalies, Telmquist and Holmquist, <laughs> 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 and thought that maybe. Yeah. Well, this is a breakdown certainly for uh, Houston's uh, defensive zone coverage, but why we saw that was speed. Outside speed, you know, making the defenseman react, and uh, we got an opportunity, great pass in front of the net, and Wardy was going to the net. Yep. And we've talked about these things all game. If they use their speed, they go to the net, they go into the trouble areas, you're going to have success. They didn't They didn't cash in on that success right now in the second period, but if they continue to do that in the third, they will find that success. Just another note that everybody knows, 12 of the 17 games that uh, Houston's been in has been by one goals, and they've won nine of those, and two of them have come in OT. So hopefully Hamilton can bear down and uh, get the win and continue to play a solid game. And if they do that, we said, it's closer to 60 minutes you play, the better opportunity you have to win. And the one thing they have been good at Houston, that is, Rick, is they've been a great road team, too, during that stretch as well. Um, one of the things I've noticed with Telmquist, though, is kind of like Dominic Hasek, I think, such a solid goaltender, but if you can if you can hold the puck momentarily in front of him and then go upstairs on him. Is are we playing St. John's or are we playing? <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Homequist. Home home oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Homequist. What I've noticed about him tonight a couple times though is he does have a tendency to go down a bit. Yep. So if we can either get space in front to hold the puck for a split second, make him make the first move, go upstairs like the yep. rider goal, or create and hang in there take a hit, do whatever you can to get a second or third chance, we might have a chance to go upstairs so, on them as well. Rebounds are going to be huge, and if Hamilton, as we say, continue to get to the front of the net, give themselves an opportunity to get those rebounds, there'll be success there. You don't want to see Hamilton right now back off and wait, let Houston uh, get the momentum going because I'm sure that tide turned to Hamilton's favor in the second period, and you want to continue that tide by starting off the third period with a lot of speed and a lot of decisions, the right decisions, getting the puck deep or going to the net hard and just placing the puck to the net. doesn't have to be a great slap shot it just has to be put the puck to the net make him make the first save and we'll hopefully get the opportunity same for the thing second happens one. same thing happens with the power play though when they, they're going to start the third period on the power play and like you're saying you don't have to wind up i'm so tired of seeing the some of the uh, shots from the point going off shin pads mm -hmm. sometimes it's just uh, or off the glass you know whether it, whether it's uh, you know taking that that shot just off the net a wrist shot well and you, you you have to communicate with your forwards and just get the shots through and you all of a sudden you're going to see a shot bounce saw, the sorry net. scott but as we saw in the clips from the first game the uh, commissary's goal off the power play was yep. just a wrist shot to the net with traffic in front yep. So, I mean, you know, the slap shots upstairs are great, but they don't ask you how you got them, just how many you got and who won the game, and that's what matters. What Glenn touched on was they need to play ugly, desperate, and nasty, and we need an ugly, desperate, or nasty goal coming up. And uh, it, going into the third period, Scott, you have a little bit of information that kind of says uh, the Bulldogs need to pull up their socks here. I feel like Hash Bomber. I should have like a, a, a <laughs> line on this. Guy. A numbers You're line the numbers on this. Guy. No, but just something to look at that uh, about the third period. First of all, you got to think that as the third period goes along with Hamilton now needing to have a win in this game because they don't want to go to Houston down 2 nothing. that the pressure, I think, is going to be they're still going to start maybe to feel it a little more than Houston. Both teams obviously want to win. It's not going to be uh, one, Houston's not going to say, oh, well, whatever happens. They want to win, but I think Hamilton's really going to start feeling it if this tie continues on for a while. They can't afford to go into Houston down. But if we can put the graphic up for a second, Hamilton, we're calling it the Oreo, uh, the Oreo Bulldogs because their second periods have been the dominant period. But if you look down there, uh, first period throughout the playoffs, 17 goals for, 9 against. Second period, 25 goals for, 12 against. Third period, 16 goals for, 21 against. 
Uh, their third period has clearly, by the numbers, been their least successful in, in goals for and against in this playoffs. They're going to have to turn that around today or they're going to be facing a real problem going into Houston. Yeah, and I think one of the things as you crunch the numbers a little bit further, you can't say, well, they've had leads and they've just coasted because that graphic just uh, says the opposition outscoring them by a minus five for the Bulldogs going into that Compared third period. Compared to big pluses for the both other periods. Exactly. So that for whatever reason, there has been a situation where the Bulldogs have just... Uh, whether the other teams have, I mean, they have been ahead a lot of these periods. So there may be some cases. We saw one, one of the games we did here where they were up, I think, 5 nothing, And there was a bit of a lapse at the end of the game. And so they relaxed a little two. bit and gave up two in the last right. minute or so. So that counts against that. But the fact is, you can see, they're dominating on the scoreboard for the first two periods throughout these playoffs, not in the third. Guys, very important period of hockey coming up for the Bulldogs. Will they play, as you alluded to earlier, Glenn, maybe grabbing their sticks, sticks a little tighter then? Or will they play loose? And their normal game. I really, I really believe that they had in that second period. They have to believe in themselves, and everybody's human. And when you get on a roll, it's easy to keep going. Anaheim Mighty Ducks is a perfect example of that. They had some time off. They they, they got out of that groove. They got off the roll. And Hamilton, I, I believe that second period proved to them. They proved to themselves that they can play and not just play with, but they can play their game and, and beat Houston. And I think that was uh, second period was a confidence builder for them. And uh, again, that desperation, and Rick and Scott will tell you too, that desperation in the third period, you don't want to go to Houston down 2 nothing. and I think they're going to play much differently in the third, and I think they're going to win. No team in Calder Cup history has ever lost the first two at home and won the series. So, Mr. must Mr. win. Mr. He's got the numbers I as you to give that one to Gary Cliff McKay. Clavin. My colleague Gary <laughs> McKay came up with that one in today's paper, but it's true. It's, it's, you know, you have a, a, a trophy that's been presented for... <laughs> you have a trophy that's been presented for 69 years that, and something's never happened. There's a reason for that. Didn't that happen at Water. the New York Post? Plagiarism and all that? <laughs> yeah, right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's our topic. topic. I said Gary was my guy. Before we go down, we want to remember, if this game ends in regulation, we'll be back for a post-game show to wrap it up with you the Bulldog fans you can join us at 905-645-3232 or send us an email opinion at cable14.com very important period of hockey coming up for Bulldog fans let's go back down to the Coliseum to Todd and Roger guys well thanks Steve the Bulldogs tied up with the Houston Arrows to start out the last 20 minutes or at least the third period because who knows, at the moment, these two teams seem intent on keeping up with each other. Certainly they had a lot of uh, late period pressure there by the Bulldogs. The, penalty, the power play, two men, and then the one man through the duration of the end of the second. But even the uh, three probably previous shifts to the power play, a lot of pressure on the Houston goal. And don't forget, folks, hang in after the game. First of all, for the post-game show, and then, of course, the Hamilton Thunder will play their first game of the season next on Cable 14. Off the draw, the Houston Arrows' David Cullen fires that one down the ice. The Bulldogs on the power play to start things out here in the third period. Marc-Andre Bergeron. Hakana sends that one in. Holmquist stops it. Cullen gets it up along the rail, and they get that one out. Bergeron now again will try it for the Bulldogs as the power play has got one marker tonight. Up along the board, Bergeron sends it toward the net, tip, but Holmquist was right in front of it, squared up nicely. Little backhand move out front, Ryder trying to dipsy doodle a little bit, and it didn't work out. And the power play is huge as far as the Houston Arrows are concerned as they fought off the five on three and Broke that one too. Here's Hens. Waits for help. Hens moves into the slot. Trying to send it down and it is knocked down by the Arrows and they get an opportunity back the other way. Bayou tries to go in two on one and didn't quite get across to Bayou. Conklin there with the modified splits to take away that low post on the pass across. Conklin along to Beauchemin. Gets by Bobby Allen. Oshaman tries to knock it forward. He does. Here's Rafi Torres. He's got Bill Lindsay up there. Goes cross ice, finds Hins, and Lindsay is way offside on that one. He was making a wide turn to try and prevent it, but just could not. Okay, Next up on the Dipsy Doodle at the blue line. Tonight's draw is the Yuga Minor Hockey. And check this out. The lucky winner's taking home 4,000. 
Here are cops tonight, 10,419 fans. That is the highest in the American Hockey League this postseason. Boy, have Hamilton fans responded in this game, too. That sets a new Bulldogs playoff record as well. That is the highest attendance for a Bulldogs playoff game ever. I believe that's the highest attendance in Cops this season as well, including St. John Maple Leaf games, which usually draw extremely well here in Hamilton. At the blue line, offside. A little too much juggling there. So we're about two minutes in here, tied up at one apiece. The game seems to have developed a, several different personalities, Roger. It's a bit of a sibyl that way. A lot of hustle by Houston with some early four checking in the first period. Hamilton responded, starting using the speed up front of their forwards to pressure the Houston Arrow defense. We're here in the third. McCulloch gets one through to Murphy, turning it around. No one home for the Arrows. Now it's picked up by Bishai. He can't quite get it to anybody. Hogan out front. A little bit of a mix-up. Conklin went to go for it. He's knocked down. Picked back up to the net, and the Bulldogs get it out to center just in case. McCulloch sends one in. The Arrows make a full change. Up ice. Here's Ward. He dumps it in backhanded. The Bulldogs get to make a change here. That one slides up front. Berger on the shot. What a save out front from Benesek. Akina dumps that one in. Rita trying to find something. Rolls out front. Placanek back to Bergeron. Tries to fire it in again and puts it off the shins of Kluche and he tries to pull Bergeron over and now he gets loose. But Rita had back checked nicely to cover off that. Here's Placanek. He dumps it in. Why could the Bulldogs ever benefit from a real shot in the arm of some energy from Yanni Rita? Bergeron upset over at the bench. Nearly takes out uh, equipment manager Pat Langlois. The Bulldogs do have two, so there's a long shot. I, I guess he feels one's expandable. Allen gets it into the slot. Little backhander. Stoll didn't get a lot of mustard on that. Here's Ryder looking for an opportunity. Bouchon leans in. and A nice kick save. From Holmquist, here's Trudell, working with Dominic Kelly. Down into the corner, Allen, Moshamon in there, takes it away, slides it up to Stoll. Stoll gets to the red line, dumps it in, he'll go off. Michael Ryder in there, the open net is, Holmquist was sprawling to get back up front, but Ryder couldn't get out there on both feet. Four minutes off the clock, one apiece to score. Mike Andre Bergeron's helmet is still out there. Now he collects it. Haines, he gets down into the corner. And a whole mess of arrow. Kyle Wanvig takes the shot. Tipped up front. Loose puck. Open cage. Nothing doing. Nobody could get to it. Pins and needles here in the third. Both teams with their chances. Here's McKellick. And that goes wide. Tipped that way. Thomas Ark without a stick out there. Goes back, picks it up. Down in the corner, Lindsay finally gets a hold. Can't do anything with it. Rolls out front. Now here comes Hins. Back the other way with Torres and Lindsay. Dumped into the far corner. Mayu picks it up. Hins traps it. Down along, back behind the net. He's upended by Benesek. It rolls loose. Hins trying to get it up to Torres. It does come loose now, but this time it's picked up by Walleen. Wanvig, back the other way, knocked down by Bobby Allen. He puts it into open ice, and Benesek just gets a piece of it. A little hopper, and Conklin got in front of that. That one comes out front, backhanded there, and a shot on the post! The Bulldogs are a little scrambling in their defensive zone right now. Bishai finally comes away with it. And both teams will want a measurement of that goal as they've rung one off the post, both of them. This one comes out into center. It's knocked back the other way. Moshamon picks it up offside the call. A couple of mental errors, and it goes to show you how quickly they can capitalize. Houston with a shot there off the post behind Conklin. Boy, if you aren't entertained by this hockey game, you must not like the game. 1-1 one, one the score, 28-18 shots on goal. Five minutes 
38 seconds off the clock. One apiece the score here in the third. Back the other way, Salma Lane trying to pull it loose. He gets a piece of it, and now it's picked up by Tony Tuzzolino. Tuzzolino tries to come out with it. Ward gets all over him. Back out into center, Cavosi trying to move the puck here. Gets a little bit of help. Dumped into the corner, Cavosi goes back after it. Tuzzolino now. There's a pile of bodies down there, and finally, they sort things out out front, and nobody to get it. Marc-Andre Bergeron takes a little cross-check in the back. Dump back out into center. Pezzolino winds up, sends one in. Conklin just directs it off into the corner. Placanic picking it up for the Bulldogs, trying to get that loose, and Conklin wisely traps that one. Not enough mustard on to clear it behind the net. We'll take the opportunity to spend a few minutes in the studio with Steve Foxcroft. Pretty entertaining stuff. The first six minutes of that period just flying by, Scott. Yeah, it went by, it felt like six <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I mean, it, it, certainly is, uh, it certainly is more exciting than some of the hockey we've seen in this series mm -hmm. so far, the first game, and it's, it's picked up. And, uh, but I think, Rick, what you were just saying, and the defense is still, in really important times now, still playing pretty soft, especially in their own end. Well, I think Houston, if, you know, everybody learns something after, as far as you go. If you don't, you know too much, or you think you do anyway. And so we knew that Hamilton knew if they put uh, pressure on and speed, they used their speed, went to the net, they'd have success. And Houston knew because they stopped putting pressure on Hamilton's defense in the second period, there was not many turnovers, or they, the Hamilton defense was getting the puck out quicker than they had previously that period, the first period or the game one. So they, they started that again, and Hamilton's defensemen, a uh, couple of them have play, been soft on the puck, and when you're soft on the puck, turnovers happen. And I don't mean by passing, I mean by getting ready to make a pass. They're getting their uh, sticks uh, lifted, or they're getting bumped off the puck, and we saw that's why Houston had their opportunities during that stretch there. And it was interesting, the one where Conklin kind of bobbled it, it just sort of knuckleballed him a bit. Those are the little things that end up to make it a difficult clear. It took the Bulldogs like three or four chances to clear the zone. Let's get back down to the Coliseum with more third period action. Here's Todd and Roger. Thanks, Steve. The Bulldogs get that one up and back out into center. Mahalik picks it up. They're going to claim that's a two-line pass. Good point made by Rick there in the studio, Todd. That, uh, Houston now revisiting that heavy four check, that last uh, couple of scrambled shifts by the Bulldogs in their own zone. Houston putting a lot of pressure on the Bulldog defenseman, causing uh, a lot of their success and opportunities for goals. Picking up now, the arrows trying to break out with it. Donna Kelly with Trudell. Knocked back by Bobby Allen. Trudell's in deep. Now Bill Lindsay trying to bring it out. At the line, finally, brought out to Bobby Allen. He dumps it in. Stopped by Holmquist, seven minutes off the clock, one apiece the score here in the third. The Bulldogs and the Houston Arrows. Game two of the Calder Cup final. McCulloch sends a long one in, but you don't do that when you got other players coming in to help you out. Offside, the call. Hooked again, Conklin still looking solid in the net. Loved on that uh, knuckleball there earlier on in the period, and then of course the post rattle behind. Bulldogs need to uh, return some of this energy shown by Houston back on Holmquist and get some more shots fired on net. Well up on the score on the uh, shots on goal, 28 to 19 right now. The arrows trying to get something going offensively, and that one gets sent down the ice, picked up by Komosarek for icing, and they'll bring it all the way back as these two teams are trying to ratchet things up just a little bit more to pick up that goal. And when we talked about the offense that is out there, and it's really the chances, Roger, it's not so much the fact that, uh, you know, the score I know is 1-1, so we're not looking at a at a flurry of goals, or even a snowstorm. We went through that uh, exchange. Or light rain. Sleet or hail. We had that uh, exchange in the second period when they were back to back. Here's Hainsey, throws one toward the net. Stoll, trying to find it, and here's Hosa. Hosa steps out front, loose puck. Juan Vick picks it up. 
Knocked back down the ice. Hainsey will get to that one. Doesn't get it out. Commissar comes in. Rubbed out. Kyle Wanvig there. Hainsey now gets it up and Hosa tries to reach for it. This one will go for icing. There's definitely uh, some partial cloudiness when it comes to the uh, points being put on the board, but it, the chances have been good. And dramatic chances. Threes on twos, twos on ones. Loose scrambles in front. You can feel the energy in the building. The fans help with that because they, they raise that electricity level inside the building. The, the opportunities that the dogs may have in the net or the opportunity that Houston may have to, to get one up on the beloved Bulldogs. And all, that, all that's combined inside the, uh, inside the rink tonight with the attendance so high. I had a chance. Uh, I had a chance to go to the twos on one uh, concert, but I'm not a big hip hop fan. Here's Yanni Rita trying to find Placanic. Anderson now moving that along through the slot, and Placanic was going the other way. Dump back out into center. Bit of a bouncer. Knocked back out to the line. Cluche knocks it back in offside. The crowd roars their disapproval. No better place to Not happy with former Albany River rat Sylvain Cloutier, who's been in the league long enough. He was an Adirondack Red Wing. Adirondack was a great trip. There is no question about that. Used to be a great place to get chicken wings there, if I can just recall the name of it. Dangos, I think it was, or something to that. But Adirondack in Glens Falls, New York, that was one of the great trips in the American Hockey League. Although it was about a seven-hour bus ride. Sal Malanen dumped in. Talked to Ray Ross about that in the intermission. They had a plane. <laughs> a plane in the American Hockey League. I can't imagine. How gauche. <laughs> Back the other way, the Houston Arrows. Picked up. Here's a great opportunity. Conklin turns it aside. There's another one at him. He stops that. The Bulldogs back on their heels just a little bit. A little miscommunication. Finally, Beauchemin sends it up along the boards. Right back in from the arrows. Beauchemin picks it up. Ward gets a little help from O'Rourke, the referee, staying on his feet. Here's Ward, going to try and do it all by himself. He hasn't got a lot of help down there. Torres on the ice now. Rafi Torres picks it up. He's tripped up. Back out front. Here's Hins. Couldn't do anything with it there. Didn't have a clear shot. This one rolls out toward Holmquist, and it's knocked back into the corner. Knocked back down the ice the full length. Bobby Allen wasn't going for it. Conklin puts it off the glass. Trudell, big opportunity up front. And that one backhanded wide from Donna Kelly. Komasark, the Bulldogs are in a little bit of trouble here. Here's Torres. Knocks that one back to Komasark. Here's Bill Lindsay, the shot, and directed wide. Hens tries to get it back out front. Down into the corner. Lindsay fights for it. Torres all alone behind the net. Digging forward. Hens. Hens has some help up top. Back another shot right on Holmquist. Lindsay in there for the rebound, but nothing, uh, nothing able to steer towards the net. Pavlikovsky returned on that shift, Todd, as well for the Houston Arrows. Left in the first period after the hit by Torres. Bergeron picks that one up for icing. Well, I talked to Johnny Bauer a couple of years ago, and he said he didn't miss those nights on the sleeper bus at all. <laughs> I wonder if Rick Natras misses it. Let's find out. Let's go back to the studio with the guys. Well, right now, Glenn, one of the things that is uh, very evident in this game is who is going to make the adjustments as the time just ticks away here in the third period. How do you see that part of it right now? Well, Rick alluded to this earlier, and that is Houston was uh, out for checked, really, which was odd in this series in the second period. They went to the dressing room, and they have made the necessary adjustments in the third period. And as we've seen, their forechecking has resumed, and it, which is causing havoc for the Hamilton Bulldogs defense. So Hamilton needs to make their own adjustments, and again, being hard on the puck, fighting through the checks, and playing that desperate hockey to get that, that, that go-ahead goal 
it, it, which we might as well be in overtime right now. Yeah, for sure. And Scott, one of the things I think is a result of that might be taking away the Bulldogs game that we saw in the second period, the speed to the outside, or maybe is it the Bulldogs losing their legs a little bit and playing tired? I don't, at this point of the season, I can't believe that they'd be losing their legs. I think they're all in good shape, and uh, and I mean with the with what's on the line, I don't think anyone's going to be uh, you know backing off or or you know not playing through the tiredness. But I just think that Houston again, as Glenn says, has come out and really taken the four check to them, and, and Hamilton now has to respond the same way Houston did. We'll see if they do. We'll go back to the Coliseum. See him to Todd and Roger, guys. Thanks, Steve. Here's Berger on the shot. Holmquist saw it all. Here's Stoll. Trying to find Bashai. This one rolls out. Hakana dumps it back into the corner. Michael Ryder is there. He's got the goal for the Bulldogs so far tonight. It was on the power play at 3.32 with a first. Wallin now moving it back the other way. Dumped in. Hakana goes back for that. He looks for a little help. Throws it up through center. Gets by everybody. And a race for it as icing is called. That was a late icing call nonetheless. <laughs> late and awkward. Nonetheless, icing at the end of the day. Face off back into the Bulldogs zone. Bulldogs now crested the 30 shot on goal limit. Well, there's a guy with a playoff beard. And Kids are growing up so fast these days. Uh, I say. Placanic now. He gets tossed out. Joseph Ballet gets in there. Knocked back for Beauchemin. That rides the rail. It gets by everybody and it looked like it. Made hey, contact with the Bulldog bench. And they're gonna drop the puck just out front of the Bulldog bench. Well, Johan Holmquist has stood the test. I'll tell you, he has faced 31 Bulldog shots so far, turning aside 30. He made some spectacular saves in game one, some routine ones tonight, but he has faced them. One apiece to score, no scoring since 10-15 of the first period. Through center. Dumped down into the corner. Ty Conklin comes out, plays it. Comes loose behind the net. Hainsey goes after it there. Henderson working on it. It comes loose. Placanic knocks it up the boards. And now in the corner, finally, Hainsey working on it. He finds Commissar. Out into center. Ballet will knock it in, and that line will go off. They'll take a defenseman with them. 8.06 left to go. Here in the third period, tied at one apiece. Hogan dumps it in. Allen goes after it. Here's Bobby Allen firing it up the boards. A big rest coming to these two teams. After tonight's game, they don't play again until Wednesday in Houston. And then Friday, Saturday. Jason Ward nearly stole that one away. And is offside as Tuzzolino. Gets into a little bit of a uh, how do you do with Jason Ward. Ward nearly, very, very nearly went the other way with it. Down hard in the corner in the previous rush in by Houston. Tozzolino took him into the boards heavily. And Tony Tozzolino. Mentioned him a few times, AHL veteran. A couple of, a couple of mentions there about uh, Johan Holmquist in Houston that is well taught. 13 of his 17 playoff games this year. He's only allowed two goals or less. Lanislav Benesek sending that one in. Picked up by Beauchemin. It comes up to the line and out. David Cullen grabs it there for the arrows. Trudell has that pop up into his face. Controls it to Dominic Kelly. He wants to cut in. Pulls out of that and now picked up out front. Trudell tries to throw it at Trude Conklin rather and has a little trouble doing that. Benesek. Tosses it back in. Chad Hins battling for the puck. Pavlikovsky with the return. Picked up by Lindsay. He's got room with Torres. It closes in a little bit. Lindsay throws it at the net. Hits the side of the net. Torres still with the puck. Trying to kick it up the board. Hins in there fishing for it. Pulled down to the ice is Torres. And everybody's sitting on the pond down there. 
Torres and Cullen go nose to nose. Lindsay and Benesek over there to see if there's going to be a call. And O'Rourke says, no, we're just going to have the face off. Six fifty left to go here in the third. One apiece the score as we see the ice dancers and their young charge. Choreographer is always the uh, interest of the group. They're handing her a check for the good work that she's been doing. Assistant coach for the uh, Houston Arrows. Matt Chow and Cam Stewart doing some work over there. As far as the Houston Arrows are concerned. Cam Stewart only in his first year of retirement. Last year in the Boston organization. Ryder, a little trouble handling that puck. As it goes off his skate, Bergeron picks it up. Nakana moves that up the boards. Gets by everybody to Hosa. Hosa and Ryder back the other way. Ryder at the blue line. They say it's onside. Hosa tries to cut in. Rolls around, wants to go backhand. And cutting in was Kovacar! Just wide. Ryder picks it up. He's going to get help from Hainsey here. Ryder cuts in. Knocked off his stick and back out. Kovacar with the puck. Here's Hainsey. Knocked down. Wanvig goes after Hainsey. Up along to Ryder. Gets by him. That one will be picked up by McCallum for icing and hauled down behind it was Placanic by Curtis Murphy and no call from the referee. They wanted something. 5.52 left to go. One apiece to score. We'll take the opportunity to head back to the studio. Okay, we're back here and uh, Bulldogs finally getting something almost in front of the net anyway as Hosa was trying to win a one-on-one -on -one battle there, Rick. I'm stealing this one from Glenn, but Glenn alluded to in the Houston zone, they're, what they're really doing is taking away the neutral zone or the center of the ice and forcing the, uh, the Bulldogs to play perimeter hockey. And if they want to do not want to cycle the puck down the wall, as we just saw in that last little play there, and they want to bring it to the middle, they're going to lose possession of the puck, and the puck's going to go the other way. So Hamilton has to find a way to get into that uh, you know, closed-off area right now to get some shots, or quality shots, at uh, Houston's goaltending. Yeah, since the goal by Michael Ryder on the power play, really nothing happening in front of the Houston net for the Bulldogs. Well, I mean, other than, I mean, the second period, they didn't get rewarded for the work that they did in the second period. So if... You know, a lot easier said than done that they should play that style again. But right now, they're going to have to fight through these checks, as Glenn has said all, all night. you got to fight through these things and do the things that are going to hurt you in the long run, but uh, make you successful. That means getting the cross checks, getting the wax, and whatnot. Overtime could be looming. Let's go back down to the Coliseum for more action, guys. Thanks, Steve. Kluche in there against Plukanic. The Bulldogs, Komisar picks it up. Trying to get it up and out. Henderson put it right into Bouchamon. He finds Placanic at center. Placanic with Ballet. Ballet's got Rita on the backside. He dropped it back to Placanic. Rita was on a freight train out there just to get to the net. A hurdling freight train, just to be clear. There was hurdling. There's a shot on Conklin. Rebound. Murphy couldn't get to it. Rolls out front. And Conklin gets on top of that one. Bouche. Thomas Sarek there involved with a bit of a pinball puck in front of Conklin, who, lucky for the Bulldogs, got his uh, trapper on it. Luce, a thorn in the side of the Bulldogs all night. Thomas Sarek, another strong game on the blue line. Joseph Ballet out there for the fisticuffs. Thomas Sarek and Luce. And now, Dan O'Rourke is saying, forget about it. You're going to do that here late in this game. Don't show me up. You're going to sit down. I'm letting you play the game. Play it. Komasar grabs a seat. Fuche grabs a seat. A couple of valuable players from both teams off on that one. Have the uh, coincidental minors. I'd be surprised if anything else. Although Hainsey now heads off, the ballet rather, heads off to the uh, Bulldog penalty box as well. I don't know whether he's caught Belay for an additional two, and that's why the uh, Houston players retreated to the bench so quickly. Belay did give a push away from uh, the original scrum. 
There's the two minutes to Belay, certainly up on the clock. O'Rourke's now going back to the penalty box. As you can see Ward and Dominic Kelly waiting for the call. And Jason Ward isn't happy about it, so that is how it's going to end up. The Bulldogs are going to be down a man with 5.23 left to go. This is a heck of a situation to be in. And the crowd, after this announcement, isn't going to yell out hooray. I got uh, news for you. Coincidental minors for the rough, Todd, and an additional rough to Belay. Down into the corner, Roach. Trudell now. Looking to pick that one out of there. Lindsay kicking it around. Now it's picked up and on the half boards, Dominic Kelly. Roche tried to do something with it, chopping at it up and out. Chad Hinge goes chasing. Dominic Kelly doesn't know where that puck is. Finally, picking it up. Jason Ward out there. He can steal the puck on any given day, any given moment. Bishai in there. Moshaman. Side of the net, Bobby Allen dishes it off into the corner. He didn't have a chance to clear it. Bishai tries to reel that puck in. Boshamon in there as well. Does come loose. Back up at the point. Bishai tries to get on top of it. Roche has got to clear. Here's Dominic Kelly going for the wrap around. Conklin's there for that. Loose puck. Reaches out with the blocker and reels it in. Big stop by Conklin as he found it. There's about three whacks there right on top of the crease. Dominic Kelly, presence of mind to go for the wraparound on the wide side. Kicked off in the initial save by Conklin and laid there in his pads until he could get rid of the stick. Dominic Kelly gets Conklin to commit, pulls it around the backside. The stop's there made by his stick, rolls up off his leg. There's a first rebound, lays there until he can get the trap running, get the whistle. 104 left in that uh, power play. 427 left to go here in the third. A minute four left in the penalty to Commissar. Or rather, well, they have 55 on the screen, but it's Ballet, 57, who is in there with Commissar. And I think it was Ballet who got the extra two. Wally rubbed out on the board. Bergeron winds up, tries to get it out. That one ends up taking a skip into the crowd. He is going to be inside the blue line. I thought maybe that struck the uh, Houston player before it made. 4.06 left to play here in the third. 43 seconds left to go in the power play for the Houston Arrows. In goes Chad Hintz for the faceoff against Rickard Walling. And he just submarines it. And that is not the length of the ice. Bill Lindsay goes chasing. Now the arrows try to get set up. 28 seconds left to go in the extra man. Mayu sets up on the half boards. Lindsay chases him out of that. It comes out front. It's picked up by Hins. He controls it. Here's Lindsay and Hins just soft dump into the corner. Hins. Houston now trying to reform themselves. Here's Bergeron. Picked up, nearly lost out front. And now Komasar out of the box. Got Ward. Ward, yeah! This is on the near side. Komasar knocks it back into the corner. Puck rolling just a bit as Ward got it. Probably enough not to be able to get that sharp, crisp shot on that. Adlikowski. That one rolls out front. Picked up, the other way. Here's Ward. That one knocked on the back. Check nicely by Pavlikovsky, who looked like he was knocked out of this game earlier. Ward at the end of a long shift. He's got to get off the ice. Oshaman falls down, trying to cut in on Hosa. That doesn't work out. Conklin's there for that. And it's knocked down the ice, and that one may ride the length. There goes Ward. As the icing is called, Ward just slides to the bench. Upset with some of the obstruction he feels is going on out there. 2.33 left to go, one apiece to score. It has been that way since 10.15 of the first period, a power play goal to tie things up from Donna Kelly. Blay and Kluche just made their way out of the penalty boxes, so we're back to full strength. Got a late line change by Jeff Ward. 
That's being overturned by Dan O'Rourke. And Ty Conklin comes out. He thought he might take that draw. A lot of thunder being made here as well as that Hamilton Thunder game comes up after this. Stick around for the post-game show as well. Off the draw. Stoll tries to get to that one. The Bulldogs win it. Bergeron dumps it up and out. Trying to get to it is Stoll. McCallick sends it back the other way. Cavosi can't do anything with it. Bergeron sends it back up and out. David Cullen goes chasing. That one ends up in the bench. 2.17 left to go. And the crowd is now urging their team to make something happen here. 2.17 left to go. One apiece to score. They are on the edge of their seat here at Cox Coliseum. You can through your TV. You should be in the building. There's the shot dumped in. Up for Komisarek at the line, trying to keep it loose. Comes back the other way, Placanic knocks it free. Cavosi at the line, Tuzzolino trying to do something with it. Throws it towards Conklin, and a nice grab out of the air by Ty Conklin. Anchorage, Alaska native. Minute 59 left to go. You can bet Conklin and his counterpart at the other end, Holmquist, are going to be getting a, a fast freeze on anything anywhere near the net. There won't be any chances taken whatsoever. And there may be two minutes uh, left in the third period, but for all intents and purposes, Todd, we've been in overtime for quite some time. There we see Johan Holmquist. At the line, gets by. Jason Ward out there for another great shift, I'm sure. Here's Bashai. He dumps it into the corner. Ward goes chasing. He has been effective. They just can't find a way to get past Holmquist. Minute 40 left to go. Bruce, a little drifter that gets in there, but an easy save by Conklin. Here's Ward. They like him here at Cops Coliseum. Ward sends it into the corner. Sal Malanen goes chasing. Cullen sends it the length of the ice. Bergeron will go back and get this one and pick it up for icing, and the Bulldogs will get a draw deep inside Houston Arrows territory with a minute 23 remaining. You get the opinion that the Bulldogs can get that second breakout pass coming off their defenseman. If, the, if that first pass is clean, the second pass is going. The Bulldogs seem to be using that team speed again that we talked about earlier on in the game, especially wide to the outsides. Jason Ward, a perfect example, picks it up and rushes down the wing. A good shot there at Cops Coliseum. The draw coming to the stick side of Holmquist. Stoll is in there to take it against Tuzzle, or Sylvain Cloutier, rather. A little question about some debris there. Michael Ryder has. Osa is out there as well. Bergeron and Komisara. Stoll off the draw. Ryder tries to get it back. At the line, Bergeron keeps it in. Rolls behind the net. Holmquist stops it there. Cullen fires it up the board. Comes loose, and they clear it out. Gets by Bergeron. Conklin. Hands that puck over, Bergeron puts it up the boards. Going to be picked up by Stoll. Stoll and Ryder back the other way. At the line, Stoll hangs on to it. Throws it at Holmquist. Holmquist, he hangs on to that one. And now... That Cullen and Stoll mixed up along the half boards. Ryder and his defenseman in front of the net. They're down there and uh, get separated up. David Cullen holding Jared Stoll to the ice until he'd buy a used car from him. Last minute of play. Here in the third period, tied up at one apiece. The fans loving their hockey team tonight. Here in Hamilton. Hens will go in for the draw. Lindsay and Torres have earned the right to be there. Moshaman and Allen. Back on defense. Bluche goes in for the draw against Hens. Hens knocks it back to Allen. Allen puts it off the boards, goes down into the corner. Here's Hens behind the net. Lindsay goes back for it. Finds some open ice. Goes back for Hens. Hens has that pop off his stick. Roll around to the near corner, up the board. Lindsay gets it back to Allen. He tries to fire one in there, but it's stopped. 
Don McKelly's got Trudell out there, but he's going to take him himself across the line. And it just hangs up a little bit. Lindsay coming back the other way, trying to pick it up. Trudell, 25 seconds left to go. Here in the third, Allen knocking it back to Beauchemin. And Beauchemin now picked up. There's a shot, and that ends up wide. Conklin puts it up the near boards. 11 seconds left. Here's Beauchemin, the last effort from the Bulldogs. Knocks it in. Going chasing his tours. He's got five seconds to make it happen here, Lindsay! Time. Lindsay with chances right to the very end, almost at the buzzer. The stop was made. Kicked out innocent enough out of the corner. Lindsay found himself alone with a chance to bat at it. Didn't have complete control of it by himself. I think he was draped all over by a defenseman from Houston, but certainly made contact and fired it at the net. I'm going to try and get some medical equipment in here as we get Todd re rejuvenated. There's the shot. With the great opportunity at the very end and just jamming out. Those phone books to get a pad on it is Johan Holmquist. Folks, we have got a great overtime coming up. No question about it. These two teams want this one badly. We are going to head back to the studio on Todd Crocker with Roger Turnin. Lots to talk about, to be sure. Well, it's still 1-1, one -one, folks. And we're going to overtime, so stay with us, batting down the hatches. Next goal is going to win this hockey game, of course, as we go into overtime. Who knows how long we will be here, and uh, of course, I'll go on and say next goal is a big goal, right? Yeah, I know, I know goal. you guys are dying to say it, but Scotty, I'll say stole it. your thunder. And oh, hey, wow. it could mean the series, that's for sure, because Hamilton has to do everything to avoid going down 2 nothing in this series, heading for three games down in Houston, Glenn. Yeah, I, we, we've, we've mentioned that uh, throughout the night tonight that uh, you don't want to go down there, uh, down two games. Um, are we saying that they would lose for sure down there? Obviously not, but I mean, it's tough. I mean, Nats, you've been in these positions uh, in your playing days, and, and I mean, in a, in a final, I mean, the stats... Uh, stats, man. Captain yeah. Stat, uh, <laughs> Clifford Clavin had that earlier. <laughs> it's the big, and guys, let's just take a minute. Let's show the end of the game. Similarly to game one, it ended with a flurry in front of the Houston net. And let's take a look at the end of uh, game two. We'll do that actually in just a second here. we got to get it yeah. queued up for uh, Glenn will act it out for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it all started. Going. It was an <laughs> exciting. And how about the two people that their hearts must have skipped a beat would be uh, Gene Logan and Marion Kyle who came up from Miami to see Bill Lindsay. And he's the guy who had, it, uh, had the chance there, Scott. Standing in front of the net. And he tried. You were talking before, Glenn and Rick and, uh, and Steve, you all, I think, were talking about everybody, in other words, <laughs> except me. All of us. We're all of us had it, Scott, but yeah, I'm sorry. All of me. We're talking about uh, going upstairs, trying to get upstairs because Holmquist. I think I mentioned that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because Holmquist, you were saying how he was going down. And one thing we can talk about this week, we've all been reading about Patrick Waugh and hearing about Patrick Waugh quitting, and everyone's talking about what made Patrick Waugh such a great goalie. Well, there were a lot of things, but one of them was when he got Not started. Not retiring during yeah. the Stanley Cup playoffs well, doesn't make him a great goalie, anyways. <laughs> Yeah. And he didn't Stole, quit, but he quit, the, he quit from Missed the Montreal team. Missed the Olympic team. team. He retired from the NHL. And skipped the Olympic team. But the point was, one of the things that early on he got started, when Francois Allaire, the goalie coach, was working with him, he did some number crunching and found, and I, I don't know if it was 71 or 72 percent of goals were scored along the ice or at the bottom part of the net, which is how he decided to start working on that butterfly like he did. You were talking how they had to go upstairs. Lindsay was obviously trying, was thinking that. He saw that Holmquist was already down, and as he was, or was going down, was trying to control it to get it upstairs, just couldn't get a hand on it. Right, let's go to our highlights and uh, see pick. what we have here first. <laughs> Who knows what we got, so we're going to take a look here and we'll pick up what I, might be the wraparound chance by the Houston club here, and it's Dom Kelly. He's got the goal tonight for Houston, and here he goes behind the net. Conklin gets across post to post really quick. That's he had to be. Something that Ty Conklin does very well. We had a goaltender here in Hamilton a few years ago that didn't do that very well in Eric Heffler, and and uh, the, the t other teams exploited that. Ty Conklin does that very well, going post to post and covering that. And you'll notice in the, the first goal against Ty in game one, it started out as a wraparound, and, but the player was allowed to turn around and get a shot away, and he went upstairs. 
Yeah, yeah, thankfully, the, there was a whistle after that, so Todd Crocker could retrieve his lung from the floor in front of him and stick it back in. Well, it was an entertaining third period, yeah. that's for sure. Both yeah. teams getting some great chances. Both goalies really, really doing a good job in this hockey game today. Two power play goals, uh, the, uh, the story so far. Let's go back to the highlights. Chance for the Bulldogs as they come back here, and this ends up to be a three-on-one as they come in from the neutral ice area, Rick. Commissario gets out of the penalty box to force it into the two-on-one, and as we looked again, as Lindsay will we'll see later, Ward there, Jason Ward, the puck was rolling, you know, and he didn't get a uh, good wood on it. But again, the goalie was down, he tried to go upstairs, and it bounced over his stick. So I think Hamilton, they didn't have that many opportunities, but late in the game they had those two, the Ward one and the Lindsay goal. I mean, excuse me, the Lindsay shot or opportunity that they had but they didn't, couldn't cash in on it. And those are the ones, when you go in overtime, you're saying to yourself, you're sitting in the dressing room, I wish I could have, uh, you know, I wish the puck would have lied down for me. But that's the game of hockey. You know, they're bounce here, bounce there, dictate who, who's going to win the game. Hamilton, I didn't think played as well as they did in the second period, but they had the same opportunities as, uh, as Houston to win the hockey game. How much, I mean, you've played obviously late into the spring in different leagues. Is there anything now to this about the ice with the warmer, with the 10,400 people in the building, with it being in June now, being a nice day out, that as the period gets on, it gets skated on, it's getting a little softer and the puck gets well, a little bouncier? I think, what, you know, not so much in Hamilton, but it, you go back to the old St. Louis days when Harry Ornest was on the team and he wanted to save money. He was turning the compressors off. So it didn't matter, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter about winning. But I think, you know, late in games and stuff like that, the ice certainly is not as good as it is when you start the hockey game because of the heat from the people in the building. And now we know it's such a great crowd tonight, over 10,000 uh, people. So this is probably a, a shock to the ice system and at Cops Coliseum, <laughs> not knowing how they react to all these, uh, the, the heat coming from all these bodies. But I think this is when the game becomes more simpler. I said before, we saw Bolsherman, uh, Bolsherman excuse me, at the end of the game trying to go up the middle mm -hmm. when the ice isn't so good and the puck was intercepted. They didn't get a scoring opportunity, which was lucky for the Bulldogs and lucky for him. But this is where you keep the puck out of the neutral zone. You do that chip and chase type of uh, hockey. A lot of people say it's boring, but it's successful. Ask New Jersey, and hopefully the puck bounces over their stick, and you get the opportunity rather than bouncing over your stick and them getting the opportunity. Well, Scott, he, he constantly amazes me. I've been on the road a little bit, just get back in town. I didn't know it was June already. <laughs> now that we're into June. It's, it's June-like weather we're oh, enjoying. Oh, yeah. Thanks, because I was just running for my day timer. I, think I, I thought I missed a couple days. It's the metric part of me. Oh, that was, it's the metric part. I thought being in the States so much, it was just the exchange. We're already into June. Well, it, it, it feels like June. I was yeah. in shorts for part okay. of the day today. and hadn't been able to for May. That's it's been scary. so cold. So. With, the yeah. with the 100 sunblock you use? <laughs> Lic liquid lead. Usually, yeah, there we go. Let's take a look at the end of the game. We talked about the other night how uh, it ended with a flurry in front of the Houston net. Well, same thing happens tonight. Bill Lindsay with a glorious chance takes it off the skate, tries to flip it over and go upstairs. Here it is, right in the dying seconds. You know, when uh, any time uh, Rick you, and, and you'll attest to this, uh, uh, being a professional hockey player, when the guys are in junior and in, uh, in the American Hockey League. We've been talking about the pucks going upstairs, and any time uh, when you're in close like that, when you get a rebound, you bury it under the crossbar, and that's called an NHL goal. Because when you get to the NHL, you have to you have to get the puck up in tight situations. Yeah, you have to. Personally, being an ex NHLer, I never knew how to do that. That's why they put me as far back, other than goaltender, because I couldn't get up and down quick enough. But uh, you know, being a defenseman, but you're right there, Glenn. You got to get it up, and that's what they call hands. And not everybody can do it. The great goal scorers do it all the time. Other guys that, uh, you know, get lucky every once in a while. I think, you know, Lindsay's had some success in his career, but he's never really been a goal scorer. So you got to give him, you know, a little bit of credit. But Ward, he tried it there too. But it also is the puck going to be comfortable on your stick? Is it lying flat? And there's a lot of things that, you know, make a great play or a potential great play into a, a big awe from the fans because it didn't materialize. And there's other guys that can corral pucks in those situations and get them upstairs. Brad Halls and different guys like that. I, I, I don't think you guys might know, but when, when, when Rick, your big year, in Philadelphia was seven or eight goals. Yeah. You, that, he had to retire because he, too much pressure. Too much pressure. Too much they figured he wanted ten next year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Flyers wanted ten out of him next year, so he said, <laughs> that's, no, "That's it. Right. That's too much." The um, before we move on, I want to remind the uh, the fans of the Bulldogs when they go down to Houston for Game Three, uh, non-television game. So the only way to keep in touch with that is through the website, of course, uh, through the AHL.com or the HamiltonBulldogs.com website or check it out on 820 Cham. Derek Wills, who we were just talking, he does a great job calling the game, yep. uh, has a ton of Bulldogs information, 
You How long? more than Scott. <laughs> Derek gets a My lot of son his stuff. has more than me. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Scott gives a lot of his stuff to Derek. Yeah. No, no, but no, having Derek Craig, will come over here. Have, having Al Craig that. with you is, is, oh, yeah. is, uh, is a great yeah. bonus for Derek. But Derek has done an absolute uh, uh, a gem of a job uh, as, as the play-by-play -play man of uh, the Bulldogs. And uh, I listened to him, especially during the post-game show on the way home after game one. And, of course, we all know Al Craig uh, being such a, a, a professional sportscaster. And I was really, really impressed. With uh, with Derek and, and he does such a great job for the dogs on the air. Everyone, every, sorry, everyone around the team and Derek himself will tell you. I did a piece on him earlier this year that this year he's really. Uh, I mean, this is a bit of a shameless plug for Derek, but this is he really has improved. He is now a guy that some people are talking about will someday have a real chance to be an NHL broadcaster. He's mm -hmm. really, for sure. you know, if you talk about players in the AHL stepping up their game to go to the next level, Derek has done that this year. And you can now listen to the game, and it doesn't sound like there's a you know a come down from an NHL broadcast when, when he's on the air. He does a great job, so check him out on 820 Cham. Of course, he and Al Craig been bringing all the Calder Cup action of all the games as the march to a championship continues for the Hamilton Bulldogs. And uh, fans, why don't you get your tickets ahead of time? Because I have a feeling we're coming back to the Coliseum for Game 6 and possibly 7. And here's your simple way to get a Calder Cup 2003 ticket to support your local team. Simply call the Bulldogs, 905-529. 8500 or check it out through Ticketmaster 905-527-7666 or go to the website at Ticketmaster and the tickets are available online www.ticketmaster.ca and those home dates when the when the series switches back to Hamilton the if necessary dates are Houston back in Hamilton for game six Monday June the 9th put that one in your day timer and calendar it is June, Scott. <laughs> you don't have to flip the page. A 7 p.m. puck drop, and then, if necessary, Game 7. And we saw what a Game 7 and how fascinating the action is, and that was uh, coming up a couple nights later in Hamilton as well. I'll write that down. Make sure Sorry, you do. Sorry, won't be too confused. <laughs> exactly. Hey, lots of fun when you go down to the rink, too, and our Cable 14 cameras had a chance to catch up to some of the action taking place down at the Coliseum before tonight's game, and let's take a peek at some of that now. Well, they need to get on their attack more, and they need to forecheck a little bit more and get some defense happening and score more goals. Ah, uh, well, I think it might be a close call, but I think they're going to win. And I hope they're going to win. Well, I'm probably one of the biggest Bulldogs fans, and I hope they win tonight, and I hope they win the Calder Cup. That's what we've been waiting seven years for. I think the Bulldogs have to come out and play their game. They're excellent skaters, they're excellent puck handlers. They've just got to come out and play the way the Bulldogs played all year long and they can win the game. Uh, we definitely need it. Uh, we don't want to go down there to down to nothing because I don't hopefully who will, it'll be hard to come back and win all the three games there. So we need to win big time. Well, what they need to do is uh, continue to forecheck, put more pressure on their opposition goalie. Get, you got to get more than one goal. Well, that's not a good scenario. Uh, we got to win tonight because uh, we go to Houston for three games and it's not going to be pretty. So we don't want to have that pressure on. So we're just going to have to step it up, continue our fine defensive play, put more goals behind them, and see what happens from there.
Well, and also part of the fun tonight down at the Coliseum is the beards. you got to grow the playoff beards. And the panel here, Scott, Glenn, and myself. Look like a half a You guys got it. We Look are like the guys. <laughs> Folks, oh, so boy. you can join the playoff atmosphere, too, and join us at the conclusion of the game for a quick wrap of 905-645-3232. Or email us, opinion, at cable14.com. And put away the Razors, folks, for hopefully a Bulldogs Calder Cup championship and join in the fun. Let's go back to the Coliseum for overtime. <laughs> you know, they, they look like a bunch of evil Santa Clauses or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness we have got we have got overtime and it looks like the guys in the studio are supporting the home side with the playoff beards folks the Hamilton Thunder game is up next this one is not done yet we have got overtime imminent here it is five on five, unlike the season. They are going to play five on five, not four on four, in case you were wondering. Hins off the draw with Torres and Lindsay. On defense, Bobby Allen and Francois Beauchemin. Up along the boards now, Bill Lindsay, who nearly ended it with seconds left. Hins working down into the corner. Trudell takes him out of it. Lindsay tries to get to it. Up along the boards, Bobby Allen keeps it in. Hins knocks that one over to Lindsay. It's picked up, and that one is knocked the length of the ice. Icing is going to be called here, though I thought Bobby Allen had a chance to pick it up. 35 seconds in. The uh, strategy, Roger, is what? I think the Bulldogs to keep that energy level up, keep trying to increase that team speed, especially through the neutral zone. That'll be the biggest benefit, I think, uh, for the Bulldogs here in overtime to keep that pressure on the Houston defense and not let them take over the forecheck again that was causing the Bulldogs problems earlier on the defense. Get that first pass up and out near the blue line, clear your zone, look for the second, use your speed. Off the draw, that one slides to Holmquist. He easily directs it aside. Hakana knocked it back the other way. Would have been offside. Michalik just sends it in. There's Hakana. Tips that one back to Bergeron. Bergeron wants some help. He finds Belay. Belay tries to tip it up and out, and it does end up with Plakanic. Plakanic and Rita. Plakanic the shot. Rita was interfered with the whole way down. Couldn't get to the puck quick enough. Nice shot by Plakanic. He really tested Holmquist's glove hand. Akina sends that one in. Right back out. Houston Arrows. Henderson dumped it in on Conklin, but. The arrows were making a change along for Hosa. Hosa has some help in Ryder. Michael Ryder! That one just skims wide. Back come the arrows. Here in overtime, one apiece. Ryder by himself out there. He's got Hosa trailing. Hosa! No! Couldn't get it to him. Homosar picks it up. Taken by Stoll now on the Bulldogs. Trying to get something happening here in overtime. Two on one. Stole the shot. He was hoping for the rebound that would end up with Hosa, but Holmquist is better than that. Stole leaned into it in the big save by Holmquist. Hit him right in the chest. A couple of chances there by that line. Good pressure by the dogs. And once again, using that speed, the long passes. Neither goaltender in this contest going to give you the easy one, that's for sure. 35-26. Shots on goal favoring the Bulldogs. Off the draw. Oshaman picks it up. He dumps it in. Sal Malane into the backhand. Throws it at the goaltender. That one is just off target a little bit, but Holmquist got a stick on it nonetheless. Shots on goal, 35-26 in favor of the Bulldogs. And back come the Houston Arrows. Across the line, tipped away. Here's Ward. Jason Ward with Bashai. He winds up. Tries to throw one in off there, and Bashai just gets by him a little bit. Salma Linen gets in there, rolls around behind the net, on the backhand, steps out and takes the shot, and Holmquist was wise to that move twice now. Ward almost with a chance there to corral that rebound. They come on now. 
It's down into the corner. Flip back out into center. Coming back the other way, Dominic Kelly. And he didn't have it. Couldn't get that shot off. Lindsay tried to reel that one in. He reeled it across the blue line. Got half the job done. Three minutes left to go. Long shot on Conklin. Left there. Picked up by Dominic Kelly. And Conklin had squared up nicely. Stepping out front. Loose puck side of the net. And Dominic Kelly again. Doing some nice work with the puck. Now it goes loose into the corner. Throwing it out front. Dominic Kelly. And he wants that goal. Bochamon tries to step over him. And now Pavlikoski up front. And Bochamon does a great job defensively. A couple of saves. Poke check. Loses the stick. Back the other way. Trudell brings it in offside as the player going to the bench was still on the ice. There's a rarity. Three sticks on the ice. Bulldog defenseman. Even Conklin stick over in the corner. A lot of pressure there by Houston. I was just about to compliment the Bulldogs in the first few shifts there of overtime. They've done a really good job of trying to break up those plays at the blue line. Poke checks, keeping the pressure away, getting the puck out over the blue line as quick as they can. There's Plakanek now. Working the draw against Kluche just outside the Bulldog blue line. He wins that one back. Hakana. Picking it up. A lot being let go here, as you can tell by some of the groans in the crowd. Travis Roach now moving that back the other way. Bergeron just tips it back out. Belay tries to move it forward. He does, but right there is Diamond. Rita keeps it in. They roll it towards Holmquist. He just plays it softly to Kavanaugh. Now trying to come out with it. Back to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh trying to get by Flacanic. That doesn't work out. Flacanic tries to get it out. He does now. Henderson flicks one in there. Bergeron has that slide by him, and luckily the arrows were going off, but they do keep it in. Bergeron trying to make good on the little mistake. Battles for the puck behind the net. Wanvig now trying to step out, being pursued by Bergeron. Bayou now working on it. Hacking it. Gets in there. He gets on it. Bayou steps out, and Conklin. It's good for that as the Bulldogs get it up and out, back out into center. 4.45 left to go. This line of Baleen, Bayou, and Wanvig causing trouble for the Bulldogs tonight with the forechecking. Little miscommunication between Bergeron and Conklin. That one drifted in there pretty hard. Hosa knocks it back out. Stoll trying to get to it first. Michaela. Puts it across the line. Kamosi looks for an opportunity. It rolls into the corner. Here's Tanzalino with it. Throws it out into the slot, and Hogan couldn't find it. Rolls out front, loose puck, and the Bulldogs suddenly are on their heels. Still out front, picked up by Hosa, and he just puts it down the ice. Calm, cool, collected. The Bulldogs have to make a change. Smart play by Hosa allowed most of his line mates to get off the ice and get the change they needed. He makes sure he's got a little bit of pressure in there so that he can get the Back four up off the boards. Ice. Here's Jason Ward. He dumps that one in. Played by Holmquist. Roche. Ward plays it up the half boards. It comes loose. He reels it in. There it is, laying there. And the Bulldogs hit the ice. Salma line in and Ward. And Ward is slow to get up. Now he comes back hard into it. Commissar. Kamalainen just dumps that back out into center. Vishai went chasing. And Kamasarik ends up in a bit of a fray there to Pavlikovsky. And back the other way, Holmquist got the trapper out there just as the puck was about to cross the goal line. Holmquist, magical! What a stop by Holmquist. There's a game saver. Literally, overtime. Certainly should have been beat on the shot, and he got the trapper up, and Ward's got to be thinking, what do I have to do to beat this guy? 6.33 off the, the clock. Sal Malanen in with a series of nice moves. Catches Holmquist sliding sideways. There's the rebound by Ward, a little backhander. The trapper just up in time. Even saw Sal Malanen's arms go in the air. He expected the puck to enter the net, and what a goaltending save there by Holmquist. Well, and, and it might have been if they had replayed that in the National Hockey League and 
You'd have to it, check the plane. You, it would have, I think, crossed the plane of the uh, the goal. 203 goals against average, eighth in the playoffs, and a 923 save percentage so far. Calder Cup playoffs for Johan Holmquist. Kind of wonder after the uh, playoff performances he put on this year in the AHL why the Rangers couldn't find a fit for him. Some years are just a goaltender's year. John Sebastian Jaguer, there's a long shot Holmquist easily sees. John Sebastian Jaguer is proving that. Not so they much could not find series. a fit for him in the Calgary Flames organization. Back the other way, a full press here from Beauchemin. Goes down the boards. Benisek takes him out of it. Wallin looking for Ryder, who has the goal for the Bulldogs, one at a piece. Seven minutes off the clock. Hosa gets in the way of that one. And now just dumped in by the Houston Arrows. Hosa's intensity throughout this, this game is sort of increased by the period. He seems to be playing a little bit better as the game wears on, totally, defensively and offensively. Allen picks that one up. Finds Beauchemin. A little tense moment for the fans there. Hosa working on that, knocks it ahead. Ryder and Stoll both thought each other were going to get to that one, and they were both going off anyway. Kavanaugh dumps it in. The Arrows are going to make some changes. He's called off, but can't seem to get there. Kavanaugh working the boards. Bergeron knocks the stick clear out of his hand. That one knocked up at the line and out, and offside is the call. Awkward play there at the blue line. Kavanaugh went back to retrieve the stick he lost, and they checked by Bergeron. Got the puck shot off the back of his ankle and scooted back outside the blue line. Dan Kavanaugh. Confuse him with Pat Kavanaugh, of course. Manitoba Moose From the here. previous series, right. 12-18 left to go in the first overtime. One apiece the score. The last goal was scored at 10-15 of the first. Dominic Kelly, Murphy, Trudell on the assist. Ryder. Had the first goal at 332 from Stoll and Bergeron. Kavosi is talking to the linesman. Stefan Bayou on the ice. Extra long time. The Bulldogs go to their players' bench open. Ah, stick retrieved to the wrong bench. Probably a quick measurement by Murray Stevens to see if they can get the two-minute liner later. <laughs> Off the draw. Long shot. Roche. Easily turned aside by Conklin. Here's Hainsey behind the net. Well, incidental goaltender interference. Not going to be called at this time. Down into the corner now. Salmelanen gets a piece of that one. Tries to roll it back to Ward. He gets it out front. And that one pops a little too far. Hainsey tries to get it back in. A little tip by Salmelanen there. May have saved the offside as Ward hadn't exited the zone entirely. Long shot. They were trying to break through there, and that doesn't work out. Out front to Bashai. Bashai's got Salmelane in cross ice. That's a tough one to pick up. Salmelane in a race for it. And Holmquist came out and played that one. Roche looking for an opportunity to break somebody out of there. Here's Trudell. Leaves the puck behind for a moment. Now it's knocked off his stick. Back behind the net. Bergeron tried to get a lot on that and didn't. Trudell. The shot, it's all caught up there. Trudell dancing around behind the net, trying to get loose, tries to jam it in the side door. Still working on it, Trudell. And now, finally, the whistle. Trudell and Bergeron gives him a shot in the back of the head. And got to keep your cool out there. You don't want to show up the referee because he has not called a thing here in overtime. Don't give him a reason to do it. That's Bergeron has had a tough overtime here. Tony Tuzzolino. Him and Bill Lindsay. Tuzzolino's gone to war with Jason Ward tonight. You see him trying to get into the uh, Houston players bench. Bill Lindsay's had a face washer too in his career, I think. He might have. He might have. Chad Hens now going in for the draw. They walk that one back the other way. Here's Torres with some help. Takes the shot, and that ends up in the second deck. Off the curtain. They don't often get the souvenirs up there. Strike foul by Torres. There's Bill Lindsay as the veteran. National Hockey League player. 
with Florida for so many years. In fact, the goal, they call it in Florida. Calgary for a couple of seasons, of course. Uh... Back to Beauchemin. Beauchemin fires one wide. Just trying to get it toward the net. A little juggling going on there from Ricard Wallin. There's a stick down as Beauchemin lost a piece. Bill Lindsay moves it back up for Hins. Hins trying to find Torres. Torres looked like he had a step. They say it's a two-liner. Bulldogs 40th shot on net, 32 fired by the arrows. 10-39, left to play in overtime. One apiece to score, the Bulldogs. And the Houston Arrows in game two of the Calder Cup final. This is the second Calder Cup final played here at Cops Coliseum. The first season, the Bulldogs played against the Hershey Bears. Good long look at Ty Conklin. What a couple of game performance already in the Bulldog net here in the final for the Calder Cup. And great work done by the ownership here in Hamilton to make sure that the Bulldogs will stay in Hamilton for a while. The Hershey Bears have been there the longest, that's for sure. And Finally day, a new rink. Yeah, right. One day Hamilton will hope to boast that same lineage. That one pops out into the bench. Nine and a half off the clock. Gotta wonder, a couple more successful seasons by uh, Hershey Bears head coach Mike Foligno and maybe a National Hockey League coaching position in the offing there. There's definitely an inside track, that's for sure, as the head coach here in the American Hockey League. They tend to look at you day in, day out. Amasark now moves that up, Ballet, Placanic pulls it in. Nearly a two-on-one, but he just couldn't corral that puck fast enough. Ballet with Commissaric. Rita off the boards. Tried to tow it in and couldn't quite get to it. Knocked into the crowd, and that one ends up in the penalty box. Everybody's getting a souvenir. The puck's <laughs> leaving the ice here in overtime, that's for sure. Commissaric and the linesman. Conversation over that play. Well, the fans here really thought something was going to happen there in the first five minutes of overtime, and now there is an uneasiness that has settled across the crowd here at Cops Coliseum. Good long shot of you Mike. You can Thomas. feel that queasy first period hot dog. You're thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't have had that. I didn't know it was going to overtime. I was sure that was a hot dog. <laughs> Still. Here's Ryder. He just dumps it in. Stoll going after it as well. Hosa. Hosa gets to it. Trying to work it. Down into the corner. Stoll. Down there with Hosa. Comes loose. Dump back out. And here comes Hogan. Bergeron gets to him. Hogan still with the puck. Bergeron doesn't know where it is. Behind him now. He picks it up. Breaks the stick of Hogan. One of the expensive ones too. Here's Bergeron. Finding Stoll across the blue line. Jared Stoll can't quite get to it. Leads all rookies in scoring in the American Hockey League playoffs. Here's Lindsay. He was dangerous at the end of regulation. Boshamon. Stoll. And he wanted to bring that around back to the forehand, but couldn't pull that move on. Chance for icing. Boshamon picks it up for icing. 9-11 left to go. And that uneasy feeling that shows up in overtime when you get this deep into overtime causes a little sweat to break out on your hands. Yeah. Interesting to keep an eye on both benches too is Jeff Ward, his counterpart Todd McClellan, maybe uh, try to play the short shift game on a couple of guys, try to double shift some of your high performers and uh, really take advantage. Good long look at Rafi Torres there. Secured of course the trade deadline from the Islanders with Brad Isbister in exchange for defenseman Yanni Ninema. Big hit in the first period. Pavlikovsky, who's returned to the contest in the third. Hins knocks that back to Allen. Allen tried to move that one over to Beauchemin. Had a little trouble with the puck. Beauchemin knocks it back into center. Torres goes racing after it. There to get it is Benisek. Here's Hins off the boards. Little backhander redirected by Lindsay, but why? And right back the other way come the arrows. Hins breaks that up. Trying to get the rest of the job done. Here comes Beauchemin. 
He does. Puts it up the boards. He finds Bill Lindsay there. Lindsay tried to shuffle along to Torres as he thought he was going behind him. He didn't. Back across the line, Pavlikovsky. Here's Hins. Along to Torres. They can't quite get that one figured out. Now Torres does pick it up. Rafi Torres has Hins and Lindsay going off the ice. Torres does a little dance, moves the puck in, and the Bulldogs make a full change. Here's Ron Hainsey with it. Trying to move it along to Komasarek, but Bayula takes it away. Hainsey now back behind the net in the corner. This crowd has a strange calm about it, or at least a quiet. And now picked up. Here's Bishai along to Jason Ward. And every time he touches the puck, boy, if you're going to hit the guy, don't half hit him. Murphy couldn't knock Ward down. He went down himself. Here's Ricard Wallin. Throwing it at the net. Redirect off the post. One big. Off the side of the net, Wallin. This is Houston's most dangerous line by far. Samalena knocks it up and out. Roche goes back with it, tries to throw it back the other way. He does. And offside is the call. 7-21 left to go here in overtime. One apiece. The score. Houston and Hamilton in a tight one. wonder if this is a little line matching here. Wanvig, Willeen, and Bayou. This last shift just matched up with Bashai Ward. Line for Jeff Ward. Bulldog head coach. Mechanic comes out. They got Fouché's line. Placanic, Ballet, Rita. Rita, a rather Placanic, trying to kick that one away from Cluche. He breaks the stick on it. It's like $700 in sticks that have been broken in the last two minutes. Holmquist comes out to play that one. Kavanaugh gets loose behind Hackadon. Coming in to help out his Bergeron. And Bergeron comes in, knocks the puck away, and the puck ends up in the bench of the Houston Arrows. Here goes Kavanaugh off down the tunnel. He really had a great opportunity there. Did indeed. We get a shot of Thomas Pocanic. Old Bucks. Out of the Czech Republic. Played for Kladno last year over in the Czech Republic. Deceiving player, he plays with a little bit more of an edge uh, than you would have thought of the earlier part of the season. Certainly uh, developed. In goes Jared Stoll to take the draw. There's Kavanaugh back to the uh, Houston bench. Oshaman picks it up. He'll send it in. Ryder goes along into the corner, picks it up, rolls loose out front, and <laughs> nearly knocked in by Benesek. Just knocked wide, though. Bobby Allen now working with Beauchemin, his defensive partner. They get it up to Hosa. Hosa the long to Stoll. Stoll looking for Ryder, takes the shot himself. And have a lot of vision there out front. Just thought he'd throw something toward the net. Not a bad idea. 6.23. Left to go. Dumped in by the Arrows. Nobody complains about winning an overtime game with an ugly goal. Absolutely not. <laughs> Hosa dumps that one. Halleck gets in front of that. And now Beauchemin tries to get it up and out. Here's Hosa. He's tripped up. Stoll moves down into the corner. Cuts in at the net. He was looking for Lindsay on the backside. And Lindsay had come too far. Bill Lindsay now. We nearly ended it in regulation. Takes a shot into the skates. Rafi Torres going after it. Now back the other way. The Bulldogs are going to have to play some catch up here. Some good back checking. Lindsey back hard. Pavlikovsky the shot and Conklin stops that one. 5.37 left to go here in overtime. One apiece to score. Up high in the chest protector and Conklin just confidently let it pop down and grab it with his trapper before the Houston Cavalry arrived on his doorstep. Fans still packed in here at Cops Coliseum. Nobody has left the building. 40-35, the shots on goal favor the Bulldogs. The tension just getting a little higher here. The shine out. 
There's one that drifts to Conklin. Tricky, but Conklin gets to it. Jason Ward picks it up. They try to find some help in Salmalainen and Bashai. Putting it back the other way, the Houston Arrows. Conklin working the puck. Bergeron tries to get it up and out. That stopped. Bergeron having a pretty tough overtime. That one knocked up, not out. Now it is. Little battle for the puck along the near boards. Bushai trying to get it. Salma Lane and does. Comes across the line. Finds Ward. Throws it at the net. It was drifting wide. And Holmquist caught it and hung on. Less than five minutes left to play here. In the first overtime, the Bulldogs and the Arrows. Shot there by Ward just at the end of the shift. And I think what he was trying to do was direct it to the far side of the net. Shot of Jeff Ward on the screen. If you have tuned in looking for the Hamilton Thunder game, the CPSL game will air after the Bulldogs game is over. Ballet now, here's Plakanic. Throws one out front, and Rita had it all jumbled up in his skates. Couldn't quite get to it. Kavanaugh comes back the other way. Little shot that ends up in the glass and all the way back out. The crowd helping the linesman out there, making sure that he caught the offside. Certainly hoping he got it. Thomas Eric back to fetch a stick. University of Michigan grad. Four thirty-four left to go. Here at Cops Coliseum. In for the draw. Jarrett Stoll. Bosi. Don't see him draw the puck much. Stoll wins that one. Bergeron, careful behind the net with it. Now it comes and steps out front. He's got some speed. He's hooked from behind. Pelosi can get away with that in overtime. Picked up. Nakana. Gets that one back. Looks up front. Doesn't have a lot of options. Goes to Hosa. Hosa just dumps it along. Murphy. Gets him behind the net. There's a long pass up through center. Hogan just dumps it in. Conklin thought to go get it and then thought better of it. Here's Hosa onto the stick of stole. Cross ice to Michael Ryder. Ryder trying to get by Diamond. Just moves it along. This comes to, up the boards to Beauchemin. Tries to dump it back in. It's knocked back out. Beauchemin puts it onto his stick. Wants a little help. He's got Lindsay out there. You know, Lindsay buzzing around out there since he almost ended this thing in regulation. 3.30 left to go in the first overtime. One apiece the score. Here's Beauchemin again. He's been on there a long time. Torres, he'll go off now. Torres tries to fight through Diamond. Dominic Kelly picks it up. Throws it back out to Jean-Guy Trudel. Trudel's got Pavlikovsky. Goes into the corner. Conklin goes after it. Throws it out there! That rebound was nearly trouble. Here's Torres back the other way. Lindsay with him. Torres tries to drag it in. It comes across the line. It stays in. Hins tries to find it. It's in amongst his skates. Dominic Kelly picks it up. Comes back the other way. Here's Cullen. Cullen looks in on Conklin. Tries to cut in. And Kovacar with that big long reach just tapped it off his stick. 2.45 left to go. Here in the first overtime. One apiece to score. At the line, Jason Ward waits for it to clear. And Torres... On a late line change. ...off on a late line change. Didn't get his skates off the ice fast enough. And offside is the call. It's a tough place with the, uh, with the, the benches. The way the doors are placed here are cops inside the blue line. Because Ward made the smart play, waited for his line mates to get back on side. Torres then with a quick curl back just to do the line change to get some fresh wingers in there. Ward could do the dump and then get off the line change. Whistled down. Off the draw, the arrows control. They just dump it down the ice. Bergeron goes back for that and it's icing. And the Bulldogs will get an opportunity off the draw deep inside Arrows territory. It may not seem fancy, but the Arrows have really cut into the Bulldogs' lead on the shots on goal. 40 to 37 now in overtime. After that lead, almost being 10 and a couple of times coming. The 
Bulldogs here will send Plakanek for the draw against Sylvain Cloutier, the Arrows' best faceoff man. Bergeron waits back for it, looks in, throws it at the net, and kicked away by Holmquist. Both goaltenders have been tough to solve here tonight. And now a whistle as the puck by is trapped against the boards. By you, Plakanek and Benesekel, uh, that have been a knot there on the half boards to get the whistle. So they'll drop this one at the top of the faceoff circle, closing in the blue line just a little bit. Bulldogs will put some fresh bodies out there this time. Hoser, Ryder, Stoll will take the draw. It'll still be Bergeron, Hakana. Hakana having a conversation with Bergeron there. They knock it back to Bergeron. Didn't have a lot of options. Throws it towards the net. Stoll didn't get a piece. This one rolls back out front. Little back hit from Ryder. Still loose there. Can't quite pick it up. Trying to get it back out front. Hosa had the best idea. Just keep it out front of the net. You never know. Well, he thought things had cleared up. Here's McKillick. That one drifts wide. And the net knocked off its moorings. Stoll. Wanvig was tied into the net. Wanvig with some frustration. Minute 55 left to go. Here in overtime. One apiece. Wanvig, the big uh, right winger out of Calgary, Alberta. Second round pick by the Minnesota Wild. Had big hopes for him after a uh, pretty successful career in the Western Hockey League. Three centers, Edmonton, Kootenay, and Red Deer. That one kick back, Koshimon now loose puck, picked up by Bashai. Had a step there, but Kavosi got in the way. And now Boshamon throws that one up through center. Knocked down, Selma Linen has Ward with him. Throws it at the net, hoping for a rebound. Got one, came right back to him. Minute and a half left to play here in overtime. Tuzzolino across the line. Still working toward the puck. Boshamon sends it on to the stick of Hogan, but he couldn't do anything with it. Selma Linen sends it back out into center. Bulldogs make some changes. And we get a contact on a high stick, looks like. Wanvig actually uh, won a uh, Memorial Cup with the uh, Red Deer Rebels. And he's a Memorial Cup MVP just on the foothills, of course, of this year's uh, Memorial Cup win by the uh, Ontario Hockey League's Kitchener Rangers. And their Memorial Cup MVP, Derek Waugh, team captain, just signed to the Buffalo Sabres who just finished uh, reorganizing their management and coaching staff with the uh, signatures on new contracts for Darcy Regeer as GM and Lindy Ruff as coach. Kavanaugh trying to get by Bergeron and a penalty coming up with a minute 12 left as Bergeron is called for hooking. And there was no way that Dan O'Rourke could have let that one go even though Jeff Ward over on the bench Hands immediately went to the hips. Well, he's, I don't think he's, he might be upset with the refereeing, but there was not any way. He's got to give Kavanaugh's controlling a scoring opportunity even by a simple shot, so probably the logic applying to call him a penalty. This is the uh, textbook hook. At, uh, <laughs> Here it is up the half boards. Kavanaugh crosses center ice, getting in on the blue line for a two on one, or at least a three on two, and there's the hook by Bergeron. A minute 12 left to go. Down the Kelly now, pressing down the board. That one fired up and out. Last minute of play in the first overtime now. One apiece, the score. The Bulldogs down a man. Trudell down into the corner. Looking to get set up here. Beauchemin hard on the glass, sends it down the ice. 40 seconds left to go. Here's Roast. The Bulldogs make a couple of changes. Mayu looked like he wanted to take it the whole way. Looks in and throws it across the slot. Didn't get a help. Pavlikovsky off the half board. The Bulldogs set up in the box. 24 seconds left to go. Pavlikovsky looks in again. Takes the shot. Redirect and hit the post. Still there. 15 seconds left, up and out. Now less than 10 left in the overtime. 
The Bulldogs will have to come into the second overtime and kill off a penalty. Komasarek picks it up, and we've got uh, just a little bit of time here still. Rafi Torres just headed down the tunnel towards the Bulldogs' dressing room. The Bulldogs will have avoided a big one if they can kill this Bergeron penalty. They're going to have a lot of time to do that to start off this second overtime. Oh my. Those loose pucks that roll ever so slowly through the crease and in front of the goal line. <laughs> off the draw. That one sent up over to Komisarek and time is going to run out. After 80 minutes of play, it is still one apiece, and Marc-Andre Bergeron has a 48-second penalty that his mates are going to have to kill off heading into the second overtime. Roger. Flurry's back and forth, still opportunities in overtime. You notice the defense clamping down a little bit. Houston trying to uh, extol a little bit more forechecking pressure, which is their success module so far this game. Bulldogs still trying to take advantage in spurts of that speed up through the middle of the ice. A couple long passes uh, attempted by both teams even to stretch the ice longer and moderate success back and forth. The two goalies doing a phenomenal job. I think uh, no more of Holmquist's glove save there in the early stages of overtime on Jason Ward. And it'll be interesting, 48 seconds still left on the penalty to Bergeron greeting the Bulldogs at the start of the second overtime. Stick around for the intermission. I am sure that the analysis of this is going to be awfully interesting. Let's, uh, I'm Todd Crocker along with Roger Curran. Let's head things back to the Dunder and Street Studios right now with Steve Foxcroft. Thank you, Todd and Roger. Coliseum action is tight and uneasy, as Todd said, during that period of... Uh, overtime hockey and chances at both ends guys that's what we want to see in overtime scott oh you obviously you obviously don't want to see the teams come out and both of them play a completely defensive style both of them being really scared i could you know it wasn't end to end but it certainly was was not boring hockey in spurts there were times when it was you know a little rough but it, it, what we can take from this is at least is that both teams haven't come out and decided to completely sit back and just wait for a mistake they're doing that to a point but they are taking some chances jason ward probably should have ended the game but that was just a miraculous save that uh, that um, homequist homequist i was gonna say telquist you got me doing it now <laughs> uh, that he made and that's the second game in a row that he has just completely robbed the Bulldogs uh, right near the end of the game. This time in overtime, last game with uh, two minutes left in the game on the Sal Malanen tip that, that we said at the top was probably the best save of the year at Cops Coliseum, the glove save he made. Glenn, one of the things that's kind of uh, concerning me as a, as a Bulldog supporter, I suppose, is now we've played seven periods of hockey. The Dogs have yet to score an even strength goal against Houston. And in overtime, that's what 99% of it is. It's gonna be even strength because the penalty, uh, penalties are only going to be the obvious ones, which we saw late in that overtime period. So the Bulldogs have to break the ice here and get an even strength marker. Well, looking at that as on a positive side, what a great way to break out of uh, that little bit of a slump that they're in, a five-on-five. Five. And uh, again, it comes down to the work ethic, and we've talked about it all all evening really the work ethic and, and, and working and fighting through the checks, making good smart plays. And it comes back to making that Sometimes it's, it's those little simple plays that are overlooked during a game that, uh, that are taken for granted. And, and, and the dogs, as they come back, part of the period they've been on their heels. Uh, they've, they've sustained a little bit of pressure in Houston's, in Houston's end. And if they can do that, if they can sustain some type of, of, of time in their end, they're getting chances. And uh, I guess for whatever reason, whether it's just the Houston's defense or in, in some cases the, some of the dogs' poor choices of plays, they're not getting that opportunity. But they've shown if they can stay in their zone, they're getting some chances. One of the things I think that's improved tonight for the dogs, Rick, is the face-offs. They seem to be winning face-offs, especially late in the third period and in overtime, and especially going back to the third period. They're winning face-off important ones 
Not that any of them aren't important, but when they're a man down and so on and so forth, that's a big part of the game, giving yourself those extra possessions. Well, there's a reason why they take stats on that aspect, and not just team stats, but individual stats, and that's what, as a coach, they use those to uh, bring the players that are in key situations that have won more, more face-offs in their own end, which is the key. You know, you always want to win in your own end because possession of the puck is, is everything. And then in the offensive zone, again, when you're a home team, you want to win as many uh, as draws in the offensive zone and give yourself that opportunity to get some scoring chances. I think Hamilton's done a good job on that, and that's shown in the uh, you know possession of the puck. Again, we want to say this, you know, Hamilton, I, I hate to be critical, but that's my nature, I <laughs> guess, but they've got to show that they want to win this. And not, not, I'm not saying they don't, but they've got to go and put that extra forward. There's no tomorrow again. I'm sure there's, you know, there's, they've got three games going into the Houston, but they've got to play every shift like I'm going to be the guy to get the goal, but I'm not going to be the individual. I'm going to help, be one of the helpers, the five-man unit out there that's going to help, uh, you know, get this win. Houston certainly want to do everything they can to get that goal because they want to go home with two, uh, two games up. And it's a, it's a key game here, as everybody needs to know. You don't need to know hockey or anything about sports, but you know, when you're going into someone else's building and you're down 2 nothing, it makes it very difficult. As our stats man over here said, no one's actually come back from a two-game two, two game deficit to come back and win a Calder Cup, so I think that's important. And the other thing is that Hamilton in itself, this is a confidence game for them, and I'd say, you know, they don't want to get on themselves and they score a big goal here, then they forget how the game went on as long as they got the win. For those who are interested also, the longest AHL game was a three overtime affair. We will be heading into the second overtime shortly. And um, it all got this way because of two power play goals. Michael Ryder got things going way back about uh, 7.15 this evening at 3.32 of the first period, a power play goal, which put the Bulldogs up one nothing. And then at 10.15 of that same uh, period, it was Nat Domina Kelly who scored for the Houston Arrows and that's the way it's been ever since 1-1 as we will go into the second overtime period. Let's take a look at some of the chances shall we from this first overtime period and we'll go to some footage here and this is a great save by Holmquist here and this might be Ward racing in all alone or yep. Samalainen and then Ward follows it up. And he has great presence of mind Holmquist does to, to uh, and the linesman uh, was right on the line as uh, Rick pointed out, as the referee was getting back in a position, he had the presence of mind falling backwards to uh, to not catch it and bring it, uh, obviously bring it in to go, but to, to knock it, it down yep. outside the line and push it forward. I actually made another play with Great it, play. As, as we see here. He yeah. as, as as the puck will come up here, he knocks it out for. His defenseman to clear, but he felt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, no, but it's, it's a heads up. It's a heads up. I just want to say this Holmquist. Play. I mean, the, the only thing stopping Hamilton from having two victories, really, I believe, because I was at the game on uh, Wednesday night, and he made three game, uh, goal saving saves. I mean, you know, every save could be a potential. Uh, excuse me, every goal uh, shot could be a potential goal. But there's some saves that are just, you know, you got to say, sit back and say, how did he make that stop? Yeah. I thought he, I felt he made three of them in the first game, and there's another one there. So he can say if they win this game that it was on his back that he. He's taking them back to Houston with a two-goal uh, lead. Uh, excuse me, two-game lead. And then Hamilton's just got to get old past him and start thinking, you know, get more shots at him, get more shots at him. He's human, and errors happen. When when is it and has it happened already, guys? Has it happened now or at some point in the series? When does when does he get in their heads? Well, I think as a you know as a player, I mean, you know, my job was always just to get the puck to the net, and I really didn't care about scoring. But I think your goal scorers sometimes get frustrated, and the biggest thing a coach can do to them is say, hey, "Listen, you're getting your opportunities to be different." And you hear this all the time, and everybody says hockey players have cliches, and they use them all the time. But this is the thing: if you're not getting the chances, then you got to be worried because you're not doing the things that give you those opportunities, like skating to get into the net, going into the hard areas, you know, moving your feet. But if you're getting the chances, all you got to keep doing is doing that because eventually they got to go in. And that's what you got to keep saying. The goal scorers believe, you know, sometimes, well, you know, you stop him, you stop me. But if you're not getting the chances, it's worse than getting those chances and not scoring. But one of the things that leads to that stat of Hamilton not scoring at even strength is the good forecheck that Houston's uh, employed, their D clearing the zone, Hamilton not getting anything happening in front of the net right now in the Houston zone, but also Holmquist who's been uh, stellar, taking away th maybe three sure goals in game one yep. and at least one or two here tonight as well. Let's take a look at uh, when we start the second period, Houston will be on a 40-second man advantage situation. Let's take a look at how that came to be. And it was Bergeron hauling down a Houston 
uh, player up on and the this wall is, here. You know what? I mean, there's situations. Did the ref see it as an odd man situation where he's got to call the penalty because it could have been a scoring opportunity? I don't know. It was a little soft. I know Bergeron, he's not a great <laughs> big man, but a little tug here. I thought it was a little light on, on the referee's part to make that call late in the game and uh, late in the overtime period. But uh, again, he's the guy that sees things differently. We can't. We don't see what he sees. He sees his own, and it's his job to make the call. Other guys might not have made that call, but at this point in time, it was a tough call for him to give against the Bulldogs. But they're, they're weathering the storm right now, and hopefully they can weather it going into the second quarter. And you, and you second mentioned team. earlier, uh, when, you, when, the, when the official tells them, don't show me up. When you do something don't embarrass in, in, me. in, you know, in the open, the open down, ice. It comes down to don't embarrass me in that, you know, they, when they had the, uh, the coincidentals in, guys, earlier. Watch it you know, in slow mode. To me, it doesn't look as bad in slow mo as it did in fast well, motion. Not, nothing really does because again, we get to you know you see it you right. know firsthand at that quick moment for the referee. Geez, that looked bad. As he, if he gets an opportunity, can I see that in slow mo right. before I call it? Yeah. Well, then he changes mind also. Here it is situations. again. But watch this. Now, one of the things you got to look at here is look what was developing a this, two on one. This is what I'm saying. It turns into an odd man situation, and in a ref's mind, and we all go back, and I hate to bring it up, but you go against uh, Alfredson that. Uh, hit Tucker in game six or uh, excuse me was it game six yep. anyways in the series of the uh, second round last year and uh, Tucker goes down and then he doesn't get a penalty they don't call a penalty and then Alfredson goes in and scores, scores the goal so they don't want to be mm -hmm. cause of the game they don't want to be part of the game but sometimes when they don't make a call or if they make a call they are the part of the game the referee and that's where it's hard to you know take that out of the game because those guys that's what they're there for to see what what do I see what do I believe happened I've got to make I, that call to me that looked like an easy call the one yeah. one that you had to make because of especially because of what was developing mm -hmm. a scoring well, with, a, with a with a two on one though wouldn't it when it slowed down, though, it was a three-on-three. Three. It wasn't a two-on-one. -on -one. But Bergeron was beaten, though. Yeah, if he doesn't hook the guy Bergeron down. Already. It's it's then two. It's three-on-two then. It, it, if you want, because you're talking about the trailer coming in. Who was? Well, they, they were picked up. Yeah, I didn't, they it wasn't picked a two up. On but one. I I think well, yeah, I think Bergeron two. was it became, beat. became a three-on-two. But the point is. Where do you make that call? Do you make it in overtime? I don't know. I don't know if I would have made that it's call. It's a neutral zone penalty. Yeah. I don't know if you make that The thing is, though, is that we talk, you've been plugging the soccer game that's coming on right yeah. after. Soccer is <laughs> one of the sports where the referee has the discretion based on how the play is developing, whether or not he calls a foul. In, in hockey, if it's a penalty, it's supposed to be a penalty. In soccer, you decide based on the play, was, is the foul going to actually benefit or hurt the team with the ball? I think in that case, no matter how you do it, the ref looks at that, as we said, and says, he's already beaten Bergeron to the outside. Rick, you're exactly right. You don't want to be the cause of the game for the yeah. referee. But the cause of the game is not just calling a penalty. It's not calling a penalty, too. Oh, absolutely. And I so, think that and so if he, if, he yeah. score, if he goes down there and he doesn't score, but he's beaten Bergeron, uh, it doesn't matter. The point is that Houston could turn around and say he would have scored that goal. Or otherwise, created a heck of or a you chance. took away a scoring you opportunity. You took away a great scoring yeah, opportunity. That's what so, it is. yeah, you know what? You didn't yeah. become the game for Hamilton, yeah. but you became the game for us. Exactly. So you're in that. You're in that. I fine think that's line. a call that needed to be made, especially I in agree. overtime. The players know what they can and can't get away with. They'll get away How? with the little ones when you when you bring a guy down like that. You're not gonna. You're gonna Nine times out of ten, you're going to get the call against you when you do stuff yeah. like that, because that's the factor. That's the scoring. But I would bet that in the Houston dressing room, somebody, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody is saying, "Be a little careful, because there may be a." Well, sure. Uh, make up one. Make I think they're saying, "Let's go out and get one no, here no, but, in the first minute." But I think there's some thought in the head that, that there may be a makeup call at some point. So don't do anything stupid that gives him a chance to, right. to give a makeup call in the third, in the second. Well, I think they know that they don't have to say that. Let's take a look at what it leads to, though. Again, nearing the end. Sending it across the uh, mouth of the goal there. And the clock winding down on the power play. They throw it around here deep in the corner, looking over their options, get a good shot away, and then creating an opportunity side of the net. And they just couldn't cash in, and the Bulldogs dodged a bullet. Well, the that shot went off the post. Yeah, it went off the post. But the good, big thing there was the Houston player took it off the wall, walked towards the middle of the ice, and gave himself a better shooting opportunity. And then they they forged on the net. The other guys that were down low. Yep. So we said this time and time again. As easy as as hard as the game looks, sometimes it's a real easy game to execute. That is difficult. But to to do things tic tac toe is a little difficult. But you go A to B, get the puck to the net, and then you got you got low guys getting an opportunity. The, simpl the, the, the simplified game, yep. and that's the difference, really. Hamilton's not doing that. Houston is yep. doing that. Before we go back, I don't know if we got this graphic up, but we all picked a goal scorer here. A lot, a lots of, of, of course, no paramutual thing is going on between us, but we all picked our, uh, our uh, 
Favors. Goal scores. Favors. Let's go down the list. And uh, Brent, of course, is our director here at the studio. But we'll start with Glenn. Who do you got again? I have Michael Ryder and uh, the good good Italian boy for the for the arrows. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> give us who you got. Oh, I've got Bill Lindsay and uh, Van Wigger, Van Vigger, Van <laughs> Vigger, however you're going to pronounce you his Billy, name. You want the people from Miami to be I happy? I just think that would make a nice Hollywood ending for them if Lindsay got that goal. My guy is Hosa. Of course, what a for surprise. the Bulldogs, he's my man, has been all year long in Kluche for the uh, Houston squad. That's mine. And Rick, who do you got? Well, I got Jason Ward. I think he's got How'd a lot of him? Wait a minute. How'd because, you get him? Well, you know, guys that know the game know the people, right? So, <laughs> so, but I think he's had a lot of opportunities, had a little bit of luck tonight, and I think he's he de he's deserving of a, a big goal, and I think he's going to get it. And Matt Domichelli. Uh, I, th I like Domichelli, but Domichelli, he's changed his name since I saw him in St. John, uh, New Brunswick. But I think... Uh, He's, he's had some opportunities out there tonight, and he's been all over the ice, so I think he's got a good chance. And too. Brent, of course, likes you with Dom, well, Dom Kelly. He's well, got one tonight well, already. On, you know, who's the favorite? His exactly. favorite guy on this panel right and now. The, <laughs> and the dog's player he has is Jarrett Stoll. So we'll see how that develops as hey. we all picked our goal scores. And again, of course, no paramutual waging, wagering going no off. Like no Trudell. Yeah, exactly. no Trudell. No. Let's go back down to the Coliseum for second overtime action. Todd and Roger, take it away and give us your goal scores, too. Well, thanks, Steve. Uh, I don't know if you got to pick a guy, Roger. Who's your guy? I got to. Uh, I got to agree with a couple of the panelists tonight. I think. Uh, I think from Houston, there's a couple of guys that come to mind, but uh, Matt Dominicelli, I think, is uh, is right for the pick in a couple of offensive flurries already. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure from the Bulldogs. I might go with. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Snakebit and Jason Ward. He's due. Well, we'll see, I think. Here in the second overtime with 42 seconds left in the penalty to Mark andre Bergeron, the Bulldogs are going to have to try and kill that one off. Fresh legs out there for both these clubs. Allen trying to move the puck around behind the net. Hins picks it up, fires it up the boards, but not out. Kept in by Roche. Now it's picked up by Allen. Moves it to the forehand, flicks it up and out and clears it. 20 seconds left in the penalty to Marc-Andre Bergeron. He's already up on his feet. There you see one apiece the score in the second overtime. That puck up and into the bench of the Bulldogs. Nine seconds left to go in the penalty to Bergeron. And we'll be back to five on five. Big penalty kill, obviously, for the Bulldogs in the uh, overtime. And now you've also got expectations of O'Rourke should the Bulldogs lose a scoring opportunity due to an infraction play. Komisarek fires one the length of the ice. And we have got five on five back on the ice. The Bulldogs have killed that one off. And the Houston Arrows... Look to gain here with Pavlikovsky moving it along to Veu. He tries to cut in past Komisarek. Taken away by Torres. Torres tries to throw it up the boards. Not a lot of energy behind that shot. Torres finds Ryder. Ryder gets it up and out. And that one has icing waved off as Murphy just took a hesitant step there to see if he could try and draw it, but no going. Glance back at the linesman to see if he can encourage that whistle. Now picked up. Jay Henderson comes across the line, but Kluche was already in having coffee. Minute and a half off the clock in the first overtime. Ty Conklin has faced 38 shots. Holmquist has faced 42. There have only been two goals. Ironically, one each. <laughs> We wouldn't be here if it weren't. Nah, you're just saying that. Commissar, well, we might be here. <laughs> that one along to Ballet, a little sharp for him. Ballet picks it up again. He knocks it in. Placanic goes deep for it. Placanic onto the backhand. Throws it back behind the net. Ballet is there. He's got Rita out front. Can't quite get to him. Rita has to come behind the net. He's got Placanic out there. Steps out himself on the doorstep. And Rita trying to end it. Ballet dumps it back in as Hainsey is rubbed out along the boards. 
Obviously one of Rita's stronger shifts. Nice movement coming out from behind the net. Giveaway, Shabalane and big shot. And that one ends up in the glass. Ward working with Bashai. There's a shot out front. Whacking at it. Ward picking up. Oh, Bashai nearly ended it and sent it high. Here's Hogan back the other way. He's taken hard to the boards by Commissaire. Beauchemin moves it along. Salmaline and not out. There's one that goes towards Conklin. Picks it up loose and he is able to trap that. Salmaline and down quick in front of it to try and block the shot. I don't know whether he caught part of it or not, but Conklin certainly quick with the trapper on it. Tizzolino right on the doorstep and a couple of good rebound opportunities off Holmquist by the Bulldogs. Here's the latest when Jason Ward shoveling at it. Bashai comes in and just rips it over the net as he's falling to the ice. Not a lot of fans have left the building. Maybe some of the smaller ones, the toddlers, had to get home and get to bed. But I'll tell you what, the rest of the fans are hanging in. Bergeron, a little backhander down the ice. Hosa goes back for it. Roche is able to pick it up. Diamond going for it. Stoll tries to get to it, too. Still working on it. Tuzzolino. Putting that one up at the line. Moved ahead. Stoll now. Diamond. Soft pass up into center. It's dropped in. Bergeron gets it back to Michael Ryder. Ryder has a little trouble finding that puck. Now against the near boards. Trudell in there working on him. Benesek in there. He comes loose with it. Benesek throws one in on Conklin. Right on his stick. He hangs on. He was hoping for a tip. Didn't get it. Ryder with a bit of difficulty trying to get it out of his skates off the half boards. Make sure those clearing attempts make it on the first chance. Many folks working late here tonight. The Cable 14 crew. We thank them for hanging in. Both here and at the studio. Benesek, long shot, kicked away by Conklin. Hins sweeps it away into the corner. Hins looks up. Stop, Pavlikoski. Dumps it back in, Conklin. Calm with it up along the boards, Torres. Dumped up ice, Hins gets it loose. Finds Bill Lindsay. Lindsay throws it at the blocker of Holmquist. And it's sent back down the ice by the arrows this will be picked up for icing and the Bulldogs will get a face off never in the offensive zone never a bad idea to throw that shot at the net Lindsay streaking looked like he had a step on the defenseman which was taken away in the chase and here it pops Steve Colson would like to thank him the producer of the show Andrew Mariscato director John Warburton on camera one. Steve Thompson. We'll get to everybody. Little shot there. Loose puck out front. Bayou comes with it. Across the blue line. Tries to get by Hainsey. Little backhander. That was wide of the net. Ballet gets it up. Just beyond Yanni Rita. Back in for Hainsey. Round behind the net. Commissar. Goes up, that's tipped by Placanic, and that'll go the length, says Murphy. Picks that one up for icing. Jashara DeFelice on camera three, Aaron Staddy on four, Scott Smith doing the graphics, assistant director, Sean Lewis on audio, and slow-mo row, Mark Rowe handling the slow motion for us. And of course, Brent Rickard and his charges back at the studio. Bringing you Bulldogs hockey, Calder Cup, game two, double overtime. Roche looking for the shot, and we get the whistle on a penalty. It's a hooking call. Coming up for the hook. Dan Cavanaugh, ironically enough, first runs penalty earlier on. Cavanaugh gets the gate. Well, there might have been some question on the bench of the Bulldogs and in the room that Cavanaugh went down just a little too easily, and there might have been some question in the mind of Dan O'Rourke, the referee, that he went down just a little too easily. And now the Bulldogs go on the power play here. 426. 
Off the clock in double overtime. One apiece to score. Jarrett stole off the draw. Bulldogs win that one. Bergeron goes back with it. Comes up ice. Tries to get through center. Ryder has to come back for it. Michael Ryder is trying to dump it in and hit Hosa. Ryder now does dump it in. Gets by Holmquist. Roche just is going to knock that one down the length of the ice. Bergeron is coming back for it. Ryder comes down the right side, dumps it behind the net. Cullen trying to pick it up. He does. Gets it up and out. And here comes Trudell. Two on one with Cullen. There's the shot. Kluge, rather, was the other player. And Conklin didn't buy any of it. Houston changed off their penalty killers in the last clear of their zone. Conklin found Hosa just about center ice. Trying to get things turned around the other way. A couple of soft stick checks in the uh, Houston zone with the Bulldogs in the power play. They come back down and Trudell rips one on Conklin who hangs on. Face off off to his glove hand side. Off the draw. Bushai wins that. The Bulldogs. A minute ten left to go. In the extra man. They dump it right on Holmquist. He stops out. He's caught the net. And they can't get to it quick enough. Bashai trying to get into the corner for it. Picked up and at the line it just does come out. Here's Jason Ward. Couldn't quite get to it. Cullen comes into play. It plays it off the board. Kept in by Hainsey. Around for Ward behind the net. He tries to tip it over. Cullen just takes a whack at it and Hainsey keeps it in. Goes down the boards. Here's Bashai. Cross for Komisar. Flicks it in and caught Salmalainen. 39 seconds left. Bayou just dumps it in. Hainsey going back, but Conklin will play it along to Commissar. Commissar just flicks it back to Hainsey, and here comes Bill Lindsay with the puck. Lindsay goes cross ice, finds Hins. Hins dumps it in. 19 seconds left in the extra man. Fired up along the glass, and not out. Boshamon keeps it in. Up high, Boshamon doesn't have a lot. It's knocked off the stick by Trudell. And he nearly had a jump. And the Arrows are able to kill off the penalty. Trudell with a couple of really nice stick moves there to get the puck not only under control, but then kill off the remaining seconds on the clock on the power play. Pelosi cuts in front of his goaltender. Coming back the other way. No call on Pelosi. Rose tries to cut in, comes around behind the net. Wanted to step out. And put it on the stick of Tuzzolino. That wasn't going to work out. Back out into center. Seven minutes off the clock here in double overtime. Up along the boards, Torres. That comes out to Placanic. Placanic and Ballet across the line. Thomas Placanic the shot, and it was redirected wide. Ballet throws one in there, and at the last second, Holmquist saw that. Down into the corner. Placanic throws it behind the net. There goes Ballet after it. Getting to it first. Diamond still working the puck. Here's Rita. Gets it up at the line. Hackena throws it in there and right into the glove of Holmquist. Placanic and Tizzolino with a bit of a face wash over on the half boards. But once again, if it's not a scoring opportunity, and now that the penalty is in overtime or even, O'Rourke, I don't believe, is going <laughs> to... It's going to warrant it. It's got to be blatant, that's for sure. The longest overtime in Bulldogs history, playoff history, goes back a ways. Albany River Rats. Double overtime in Albany. 17.55 in overtime. Chris Ferraro knocked one home. That was our first season calling Bulldogs hockey on the radio. Roger, you and I, and for that, at that game... I nearly burst a blood vessel calling that goal. Bulldogs now with an even 50 shots. I haven't been right since, so maybe I did. <laughs> Bobby okay. Allen. Takes a toll. It sure does. Jared Stoll tries to get that one along to Ryder. Ryder. It's down around behind the net. And rubbed out hard into the boards. Helmet comes off. Up at the line. Bo Shaman. That one looked like it was in. It looked like it was in. And they do not have the benefit here, but that looked like it hit 
the back crossbar, not the front. What a shot from Boschemann from the point. See if we've got a replay. Holmquist certainly uh, not going to sell if it beat him or not. Absolutely not. He wouldn't know necessarily. Chris Davey now having a conversation with the referee. Nothing you can do about that if the goal judge didn't put the light on. There's the replay of the shot from the blue line. You see it come out on a hop. You can really tell from that angle. McKellick now picks it up. Sends it along the boards. At the line, it's poked out. That one ahead to Ward. He can't quite get to it. McCulloch picks it up. Up ahead to Walleen. Down the boards. Trying to get loose. Still working on it behind the net. Stepping out. Throwing it at Conklin. Loose puck out front. Taking a couple of whacks at it. And no, it comes loose. Here's Ward. He's got speed. Doesn't have a lot of help. Takes the shot. And that one ends up high. Here's Hins. Back for Ward. Ward. In the corner, battling out front is Hins. Here's Allen, the shot, and that ends up a little high. Ward has that one pop up high, picked up. Along the boards now, battling for it. Chopping away, and finally on the contact with the high stick, the whistle. Shot by Bobby Allen, only had time to probably to take advantage of the movement of Holmquist from his, from his right to his left. Allen fired the one-timer just high. 11.04 left to go in double overtime. Here's the replay. Pass from Ward over to Allen on the one-timer. A half slap shot. Sal Malinen in front. Shot just rising above the crossbar. The draw. Top of the circle. Hins. Going in against Havlikovsky. Off the draw. Hins gets it back. Hakana takes a shot, dribbles in towards Holmquist, and we'll get another draw real quick. Got a chunk of Lindsay on the way through. Not sure whether it's stick or shin. Unless Holmquist with the save. Nine minutes off the clock. Bulldogs. Then the Houston Arrows, game two. Calder Cup final. Houston took the first one, two to one. Somebody will win this two to one. There's the shot, and Holmquist gets in the way of that one. Another one thrown his way. Just a little wide. Dominic yeah. Kelly picks it up across the blue line. John Guy Trudell sending that in. Tries a little nifty move to put it on the goaltender Conklin. Still working with it. Commissar. And hold down as Chad Hins by Trudell. Not sure whether that'll be the penalty or the punch to the face of Commissar. And that is a tough penalty to take at an inopportune time. That'll be a roughing call. And in goes Pavlikovsky for There's a couple a of minutes. And There's the punch with the stick in his hand, probably wow. the reason he got the call. Wonder in overtime that uh, O'Rourke wouldn't have favored the double minors. Well, you've got to call what you see. He's uh, got a tough job in overtime as the Bulldogs to the man advantage. Commissar along to Placanek. Placanek dumps it in. Up along the near board. Selma Linen digging for it. Kavanaugh in there too. Placanek comes loose with it. Ward goes back for it. Ward, nice check. Roche, Ward is down hard. And we get a whistle as Jason Ward is in some pain down there, and Placanek and Kluche get into a little bit at the blue line, but that doesn't quite hold true. Ward is slow to get up. This would be a huge loss in overtime for the Bulldogs as Chris Davey is over taking a look at Jason Ward. Ward was excited to come down and play in the playoffs for the Bulldogs. 
that cannot be said of everybody that gets sent down after uh, their team doesn't make the playoffs in the case of the Montreal Canadiens. Quite true. Quite true. A couple of uh, examples come to mind. But Absolutely. Ward, Ward certainly not one of those after finishing the year with Montreal. Nope. Very deservedly so after the AHL season he put up. Absolutely. And Marc-Andre Bergeron came down excited to play as well. 9.55 off the clock. Ward does get up. No call on the play because I believe the hit by Roche was clean. He just pinched him off. It was clean. Awkward tumble into the boards and Ward went in a little harder than uh, probably normal. Deceiving for his stature size-wise, he's slight of frame. He still needs to pack on some muscle and additional weight. And uh, still have that quickness. Beauchamp on for Allen. Moving it along, here's Hins. Hins races into the corner. He's got Torres on the backside. Bill Lindsay comes in there. Allen looks in, takes the shot, tip high. Torres looking for it. They get that up and out just by Beauchemin. Minute 10 left to go in the penalty. Bulldogs will have a man advantage. Want a piece of the score, as you see. Knock the length of the ice. Ty Conklin has a little trouble getting to that one. Picked up by Bobby Allen. Waiting for things to develop out front. He does find it. Stoll has Ryder behind him. He dumps it into the corner. Torres is back there. Cullen gets it by him. Beauchemin keeps it in. Torres trying to get to that puck. Nobody knows where it is. Now Torres goes back behind the net with it. Stoll fights to the puck. Trying to get it loose for Ryder. It does come loose. At the line, and Beauchemin tried to make a nifty move. Might have had that in his bag in the first 60 minutes, but uh, we're approaching uh, some uncharted territory for some of these players. At the line, Hosa knocked back. Trudell can't quite get to it. And it's knocked in by the Arrows. 16 seconds left in the man advantage. Here's Bergeron, long pass for Hosa. He's got room. Ryder joins it. Hosa cuts in, takes the shot, and a good defensive play by Roche. Slid across to take the shot away. And they have killed off that penalty as Pavlikovsky comes out, and he's going to take it. Tries to go straight to the net. Hakanen knocks it off his stick, trying to get it loose. They move it along the boards. Chopped up, and that'll stay in play. Just at the line, it's offside. If Well, the Bulldogs pick it up, and Placanic wanted a piece of that one. Murphy comes back the other way. He had the big shot that was tipped by Dominic Kelly in the first period for the goal for the Houston Arrows. Bergeron now. Up and trying to find Placanic. Knocked back for Hogan. Hogan wants to cut in, takes the shot, and Conklin is good for that. 7.48 left to go. Here in double overtime. Shot on Conklin, his 43rd save. Ty Conklin. Feels the pressure, but like a lot of athletes in this case, they like it. Off the draw, little backhander into the corner. Moshamon picks it up, finds Ward. Ward dumps it in. Samalainen goes after it. Holmquist plays it off the glass. The Arrows come back with it the other way, three on two. Cloutier, McCulloch trying to get it by. Komisarek, that doesn't work out. Hainsey picks it up. Trying to move the Bulldogs back the other way. It's cut off. Hainsey cuts it right off the other way. And that one rolls in and be picked up for icing. That face up coming way back down in the Bulldog zone. 7-11 left to go. And the Bulldogs just continue. The Houston Arrows as well. Both continue to have some good chances, but... Nobody seems to solve, be able to solve these two goaltenders. And we are happy to bring you this Calder Cup game thanks to Kojiko, Mountain Cable Vision, and Source Cable and Wireless, formerly South Mountain Cable. 
They're the folks that are paying the freight here to bring you Bulldogs hockey. And we thank them. Garrett Stoll. Ryder now with Hosa. Ryder goes down the boards, trying to just pick that up. Hosa brings it into the corner. Hosa picks it up, wants to wrap around, didn't get it. Bayou just tries to clear that. Boshamon throws one in there, but got a lot of sweater of Bayou. 635. Across the blue line, but offside. One too many moves by Cullen. Four men wide. 632. Left to go. Boy, if ever there was a reason to buy a cable, this game is it. One apiece to score. Double overtime. Especially just for another shot of the guys with the beards on at the studio. All right, the guys, yes. With the rally beards. <laughs> <laughs> this series would have to go another six months for me to have a rally beard. But uh, nonetheless. Hakana goes back for that. Moves it along to Bergeron, up along the far boards. Torres, nice little move to get it to Hens. Hens moves it along to Lindsay at the blue line. Hensey. And we got a big meeting there at the blue line as Trudell Chad Hens knocked it in. It was offside. Pavlikoski met Bergeron just about five feet off the board. Pavlikoski returned to the ice after taking a big first period hit from uh, Rafi Torres along the half boards. Missed the entire second period and then came back out in the third. That's Canada's social medicine at work. It, really good job there. <laughs> We're not top of it. Didn't have to wait in line, I guess. 5.53. Left to go here. Long pass for Cavosi that looked offside. Ward back the other way. Took a shot, redirected into the corner. Murphy with Bashai. Bashai looking for the opportunity. Is hauled down. Throws towards the net. Doesn't get through. Back the other way. Tired legs. Hogan trying to cut past Hainsey. Little blocker save. Loose up front and picked up by Ward. Ward is going to get to the line here. He's going to try and carry it in. He does. Brings it across. Dumps it in and new legs as Ward is tripped up at the bench. There's going to be no call there. Oshman at the line. Finds Bobby Allen, the shot, rebound! Not there for the Bulldogs. It's knocked down the ice. Bolshaman hard to it. Moves it back the other way, Placanic. And ball Ballet, Ballet picks it up. Goes cross ice, bolshaman has got room, big shot into the glove of Holmquist. 4.50 left to go here in double overtime. One apiece the score. Cheap little hit by Jeff Hogan in front of his net on Ward long after he removed the puck. Hogan tried to sell it as going off for the line change and actually probably ended up to the arrow's detriment. Two guys got tied up with Ward on the ice and the shot enabled inside the zone still with Houston short a man while uh, those two three tried to get untangled. Yes, the Hamilton Thunder game is still next. Regardless of when this finishes. Got some very perturbed soccer players just waiting for the whistle. <laughs> Standing around. <laughs> Stoll going in for the draw against Wallin. Gets that one back to Hainsey. Hainsey winds up, fires it in, rebound. And that one sent back out to Hainsey trying to get a piece of it. And move it back the other way. Puts it up the boards and out. Hosa tries to pull it in. Mayu gets in the way of that and the arrows dump it in. Hainsey goes after that one. Moves it along to Komisarek over his stick and back the other way. Jared Stoll! And that one just past the stick of Hosa. Stoll around behind the net, steps out, takes the shot. Holmquist is right there for it. Ryder, side of the net, trying to find the loose puck. And it's knocked away by the Houston Arrows. 4-12, left to go. Good chances generated by that line. Hosa Ryder. Combination. Hins moves that along to Torres. Torres tried to get it in there. At the line, it's... Brought out by the Arrows. Moving it along and knocking it away is Bobby Allen. Lindsey pulls it in. He's got Torres with him, but he throws it in backhanded to the glove of 
Holmquist. That half second, well, he got a hold of it, forced him to go on the backhand and not the quality shot. I think he had designs on trying to throw it into the center to catch Torres cutting into the net. Three forty-five left to go. A lot of nail biting going on here. Bulldogs one shot away from sixty shots on that. It's a lot of vulcanized rubber. Off the draw, back to Bergeron. He flips it down the boards. Flakanic down there tries to cut in, throws it towards Holmquist. He covers it up again. And the Bulldogs, I don't remember about those guys down there in the hot tub that uh, show up on a... That's getting, that's bordering on pickling by now. Those guys are going to look like they should be retired on uh, the beach in Florida, that's for sure. There's Plakanek. Up along the far boards. Drift back the other way, Holmquist, easy shot to stop. Bulldogs at 62 shots on Johan Holmquist. 45 at Ty Conklin. Racing forward is Bolshaman. He touches that one and it's icing. So the faceoff will come deep inside Houston territory and the drama is there to be seen. Certainly the uh, balance of the last few minutes been to the Bulldogs control. A lot of close in chances. A lot of pressure on Holmquist down low in the Houston zone. Still yeah. having trouble trying to get that puck into the open center ice. Just below the hash marks. Back to Bergeron. Flips it in! Stop by Holmquist. You got a penalty on the call. It may be Hogan as Ward lays on the ice. Interference is the call. And Jason Ward is going to the box with 3.07 left to play in double overtime. Perhaps tying up tying up Hogan on his way to the point to block Bergeron's shot. See off the face off, the puck gets jumbled up. See the winger cut over, Ward bumps into him, throws the pick and roll on him. Well, that's a tough one to call in overtime. Play made a ton by a winger just to try and delay that forward an extra second to let your defenseman get that shot away. There it is. There's the contact. That's a tough one to call in overtime. Murphy with the puck. Here's Roche. Jeff Ward not happy about it over on the bench. It's easy to call the roughing and the ones you see that are happening right in front of you, but that is a tough one. That evens the penalties again. Trudell looking for an opportunity. Lindsay picks it up and dumps it back out. 30 seconds gone now in the penalty. Here's Trudell. Goes down low. Dominic Kelly tried the side door. Was locked. Komisar gets it up and out. Excellent job by both teams' penalty killers. The Bulldogs have been putting on an excellent show the last few penalty kills against Houston. Knocked back the other way. A Commissar. Here's Cullen with it. And picked up by the Bulldogs. And now here's Rafi Torres. And he doesn't uh, have the juice to pull it this late in the game. And we are into the longest playoff game in Bulldogs history now. In front of the biggest crowd in Bulldogs playoff history. 10,419. McCulloch. Side of the net, and Conklin covers that one up. Six. Minute 47 left to go. 40 seconds left in the penalty to Jason Ward for interference. Safely off to the side of the net. <laughs> 62 shots fired by the Dogs, 46 now fired by the Arrows. The crowd here at Cops Coliseum some nights, pretty quiet crowd, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's, they're quiet for a different reason here. They're holding their breath. Boshaman, Mayu, gets down in the corner, moves it along, Juan Big out there. Now digging it out of there, Allen gets a piece of it. They move it up along the boards and... 
Close that man. is going to be delay of game. Motion man. That is an unbelievable call. Delay of game as he was trying to move the puck. Moshaman was over top another man. And that is incredible. On a two-man advantage. In overtime. Unheard of. See Bill Lindsay talking to head referee Dan O'Rourke. And a timeout time called by the Houston bench. Smart call by Todd McClellan. Take advantage. Time to set it up. Orchestrate. You've got the two-man advantage. You've this got is something you just do not see. Here's the replay behind the net. There's the contact by Allen. Beauchemin tries to shoot it past the Houston Arrow player. See, you see O'Rourke. Watch it go into the stands. And there's the signal. Wow. Wow, that has put the Bulldogs in a heck of a situation. Unreal. Jeff Ward with lots of instructions to the penalty killers. 26 seconds for two-man advantage and then a, the balance of the period plus the beginning of the third overtime should we get there. Also on the penalty kill. Boschman, integral part of the penalty kill is J Jason Ward and they're both in the penalty box. Jarrett Stoll down there. Bobby Allen and Mike Komisarek for the Bulldogs. Kluche to take the draw. He does win that one. Murphy up top. Roche is there too. They tighten in the circle. Lots of traffic out front. There's the shot. It ends up wide. Conklin tries to push out. Rolls right back to him. Loose puck out front. And Komisarek tackles Kluche out front. What else can you do? 12 seconds left. Ward is chomping at the bit to get back on the ice. Kluche was going to have to come up with a severed leg there to uh, get another penalty from O'Rourke. <laughs> Just take the headlock and go to the ice. Off the draw. Back for Roche again. Down to Kelly. Back to Roche. Here's Murphy winding up. Doesn't have it. The shot. And... Conklin caught out of position, doesn't hurt this time. Roche takes the shot, he scores! No goal, waved off by, waved off by referee O'Rourke. The goal waved off! No goal. The goal is waved off! The coaches are trying to get down the tunnel into the dressing room. McClellan hasn't ref. The goal waved is it off. waved off! It does not count. The goal does not count. Oh, Kluche Goal with a two tender interference. Two it had minor. to be something. Here's the replay. You see the shot come from the point. Kluche is right out on top of the crease, but no hesitation by O'Rourke. The puck had not even entered the net, and he almost began swinging his arms. Well, and I tell you, if we can take a look at that again, I'm not sure the goaltender interference. It looked like Conklin was in position for the save at the top of the crease, but O'Rourke's reaction was so quick. Perhaps we can get a look at that again, and everybody is staring at the screen. Here's Roche. See the shot from the circle there. Kluche's on top of the oh crease. My. Conklin's out high, but O'Rourke didn't hesitate. He didn't hesitate, but I got to tell you, Conklin went right to him, though, and uh, he may have uh, had him stick to stick, and that's something we couldn't see quite there. He may have, had a, uh, may have hooked his stick. This game is not over. <laughs> and we are going to play some four on four. Oh my. What unbelievable. And the irony of the disallowed goal with a minute five left on the clock and only a minute 32 left in the penalty to Beauchemin would be if they can get through that four on four period. The Bulldogs are actually going to be rewarded with a 30 second power play nearing the start of the third overtime period. Unbelievable. And yet, the soccer game will still be at the end of the soccer game. Oh boy, this has been a wild one. 
I don't know what we're short in this contest. Not much. Off the draw. Ward knocks it down the ice. Last minute of play in double overtime. The Houston Arrows have already celebrated once. They will try to do it again. Here's Wallen, and backing it up, Ward, nice back check. Jason Ward comes back the other way with it. He's got Rita with him. Ward fires it at the net, and that one doesn't get through. Ward again, this time up the boards, Komasarek looking for a drifter. Rita hauled down. Komasarek looks again. That one caught a lot of flesh. Wallen. Tavayu, and he dumps it in as they make changes. And that puck ended up in the bench, so. 23 seconds left to go in double overtime. One apiece the score. A disallowed goal, a five on three. Then a four on four. On a four on four. <laughs> Couldn't have any more variations. I do not. I do not think. I'm a. I haven't seen a three on three yet. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Could happen. Taken away. Stoll gets to the puck. Out front. And there's a penalty to Michael Ryder. Oh my. We spoke too soon. A four on three. With 11 and a half seconds. How unusual. Tripping call there. You'll see there, Houston defender tried to cut around Ryder. It did free up Stoll for a possibility of a two-on-one. I hope we get, with 11 seconds left to go, I hope we get to the intermission because I am just dying to hear what the panel has to say. Well, we've certainly given them a lot to talk about in this period. The goal down here on, the, uh, on Holmquist that looked Honestly, like it had gone in and hit the back crossbar. Love Unusual things that have happened. Love to see a different angle on that replay. Five seconds left to go. Dom and Kelly winds up. Long shot. Conklin kicks it away. And we're going to triple overtime. Just in case you didn't think we could play two complete hockey games here tonight. That was the weirdest overtime period I have seen. Roger. The penalty calls in overtime, which is normally unheard of, certainly at that uh, at that frequency. Five on three, like you said. Then the disallowed goal. Kluche, ironically, contributing to the disallowed goal, ends up in the penalty box. That evens things up until Ryder trips the Houston defenseman. And now we've got penalty still on the clock to greet us at the start of the third. I'm very curious what our panel has to comment on. Dean Morton used to be the most hated ref here in Hamilton. They would just jeer him every time they could. Dan O'Rourke may be vying for the title. <laughs> I'm Todd Crocker with Roger Turn and stick around. The intermission is on its way. Some great comments coming. I am sure of it. Let's head back to the studio. It is 1-1 after five periods of hockey down at the Coliseum. Hello, everyone. Steve Foxcroft here yet again. Rick Natras, <laughs> NHL TV, Scott Radley, Hamilton Spectator, Glenn Allen with us as well, CHML. Guys. What's in the water the, for you, Steve? <laughs> no, listen here. We have, we have some stuff happening where for this intermission, we got a couple of highlights, but it's all turned into Dan O'Rourke's show. We talked here. about that. Yeah, we talked and about that. My take is this, and I'll get you guys to chip in, but my take is this. He has involved himself in this game in that overtime period, and now he has had to take away a goal in an effort to get the game back to being fair. That goaltender interference call, in my mind, was very soft. Houston put the puck in the net, very soft. O'Rourke, though, knowing that he'd make a couple bad decisions earlier, the ward penalty I don't think existed. Look where he called that one from. Going both ways, though, at this point. Bad. But what he needs to have happen is this game get back, go into another overtime, let all the penalties wipe themselves out, and then get out of it. it we thought we thought up. we thought he had done that. Yeah. And then he turned around and he, and he makes the call with uh, with Michael Ryder. This is a guy who, and and, and uh, I know the rest of the panel want to get in on this. We we were talking about referees and and and, and staying away from the game, uh, of, of the best 
refereed game is one where they don't know about you, don't know your name at the end of the uh, at the end of the game. Some of these calls have just been atrocious, especially the ward call. Some yeah. of them are legit, but when you mix in three or four iffies or uh, phantoms, that makes it tough. Scott. Let, let's just say that I think that the word Todd used during the play-by-play -play right after it when he said this is unusual. I think was a great word because it is unusual. There, first of all, for the record. This is not about bad calls against the Bulldogs. This is bad mm -hmm. calls against both. Houston should have won this game. That no goal should have been a goal, in my opinion. Then again, the call against Jason Ward that uh, for the inter was it interference? Interference. Interference. Collision. We're watching the replay a couple times. I don't even think Jason Ward saw that guy coming. He was skating to a spot, and they collided. And, and Ward actually was the one, if you watched, who took the longer time. To, he took the worst of it. He got it right in the head. What we call that in officiating terms, uh, Scott, is equal responsibility for the contact. If you're skating to a spot and neither player sees each other, <laughs> and I'll, I'll just say, what do you call that one? Equal, <laughs> equal responsibility, responsibility for the contact. Is that a Danny that's Gallivan thing? That was, that's what happened But there. you know what? There are, there are bad calls both ways. And it would, in my opinion, what you do, if you're the ref and you make a bad call, we all know about the you know, making it up thing in hockey or in any sport where you, you, know, you think maybe you made a bad call. It happened in the last game. There was a too many men on the ice call that was a bit, bit questionable. Within 10 seconds or 20 seconds, they turn around and they call something else to bounce it off. The slash, then, yeah. then yeah, the slash. a little slash that was that was a tap. What you do then is, as you've said, you you cut bait and you get out of it, and you don't continue to get yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into the quicksand. No matter what happens in this game now, no matter who loses this game, it is going to be Dan O'Rourke's fault in a lot of their minds. It's not mm -hmm. going to be because they lost the game. He has now become, I think. The big story of the game. Well, was that your whole story you're writing for tomorrow's paper? I'm not writing. You got it all <laughs> to right now. Two thousand yeah. words. No, I think we talked about yeah, this, and we've you, you know. The shots on goal, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Total. <laughs> Anyways, What's it's my, is it my turn to sky? He's on the phone, folks. <laughs> getting the shots on goal. I think he's getting a pizza. I think he is. Anyways, <laughs> Brent said he was going to order a pizza. Yeah. I had to take it in my own hands. Yeah. Just but so it's sixty-two forty-eight well, shots on goal. Yeah, Hamilton. Thanks, Dan. Uh, anyways, well, can I talk now? Um, <laughs> Just by all means, we ahead. talked about this, and we don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think O'Rourke's put himself in a situation that doesn't fare well for him or the American Hockey League right now. And, no. and uh, Dave uh, Andrews is going to be down there, uh, he is, and, yeah. and he's at the game, and he's going to address this. And certainly, is they do not want to be part of the game. They want to associate themselves at a certain disassociate themselves from the game itself let the two teams dictate who's going to win so we we know that already we can't you can you know you can beat him and beat him but he's going to have some trouble after this game to get some work i mean for the rest of the series i think because he's done a poor job we talked about the jason ward if they don't call that call because what it is is just a collision it's not a pick then they don't call bergeron for the clearance so there's a five on three that's nullified then you don't have to then he makes the bad call again on the goalie goal uh, disallowed so, I mean, across the board, his decisions coming into these overtime periods because we saw the Bergeron uh, hook in the first period, uh, that, uh, excuse me, first overtime that we thought was iffy also. So, right across the board, he's become the game now rather than the game letting itself play out. So, I first, think with him. In the first three periods, he, he did didn't a good do job. That. That's what I mean. So, he did a good job. And it all started by reaching. To I, get and, and what you involved. said about O'Rourke and, and having trouble getting work and about Dave Andrews being here and everything, after the last game, Dave Andrews and the American Hockey League supervisor of officials and someone else, I'm not even sure who it was, another official from the league, after the game were down in the referee's room for probably 15 to 20 minutes having a meeting with the refs. Well, it, I, don't, I don't know what it's about, well, but, what I'm saying but obviously this, they don't want this well, kind of thing. What it is, is this is, for him, it's just like the NHL, for him to get these games this late into the season, into the Calder Cup, is, is a bonus of what exactly. he's done during the regular season. Has this put a black mark against his name? Personally, I think it has. So, I mean, we can end that right now. The other part is that both teams are trying to fight through whatever they don't, the understanding they have of what is a call, what isn't a call. And we're actually seeing some pretty good hockey, uh, hockey right now, you know, and, and entertaining. And everybody said that they were worried about the increase in pricing and everything. Well, they're getting their money's worth now, right? <laughs> yeah, Especially right. when they get the free stuff, right? That's right. <laughs> it's, an event. And on, and on, it's a real event it's now. An event. And but on a per period basis, it's cheaper than regular we got season. Some, we got some clips, Steve. <laughs> yeah, let's said, get yeah. to these. And uh, there, we could pick a million of them, but let's just go to some now. We'll see a, a chance that the dogs have one thing that uh, we're kind of missing here is the dogs came out on fire here yeah. and they played with energy they were blocking shots they were playing uh, they were going to the net they were doing a lot of they were creating some traffic in front and here's Samalainen with a chance right in front 
And it just goes over the top of the net there, but it was good energy coming out of the yeah, locker Steve, room. Steve, and what have we talked about, Glenn and I both said, and Scott also, what's the biggest key that uh, both teams are doing now of their, uh, actually their points? They're not taking those big windups. They're trying to get the puck, get it to the net, and then see what happens. And I think the, everything that's happened in this, this game or later in the part of the game is because of that. It's, it hasn't been classy. It's not going to be. It's going to be a mucker's goal. And who cares, though? It's going to be the goal that wins the hockey game. So pretty doesn't count right now. It's whatever, whoever comes away here with the 2-1 to one lead. Or and and Marc-Andre Bergeron, who rattled uh, on, on, on two plays mm -hmm. in, the, in the same shift, rattled a puck off some shin pads. And he went to the bench. He was very upset at himself. Since that time, he's been taking those wrist shots just off the net or just getting and the up. puck through. And look at, and that's a big thing, yeah. Rick. And you mentioned that yeah. instead of burying their heads and firing the puck, just get it through. And you watch it hit the skates. And I agree with you. I really think it's going to uh, uh, it's going to be a goal if if Hamilton gets it. They're finally just going to be putting a puck on the net, and it's going to find its way off. Maybe Got someone's so nice, butt, baby. a skate, yeah. a head, yeah. and it's going to find its way in. And really, that's probably how it has to be. Yeah. Although they've got a real task at the beginning of this period just to kill off these penalties because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're coming out for a new overtime and, uh, you know, when you're in this position, it's, I think it's very difficult when you come out, you're wanting to get the game over with and score a goal early most of the time in overtimes. Now they're thinking, I don't think, Rick, about necessarily well, scoring. They want to kill off these the penalties. The thing is, and you've got to understand, we're mostly hockey players, so we don't think a lot anyways, right? But when you're in the dressing room, <laughs> when you're in the dressing room, what you're trying to do is your main focus right now is to calm everybody down, stay focused on the game, not on the referee, not on the calls that were made before, on the task at hand. And as you said, Scott, the task at hand is to kill that five on three and then go forward from there one step at a time it's just like a toddler you know you start off crawling you walk and then you run so that's all they're going to do here they're going to make sure that they play a sound uh, triangle or hopefully they play a sound triangle a little bit better than we saw them on their last five on three kill the uh, top man is going to give them more opportunity to have to force the puck down low and if they do that they'll have success and they did come out and play with good energy and we'll hope they do that again here in the third overtime period as it comes up let's take a look at what kind of in my mind this where this all started from an officiating perspective here, and this is Jason Ward's interference call. Watch how far away O'Rourke is. He's down in the opposite corner on the goal line, and look where the collision took place, and there's three guys in his line of vision between him and that collision, and can you find who had responsibility for that contact? I certainly can. Well, well what, um, personally, I think, you know, usually in the playoffs, and we, uh, excuse me, in overtime, and, you know, in the playoffs, is it an odd man situation? Has that, has that scenario scenario caused an on-man situation which has caused the goal. We saw that. That's what we talked about the yeah. first one. Yeah. Exactly. No, it hasn't. So you got two guys colliding. It wasn't a pick where he stuck yeah, his stick out or anything like that. It is. He's got his head down. He's looking what's going on. Look at, if anything, Houston guy's trying to cut a little closer. I mean, so I wouldn't personally, where he, the ref is, O'Rourke is, I mean, don't make the call because you embarrassed yourself. That was an embarrassing situation. I think so, too. And, and notice there, Bulldogs won the face off. And here it is yet again, as you said, Rick, the Houston guys kind of closing on, in. You got, you got two guys that are you know, maybe initiating pounds. And, I mean, collisions happen, and it, the reason is, was it the stick flying yeah, in the air and whatever? Right. Maybe it looked a lot a worse from where he was. Where I saw it from, which is here, and we saw it over and over again, which is the benefit of being head, you know, seeing replay. That was just a total two guys colliding. It was not a pick. It was not an interference play. So I don't think he, he should have made the call because he wasn't sure. If he felt he was sure on that one, he's totally not watching the plays that we saw. Scott. Well, I, I don't know if, uh, as I say, I think that perhaps it was the Houston player that looked more spectacular when he went down. Uh, from where you're standing, you're right. I mean, he may have had an obscure line of vision, but certainly you're going to see the Houston player because he was in a full spread eagle mode as he went down, and Ward went down a little yeah. cl more clean. Yeah. Regardless, Again, if you watch that, and I don't think we should show it again necessarily, but Ward, I don't think, is even looking at the player. He's looking at the puck that's gone back to the point and doesn't even know that he's going to hit him. And uh, I don't think that. I don't think you bail out Ward for that. I just think it's just two guys getting to the spot at the same time. And I think that's what I'm saying. Though. That's a that horse. It's self-explanatory. Yeah. It a crap call, <laughs> and let's move on. Okay, let's do that. Hey, Bulldogs won that face-off, but then later on uh, in the waning moments of that overtime period, they couldn't win a face-off for the life yep. of them when they're down two men. Let's take a look at this one where it's Houston scoring. Five but, on uh, three. Five on three. We missed the net here, and then they get they get set back up. Houston again. There you go. He's allowed to walk into the middle. As we talked, 
again, previously. He's just on the blue paint there, just on the tip, and I think uh, Conklin actually moved forward to him and caused that, that interference. Again, we're watching it at a different angle, and uh, O'Rourke seems to be seeing a lot of things that we're not seeing out there, so he makes the call. It's a you know, gutsy call again on his behalf because he's trying to make up for sh the stuff that he did previously. But just in the, you know, to get away from that call, I wanted to talk about the power... Uh, the penalty kill, and we talked about the five-on-three and what, how much more that four, uh, top forward has to do for the Bulldogs. And right there, he allowed that guy to come off the wall and get into the top slot. He's got to do more. Don't worry about the pass. Who's the threat right now? The guy with the puck, okay? So force him and force him to stay on the wall, and they've got to change their triangle a little bit there. They're not That support guy's not picking up the, the back guy. I don't know if anybody understands me. That's what I'm saying. They've got to stay, hold the wall. When you have it, you have two guys on one side where the puck is, and that backside guy off the far post defense has got to move up to take that wide pass away and they're not doing that and that's they're getting beat two on ones down off the, the high man and they're gonna it's gonna cost them it did there but they got lucky it got called things, out things are really shaping up to have a fantastic finish here it's gonna be controversial no matter what so when we go to Houston I think it's gonna be a dandy series no matter what happens here tonight and a reminder to Bulldog fans those games take place next Wednesday June the 4th Bulldogs at Houston that's an 8 p.m. puck drop then Two games that will possibly be TV games. We're trying to put the final touches on a negotiation package to bring those games to you here on our Cable 14 network. And those are them right there, games four and five. Next Friday, a week tonight, an 8.30 p.m. start. And the following night, Saturday night, also an 8.30 p.m. start, games four and five. And then, if necessary, games six and seven, back in Hamilton. And... I think things are beginning to develop here. Those games back in Hamilton are Monday, June the 9th, and Thursday, June the 12th. Both of them, if necessary, both of them 7 p.m. puck drops there. But things are going to shape up, and there's going to be some bad blood no matter what happens here tonight as uh, we head back to as this series resumes. Houston at Hamilton, there you see it, game yeah. six, and uh, Hamilton again, game seven. Glenn, before we go back for third overtime. What well, just before, just before we go back, Steve, just what I wanted to touch on the playoff records. Hamilton is 2-0 and in this year's playoffs, and Houston is 2-2. Two and two. And that's overtime? Overtime situation? games, yes. Very good. That's it for our panel right now. <laughs> Let's go back down to the Coliseum. We'll wake up Todd and Roger and all the fans down in the dog pound for third overtime period action, guys. Yeah, I tell you, wake up is right. <laughs> This is, uh, this game just seems to never, it is the game that never ends. Just when you think it's come to a conclusion. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Dan works is not on my I think Dominic Hasek has probably had dreams about that. He got a resounding boo here. Surprise, surprise. Now the crowd has thinned out a little bit, maybe. Or maybe they're just, uh, oh, there's a brave youngster, actually, coming down the stairs. <laughs> Can't be more than... A year old. And yeah, that one's been asleep for a couple of periods already. I, I would think so. <laughs> but Dad is hanging in. We have got three penalties on the board. The Bulldogs with 27 seconds left in there. There's playing uh, four on three here. It's like a uh, shinny game, Mountain Arena. Up along the near boards. Murphy keeps it in. Stoll chops it out. 13 seconds left to go. In this four on three, Bo Shaman is gonna jump out of the box here and join the fray, I'm sure. Well, actually, we'll see. As Bo Shaman comes on, they gain the zone. Stoll picks it up. He's got Bo Shaman cross ice. We're playing four on four here for the next 18 seconds, and then it'll be a power play for the Houston Arrows. Yes, this is triple overtime. In case your eyes deceive you and there are penalties and you're thinking, what in the world? That's what the crowd here thought, too. Pins down around behind the net. This will be one they talk about in Hamilton coffee shops for a long time to come. Down into the corner. Mayu moves it up to the point. Here's the shot! And that one is stopped by Conklin. Another one directed his way, side of the net. Picked up side of the net. They try to jam it in, and... Thomas Ark ends up knocking that one back out. On the power play, the Houston Arrows with 20 seconds left in that. And then we will, I think, go back to five on five for a little bit. 
Perhaps. Jason Ward out there for checking. You never know. Stoll, or rather Bashai gets in the way of that, knocks it down. Five seconds left. Ryder looking to get on the ice quick. That one thrown at Conklin. Picked it up loose! And knocked behind the net. Beauchemin sends it up ice. We're back to five on five, if you can believe it. Two minutes off the clock. As that one is picked up for icing, they'll bring it all the way back. Well, it is hard to believe that no one scored if, in fact, that disallowed goal was a goal at all. And, uh, Roger, you say it was not. Well, it, uh, it certainly indicated that it looked as if when we were taking a look at different things and uh, talking to people from different vantage points up here in the press box, it certainly appeared that when Conklin first came out to play the supposed shot that was going to come from Roche from the point, Kluche had made contact with him during his setup then pulled away from the crease. Henceforth, the replay that we saw, it looked like Kluche had been clear of him, but had not been previous. Of course, the interesting thing about that is uh, the first move from Dan O'Rourke was not to call the penalty, but to wave off the goal. Definitely probably wanted a clear indication because he knew exactly what was going to happen, which we watched the Houston Arrows file onto the, uh, file onto the ice. Thomas Ark now, Plakanek moves the puck. Little backhander. In towards Holmquist. Rita trying to get to that puck. It's picked up by Kluche. Ballet cuts it off, takes the shot, and that one drifts wide. Back the other way come the Houston Arrows. That ends prematurely. Ballet dumps it in, and the Bulldogs make some changes. Two and a half off the clock. Here in triple overtime. Are you still with us? Better hope so. Beauchemin. Hosa goes cross ice, stole, clear shot. Two oh, big stop by Holmquist as Ryder was right out front and couldn't pick it up off the ice. Beautiful little play there and a passing play between the three forwards. Got to Ryder's stick and he went low and tried to slide it underneath Holmquist who was there to answer the bell. Upstairs at all and that puck is in. See the play here. Goes wide over to Stoll, who fishes it back into the middle. Ryder picks it up smooth, cuts away. Tries to tuck it in underneath Holmquist, who's down to take away the bottom of the net. Off the draw, straight to Holmquist, and he hangs on to that one. It's a couple of big stops by Holmquist here in overtime. You remember back in the first overtime period, that flash of the trapper that kept the Jason Ward attempt out of the net. And takes that away from Ryder. There's another shot that doesn't get through. Here come the arrows. Donna Kelly for Travis Roche. Roche cuts in and has it knocked off his stick by Bobby Allen. Chad Hins sends it back, hopping the other way. That one will hop all the way down the ice. Holmquist redirects it. Back up for Beauchemin. Gets by him. Bobby Allen has to chase it down into the corner. Little trouble with it. Trudell trying to get loose with it. Hins without the bucket on his head. Along for Lindsay. Cut off. And now, a shot of Trudell is down on the ice. He seems hurt. He's grabbing his knee. He, he labored as he and Hens got tied up in the corner and never did get back up to the ice. Jean-Guy Trudell is down there. He was, uh, he was hanging on to his knee. Still is. And here comes the trainer, Jerry Mines, for the Houston Arrows. The crowd here, as I say, Roger, thinned out a little bit again, but I think that was the 5- to 10-year-old crowd that had to go home <laughs> after double overtime. It was 5 and under. Everybody that was 5 and under had to go home after the second, uh, first overtime, and now the 5-10 to 10 crowd, maybe. If it goes to 4, could, could watch another they'll thing. be checking ID at the door. So uh, quick replay in the scoreboard here. Actually, Trudell grimacing actually as even he went to the ice with him. That would be a huge loss for Houston. Talked earlier when uh, Ward was hit heavily into the boards by Travis Roche that that would be a, a big loss for the Bulldogs. Trudell. Todd McClellan, the coach of wipe, the Houston Arrows. Wipe of the brow. Feeling some pressure now. The Trudell no longer available to him. Leads Houston, six playoff goals. Three and a half off the clock here, folks. One apiece to score. 
Trudell slow down the tunnel. He's actually the uh, scored the game winning goal for the Arrows in game one. Jared Stoll off the draw. That one poked back to the point and sent in. Conklin plays it off the glass. Takes a ride. Hosa tried to get to it. He's going to pick it up now. Comes across the line. He finds Michael Ryder. Ryder juggles the puck. Still working on it. And does get some uh, arrows in his way. Back the other way. Here's Wanvig. Down into the corner. Stoll going after it too. And now he breaks it off. Hackenham trying to get to that puck. Big fight going on out front. Loose puck. And Ryder gets it in amongst his feet. Gets loose, puts it off the glass. And Hosa goes chasing. Push, pushes Murphy off of it. Can't quite get to it. And we get a whistle here. Offside call by the linesman. And the linesman, they're saying... They're not saying delay of game or too many men, are they? No, I don't believe so. No, they just needed a new puck. I think what he's indicating is the puck had come back out over the blue line, and I'm not exactly sure how how that call was made, but nonetheless, it's made. Uh, yeah, that was a bit of a mystery. We couldn't quite... Wait a minute. No, the Bulldogs... The Bulldogs have got a delay, or rather too many men. Penalty. And once again... There goes Yanni Reed to serve the penalty. Oh, boy. And the Houston Arrows get another opportunity here on the power play. And they will try to end it quick. What a wild game as far as the officiating is concerned here in overtime. The Houston Arrows now will try to pour it on for the next minute and a half. Pavlikovsky down in the corner. Throws it back up high. Cullen tried to drift it in there, but didn't put any mustard on it. Kavosi rings it off the iron. Chopping at it, Ward. Cullen takes the shot, and Conklin makes the save. A minute 20 left in the penalty for too many men. Keeping an eye for here on the uh, Houston bench. Big stop by Conklin. Not seen Trudell come back, and you would think if, it, if he's feeling well at all, he'd be out on the power play. Chad Hins off the draw. This one back. Hard to Conklin. Loose puck out there. And it's picked up in the corner. Back down into the corner. Wally. Leveu. He's got Murphy up high. Still got Murphy there. Looks down low. Tried to go cross ice. Hins tried to get to it. Around behind the net. Stepping out. They get to it. And that one ends up nearly... Getting it down O'Rourke, and a stick knocked straight out of the uh, straight out of the zone, but it's a Houston stick, and it's Walleen. There's a shot, and a good screen out front, and Conklin is upended. And we'll get goaltender interference again, I guess. 33 seconds left to go in the penalty. Onvik goes up high. Roche throws one in there. Conklin doesn't give up any rebound there. Scrambling there. The stick you saw flying earlier on in the play was after a tangle up in front of the net between Bergeron and Walleen. Bergeron got a shot to the back of the head for his trouble. No call on that play, and Conklin counted on again for another big save. That's the 57th shot he's seen. 56 stops as we see the score clock. 64 by the Dogs and 63 stops for Johan Holmquist. Yes, the thunder is coming. <laughs> I feel like the weather forecast. So is morning. <laughs> yes. I kept calling for rain this week. It never showed up. But the thunder will show up. Jean Gris Rudell just coming back down the uh, hallway from the Houston Aero dressing room area. Cloutier. As they set up. There's the shot, and it drifts wide. Seven seconds left. In the extra man for the Arrows. Cullen throws one in there. 
and it's knocked away by Bobby Allen, and the Bulldogs kill off the penalty. Here's Kavanaugh. Long shot in. Conklin hangs on to that one, and a good idea. Get the right bodies out there when you need them, and get the bodies that aren't rested off. Full line change and another big penalty kill in overtime. I can't believe we're talking about a penalty kill in the third overtime. <laughs> Especially on a too many men. <laughs> uh, which did definitely, I mean, the puck was not near the bench. Now the motion the linesman made, it looked as if he was, he was claiming it had been a tag up offside. And it's going to be hard to believe considering Hose had entered the, entered the zone without the puck and was chasing. <laughs> Here's Jason War. He dumps it in. Selma Lane and goes after it. Digging for the puck now. Comes up the boards. Move that back out into center. Bergeron is tripped up, and now they're calling for penalties in overtime, which you don't see either. Hakana picked up. Cross ice. Tuzzolino Here's Jason Ward with Selma Lane in the shot. Blocker saved by Holmquist, who has now faced 57. Triple overtime, the situation. The Bulldogs fans are a little weary themselves, but imagine how these players must feel. They get 14 minutes of rest and back out they come. And they're beat up just a touch. Just a little bit. By the time you get to the Calder Cup. I know the lines at the concessions can be a little jarring, but it isn't like this. Here's Jared Stoll in for the draw. It's knocked back by Cavosi. They try to get it up and out. They do. Stoll pinned against the boards. Still digging for it. Ryder clears the zone. He comes in to help out. Still poking at it. Finally, it comes loose. And the Bulldogs' Hosa knocks that one back. Here's Kamasarik picking it up. The crowd here just waiting for that moment. As it's sky dumped back out into center. Hosa trying to get to that one. Hainsey will pick it up in center. Long shot. Hoping to beat Holmquist. That uh, doesn't happen that easy. Not with these two goaltenders. Down into the corner now. Beauchemin goes after it. He picks it up. Finds Hens. Hens trying to break out with it. He'll carry it himself. Threaded along to Lindsay. It's knocked off his stick. Lindsay picks it up, though, on a redirection. Finds Torres. Torres winds up the shot. And Holmquist gets it again. A lot of meat on that from Torres. Knee stop by Holmquist. Kicked it down. It's a trap runner for the stop. Good hard shot by Torres. Jeff Ward searching the name plates on the back of the jerseys to look for a combination that might work. 11.49, left to go here in triple overtime. Placanic goes in for the draw. Knocked into the corner by the Arrows. Up and out. That one cut off by Placanic in center. Knocked off his stick by Kluche. Here's Hakana. He sends that back out into center. Throwing in. Conklin plays that. Up along the near boards. Walking over to the puck, trying to get that one up and out. Tuzzolino pushed off of it by Hakana, and now Kavanaugh picks it up. Around behind the net, steps out, didn't have it, throws it again. And that's not going to work out. Ballet tries to pull it out. He finds Rita. Rita didn't have the feet moving. He was heading off anyway. Nine minutes off the clock here in triple overtime. Kamasarik here. Picking it up, Hainsey looks over, Pavlikoski takes the shot, and Conklin is good for that one. 67 he has faced. Yes, that is one game. A quick look here at some historical facts from the uh, AHL history file. This game is now the third longest in the AHL Calder Cup final history and slowly progressing towards second longest, which is a Hershey Adirondack game. 
back in 1986. Moving towards Conklin, loose puck. Boshevon tries to just reach in there and pull it up, but Conklin would have none of that. No, thank you. If my trapper's near it, I'm going to stop it. <laughs> Houston with some pressure around the Bulldog goal. Love side of Conklin. A battle of a battle of strength and agility. Endurance. And stamina endurance. at this point. And stamina. <laughs> In for the draw. Bashai. Kavosi. Bashai trying to get that loose. Hainsey tries to get a stick on it. Rolls up. Selma Linen trying to get to it. Big battle there. And it finally comes loose and it does come out. Cullen goes back with it for the arrows. Knocked off the stick. Bishai tries to get loose. Hainsey goes back for that one and they'll pick that one up for icing and a good opportunity for the Bulldogs as they're going to take a draw deep inside Houston territory. And the just to let our panel know, there are actually a couple of guys still with their playoff beards here at Knott's Coliseum. Off the draw, Chad Hins moves it back to Komisarik. He flicks one at the net, loose out front, and they couldn't get that one by either. Here come the Houston Arrows. Knocked to the near board. Komisarik going after it. Round behind the net, no, into the corner they bring it. Hainsey trying to tie up. Komisarik in there to work on it, too. Still loose down there in the corner. Trying to reel it in. Hins gets it loose, but it pops up and over the glass. Oh, my goodness. What a surprise. A lot of people... A lot of people thinking maybe delay of game. <laughs> that fan not very popular up against the glass. He's got a Houston Aero jersey on. Well, I, I don't approve of whatever's going on there. <laughs> it's really taking your life in your own hands. I, I don't even want to know. <laughs> Jarrett Stoll and Kluche. In for the draw. That one comes back to Bobby Allen. Allen puts it off the glass. It goes up and out. That'll take a ride. Picked up for icing, 9.45. Left to go here in the third overtime. One apiece the score. Just to refresh your memory, 332 of the first period. That was the first actual regulation period. Michael Ryder on the power play from Stoll and Bergeron. At 1015, Don McKelly put one in for the arrows from Murphy and Trudell. And now, here comes Hosa with Ryder. Ryder winds up, doesn't take the shot, throws it at Holmquist now. Trying to pick up the rebound. Back the other way, Dan Kavanaugh. They knock it back out into center. And now Diamond, working the puck for the Houston Arrows, gets by everybody. Allen goes back for that one, picks it up. Icing was waved off. Long pass up for Hosa. He just dumps it in, and Ryder goes after it. Rubbed out into the boards, and back the other way come the arrows. Adlikoski has Dominic Kelly going to the net, but he was tied up. Round behind the net, Trudell is back out there after what looked like a fairly serious knee injury. Hakana digging in the corner with Bill Lindsay. Lindsay pushed to the ground, hins the crowd <laughs> with... A shot there on Conklin, but the crowd with a half-hearted, hey, what's going on? Uh, no, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get that anyways. No. That one rolls up and out. Lindsay tries to get control of it. He does. Hins into the skate. Now Hins down into the corner. Lindsay trailing. Some work being done by Jeff Hogan down there. 8.20 left to go. Arrows take a long shot, bit of a flutter shot. Conklin gets it to Torres. He taps it up and out. Placanic trying to get it. This will be offside if the arrows touch it. They do. 
They'll bring it out across the line. Stick around for Hamilton Thunder Soccer. For all you night owls out there, <laughs> you night soccer players who can't get enough. We've got soccer coming up after this. 8.08, left to go, triple overtime. Ty Conklin moves that along to Commissar. Commissar puts that back out into center. Picked up again by Hainsey. At the line, Wanvig keeps it in. Knocked back up to the line, there's a long shot. Loose puck, Hainsey tries to get to it. Wanvig gets back to it, didn't have the shot. Wallin down in the corner. Wanvig picks it up. This game is being played in mud here at the moment. And now Veul tries a nice little slider. Doesn't get by Conklin. Placanic along for Ballet. Murphy goes back. Dump back in. Wanvig goes chasing. Ty Conklin plays the puck up the boards. This one gets to Rita. Rita's got Ballet with him. Joseph Ballet puts on a burst of speed. Cuts in behind the net. Doesn't have a lot of help out there yet. Now he does. Cloutier picks it up. He looks down ice. Ballet is having a heck of a shift. Along to Ballet. The shot. Rebound was there. Not to be picked up. Allen grabs it again. And he sends one off a stick. And into the crowd. 6.57 left to go. Here in triple overtime. One apiece to score. Big hit by Ballet. A couple of good solid pressure rushes down on the defenseman and a shot on net. Don't you dare think of going to sleep. <laughs> you talking to me? We're, <laughs> we're here. You keep watching. Bashai off the draw, loses that one, and the arrows come out with it. Kavanaugh. Comes across the blue line. Gets it by Bashai, but it was offside. Ward's got a complaint. Maybe a uh, stick up in the nether regions there fired by the Houston Arrows. In the nether regions? Oh. That's right next to Belgium, I think. That's right. That's where we keep it. <laughs> 6.49 left to play here in triple overtime. Bashai off the draw. This one knocked back to Hackenet. They move it up and along to Jason Ward. A race for the puck. Going to be picked up by Cullen. Back the other way come the arrows. Across the line. Trying to cut in. No strength to do it. Cavosi has that one slide off his stick. And now it's knocked back out by Bergeron. That one slides up the glass and that goes into the penalty box. No call for delay a game there. Thank heaven. Shot of Jason Ward there heading off with line mates. Change up of fresh troops. 6-22. Three overtimes in, I don't think there are fresh troops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't even uh, keep a guy on the bench in that situation. Kind of hoping for a short shift even under your spare goalie at that point, aren't you? <laughs> Chad Hins will go in for the draw against Radoslav Pavlikovsky. Hins digging for it. Down into the corner, Pavlikovsky tried to send it in. That didn't get anywhere. Allen knocks it up and out. Still controlled by the arrows, though. Rafi Torres picks it up. Chops it along, tries to bring it further, and the defense of the arrows comes up with it. Back the other way. Trudell cutting to the net. Dominic Kelly picks it up. Allen gets a piece. And Bill Lindsay tries to come up with the puck. But it's brought back the other way by Curtis Murphy. Long pass. Dominic Kelly comes across the line. Just sends a floater in there. Hoping Pavlikovsky was going to get to it. Beauchemin up along the boards. Dominic Kelly sends it back behind. It's cut off by Bobby Allen. Allen finds Beauchemin back behind the net. Bulldogs set up here as Bill Lindsay comes off. Michael Ryder comes on. Long pass up for Ryder. Ryder has it knocked off his stick. Rafi Torres with the hit here in triple overtime. 5-20. Left to go. One apiece to the score. That hits the back. 
Travis Roche moving it. Hosha had Stoll going out front. It was tipped high though. Stoll back behind the net. The Bulldogs pressuring now. Hosha tried to send it out. There's a shot. That one is knocked away by Holmquist again. The Bulldogs now at 71 shots on Johan Holmquist. 444, here's Plakanic, three on two. Trailing the play, Belly, the shot goes high. Back the other way, Belly takes a nice shot and a hit. And Rita tries to get to that puck real quick. Bulldogs controlling, Plakanic finds Rita. Rita, the little backhander, 420 left to go. Just to get off of the change to try and get the lines mixed back up again. Back across the line. Down to the end boards now. This game is now the second longest in Calder Cup history. Tick, 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 tick. First run, dumps that one out. Race for the puck, Ward going after it. Selma line in two. Knock back, Cavosi picks it up. Cavosi trying to move that puck. He gets by Selma line in. Now he gets, tries to get by Beauchemin, it's picked up, put out front, what a save by Kavosi! Oh, what a save on Kavosi to keep this game going! The arrow forward cut across the top of the crease and Conklin read it all the way and went with him and was there still taking the net away for the rebound. Wow! An incredible save by Ty Conklin to keep this at one apiece, Cavosi robbed on the play. Looked like he had what could have ended this game, but it did not. Face off off to the glove hand uh, stick side, rather, of Conklin. Chad Hins now digging for Pavlikovsky was in the circle with him. Komisar tries to get a stick on it. Cutting back out front, Conklin just reaches out and snags that one. No more monkey business, I'm freezing this. <laughs> His 65th stop, or 64th rather. Ty Conklin has Hins out front against Pavlikoski taking the draw. Hins digs on that one. Komisarek sends it up the boards. Diamond stops it there, sends it back in. Trudell goes chasing. So does Pavlikovsky. He tries to send it back out front. Trudell. Ink stick check there by Komisar. Trudell gets to the net. But Lindsay comes up with it. Lindsay has got Torres with him. Rafi Torres throws it behind the net. Lindsay. It's left there. Torres couldn't, couldn't just dig in the edge hard enough to come back and get that one. That travels the length and icing waved off. I don't think Bobby Allen could have gone faster than that if he wanted to. <laughs> it looked like he was going slow, but that was as fast as he was going to be able to go on that shift. Hosa picked up on the two-line pass there. 2.49 left to go here in triple overtime. One apiece the score, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> oh, my. Jeff Ward. Ordering coffee. Ordering coffee. Ordering caffeine, he'll buy. Jarrett Stoll in there, Juan Vig too. Off the draw, Juan Vig wins it. Cullen takes the shot, Conklin makes a stop again. About four rows up behind the Bulldogs bench, there's a whole row of women just rocking back and forth. <laughs> Wouldn't be wives row bench. Yeah. Allen moves it up along the boards. Hosa gets by him. Cullen picks it up. And now here's Bobby Allen trying to move the puck. Beauchemin puts it backhanded back into center. Hosa goes chasing it. 2.23 left to go here in triple overtime. Beauchemin moving it along. Michael Ryder trying to get to it. He did open the scoring at 332. 
of the first period. Some nice work there that doesn't get finished. Rita moves it along, trying to find ballet. That one off a skate and offside. Speaking of soccer plays there, also ballet trying to kick that foot up to get the puck back onto a stick. What are the odds you think in the uh, intermission here if we lost another 2 or one here in the third overtime of somebody going up to either uh, Jeff Ward or Todd McClellan and uh, verbal complaint about ice time? <laughs> hey, man. I only got 60 minutes in this game. Somebody short shifting me or what, Coach? <laughs> Murphy now with the puck for the Houston Arrows with a minute 50 left to go. Bit of a dribbler in on Conklin. He covers that one up as Cloutier was bearing down hard on him. Conklin with another stop. Here's where you're hoping your goalie's concentration and fatigue doesn't set in. It's a lot of rubber to stop. Conklin's actually gone to the double water bottle. <laughs> Usually reserved for the referee and linesman, but you can bet he's helping himself. The crowd here. Holmquist just stretching in his crease with the face out of the other end, probably just to keep loose. Off the draw. This one back up, high slot. Murphy looks in, trying to take a shot. Too much player in front of him. Here's Jason Ward, hooked from behind. And now the whistle has been put away. Boy, he had a run at it too. Now Bashai with Ward, down the boards. Jason Ward fights through it. Looks out, the shot off the iron again! Beauchemin that time. That's knocked down, here's Beauchemin again with it. Coming back the other way, Bashai and Lindsay out there with them. There's a shot that doesn't get through. Along the far board, Salmaline just for a second thought, I could end this thing, but he was being called out. Torres at the blue line with Lindsay. Having a little trouble finding the puck. What, triple overtime? Last minute of play. Hinz skating around with it. Playing a little pond hockey himself. Tried to throw it on for Lindsay. There's a long shot from Bergeron. 35 seconds left to go. Cavosi finds Tuzzolino, and that one is dumped in. Komasar gets in the way of that one. 26 seconds left. The Bulldogs in triple overtime against the Houston Arrows. A shot on Conklin, and he handles that one. 20 seconds left to play. You can see there's nothing left in the legs, even on a loose puck or a battle for a loose puck. The guys are just leaning heavily on each other, exhausted. So rock, paper, scissors is out then to end this thing. Hey. There's probably a few out there that wouldn't mind trying. There's Jared Stoll. Against Pavlikovsky again with 20 seconds left. Bolshaman fires it up the boards. Rita gets to it. Yanni Rita fires a long one, and Holmquist had some trouble with it. He had a lot of meat on that shot. Holmquist got the glove up in time, but had to ricochet it off into the netting. Keep it out of the Houston air on that. 11.5 seconds left. There. Speaking of the arrows, the Toronto arrows are playing the Hamilton Thunder and it's been rescheduled to Monday <laughs> at 8 p.m. No surprise there. Jarrett Stoll going in for the draw. Picked up, Benesek fires it hard along the glass. It'll get by everybody. They'll get one more face off as Bolshaman, I don't think he touched that, but he got the benefit of the doubt. Three seconds, the Bulldogs will get another face off. Deep inside the zone of the Houston Arrows, but uh, I got a funny feeling. <laughs> Game might go a little longer. 72 stops for Johan Holmquist, 67 for Ty Conklin. Jarrett Stoll off the draw. Oh, that one's no good. Houston's bus driver making overtime in the parking lot. <laughs> Houston, in fact, has to be at the airport by 8.30 tomorrow just to uh, 
make them well aware. Folks, we are going to another overtime. Make it four. Why not? When Ernie Banks said, let's play two, <laughs> he didn't mean two games. And that's what we've played so far, 120 minutes of hockey. Minute 46 into this next period, and uh, actually minute 47, and this will become the longest AHL Calder Cup final game in history. And don't go anywhere because the talented and always enjoying panel is coming up next here on Cable 14. Stick around, we're going back to the studio. Yeah. <laughs> okay, roll call, Foxcroft here. <laughs> that's just yeah. Bradley for Allen. Here. Sorry, that's not alphabetical order for you. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. It took me that long to, to wake up to. You. <laughs> and we have been here so Natris has even <laughs> now, grown a beard. Now I'm growing a beard. Now it's my turn for the beard. <laughs> Unbelievable. You started oh, out not even being here. You were a stay at home <laughs> defenseman. I should He's the fresh one now. He, yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. got the legs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had to jump the bus to get here. So. <laughs> I want to welcome all, <laughs> all the viewers who have joined us who were at the yeah. Coliseum. And from the bar. Exactly. Or those of you just getting home, yes, you're flipping around expecting to find out what the weather is tomorrow, maybe some lottery numbers, whatever the yeah. case may be, what time it really is. A haven for pathological <laughs> insomniacs is right here. Or watching a replay of the game. Exactly. Yeah. It's still going yeah, on. This is still live. Six periods in the books. It's 1-1. One, one. All the scoring taking place way back in the first period. Uh, Michael Ryder and Nat Dominicelli scoring for Houston. And it's 1-1 one, one through six periods. Shots on goal, Glenn. I know you have that. Uh, yeah, 73 Bulldogs. Hang on, my cell phone. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do my uh, Nick Kiprios impersonation. I have uh, 73 Hamilton and 68 Houston. Yeah. Unbelievable. Rick? Tell us some of what we're going to see now. Like, I think you mentioned earlier, you don't see the guys starting and stopping anymore. It's just you get going and you got to let your legs well, take you where you are. Well, I think, you, you know, are. we've seen a lot, especially Hamilton at this point in time, that they're, they're making their plays and then they're worried about coming back and making sure they're not getting out man on rushes coming back. So you don't see a lot of flow going in the net and stopping there. You're seeing the shots being taken, curling off, and trying to pick up guys because that's what they're saying. Stops and starts now become a very tough situation for any hockey player that's played two games in, in one night, really. And I think, uh, you know, Hamilton's feeling a little bit. So is uh, Houston. I think uh, the def Hamilton's defense certainly is because Houston are a punishing team on the forecheck, as we've talked about uh, in period number two <laughs> uh, yesterday. And, uh, but I think, uh, I think, you know, Hamilton, at, in, the, in the end, they had a good finish. Every period so far, they finished really strong. I'd like to see them. It's tough right now to go on in the seventh period to say, hey, guys, we need you to play 20 minutes. But, I mean, yeah. that's what they still need to do. They're just flashing. And, and uh, I think the grinding of Houston is really causing some havoc in uh, the Bulldog zone. Before we bring in numbers here, I want to get him going. <laughs> Scott Radley, our numbers guy, he'll tell you everything you want to know by the numbers. I want to uh, just let the viewers know at home a programming note here on our Cable 14 <laughs> network. The soccer game will be shown Monday at 8 p.m. Toronto Supra taking on the Hamilton Thunder uh, obviously with the game going it's to its dark. length now yeah we don't it's too dark to yeah. start we the should game. be done okay, now we gotta <laughs> shut down things here yeah. for numbers if you've been staying up since 8 o'clock <laughs> to watch the soccer game it's now 12 30 what's your home phone number <laughs> now that you've announced I'm it? not saying that yeah. your license Folks, number not my decision that's for you Rickard. soccer fan yeah, I don't find <laughs> <laughs> but um, it will be shown Monday at 8 p.m. so tune in Monday at 8 p.m. unless this game soccer. is still going on yeah unless we're still here so now numbers numbers if you bought a ticket for this game oh, and now you're here through yeah. six it's a pretty good buy <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> plus all the, the free record, stuff in the events for the record i failed grade nine math and had to do it over in summer school uh -oh. so it's going to take me a while surprise. to calculate all okay. this surprise but no i mean one of the things that uh we, we were sort of joking about we've heard before that people say oh you know it's too expensive to go down to a bulldogs game <laughs> in the playoffs because they jack up the tickets well works out even if you paid full price now it's less than half the price no. of a regular yeah. ticket almost buy one get one season. free there you go, <laughs> there you go. not so. a lot of people are using those what are they called those thunder, oh, the thunder, thunder sticks. sticks are using for headrests now 
I was under their chin, so I'll right, do the Woody Woodpecker. We talked about the two ladies who came up here all the way from Miami. Right. <laughs> They're getting their money's worth. Yeah, they picked yeah, a good sure. game to come to. Yeah. And interesting that Houston, they have an 8.30 flight, so that'll be a quick turnaround for them to get back down to Houston and get ready for uh, Wednesday night when they will go at it in game three. So uh, still plenty of action coming up here tonight, of course. We got a few things to check out here in our, uh, what is this, our fifth, sixth, sixth intermission, <laughs> something like, in our sixth period intermission, including uh, the goal scoring leaders in the AHL. And we'll review our picks of who we went through, our panel here just before we go back to the Coliseum, of who we think will score. We each picked a player from each team. So we'll uh, go over that as well. <laughs> In-depth intermission, people. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Hey, but you know what? What I about that, Raph? I think, <laughs> yeah, let's let's bring up O'Rourke again. Guys, right. Houston came out, and yeah. I think they were all over the dogs in that period, though, Glenn. They had a lot of opportunities. Yeah. It, in the previous uh, overtime period, it seemed to be that Hamilton came out, played with energy. That time, it seemed to go in favor of Houston. Yeah, and I imagine as, as the overtimes go on, th these are the types of things that are going to happen. Houston... Uh, Houston started doing, again, what, what they've been doing well all night, the four-check, and uh, having the bigger forwards. Like they, they, are, they are a bigger team. They are very well conditioned, and it, it, you can see some of the, the, the Hamilton D, as Rick alluded to before, are wearing a little bit, and uh, it doesn't surprise me. No. But there's no, again, there's Hamilton, towards the end of the period, they, would, they got a little bit of sus sustained pressure in Houston's zone, but for the most part, it's Ty Conklin. We've been talking about Johan Holmquist. I almost said the other one. But it, Ty Conklin, look what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. And he has bailed his team um, out and, and allowed them to get into period number seven, seven numbers, is it? Seven. Longest yeah. game in Calder Cup playoff uh, action. You're watching it. Let's go to the footage here. Uh, Ty Conklin showing what he can do here. And I think this is one where he robs Cavassi. And here come the... Uh, Arrows yeah. in. And I just want to talk about this. Boschman, I know it's long in the game, but did you see what happens there? We talked about this before. I don't know if we're going to show this again. But he's got two hands on his stick as a defenseman. You know the rule is in hockey, everybody says you got to have two hands on your stick. Well, as a defenseman playing a one-on-one, -on -one, you have your one hand on your stick, your other hand off free, so you can use that to uh, guide the body. Here it is again, 24 and white, 24, middle of your And then screen. he doesn't skate back and pick up the other guy. So I'm thinking... You know, it's late and everything like that. We want to say you're tired. Well, we don't want to hear tired. We want to hear you did the job. And right there, that, that he was fortunate that Conklin came up big for him because he did not do his job on two fronts. One, not playing the one-on-one, -on -one, and second, not getting back to the front of the net before the other. Got it's kind of it's kinda like baseball. You know, if you, if you make one error, don't make a second one trying to make up for the first one. Mm. You know, a lot of sports are like that. You know, by, 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 by not thinking, again, it's a simplification and doing the little things right. So if, if you miss an assignment, bust your tail, work hard. It's the intent, those intangibles. And you this know? Is, these are tests. These are all, this is all a test because this is what this league is. It's a test to prove who's capable mentally and physically to make the next step. And that, meant, that next step is such a big one. These are games like situations. Okay, this, it's the sixth uh, overtime. Yeah, I'm tired, but can you tell yourself you're tired? No, you don't tell yourself. You leave that totally out of your mind frame and you work towards the common goal is to win the hockey game and do the best you can. On that effort, I think it was just the lack of total effort, no matter tired or not, and he's got to play better if he wants to succeed in this game. Scott? I think that uh, one of the things Rick alluded to in the last period was, uh, in the last intermission, whatever that was, <laughs> was that you don't have to score a pretty goal to win the game. It's not how you score it, it's that you score it. And I think the same applies to Ty Conklin. He's been a bit overshadowed so far in these two games because head Holmquist home 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 uh, has made several, and we've seen some tonight, incredibly spectacular saves that have looked, you know, you watch it and you say, how, how do you even keep that out? Conklin hasn't made a lot of spectacular saves, but he's been incredibly steady, and he's always been there to make the stop. Sometimes, you know, you have two goalies. Remember when I was growing up, Mike Palmatier was diving around and flopping and everything, and it looked like he was doing, mm. making amazing saves. Doesn't matter how you keep the puck out of the net as long as it stays out of the net, and Conklin deserves full credit. I mean, he's had 66 shots. He's only, give, he's only got f five shots, do a quick math, five shots fewer than Holmquist, and his team is right in it. So you got to give him full credit for keeping his team there. Really, both goalies in the series have done what they've had to yep. do. There's been no bad goals. But let's go to an opportunity now in the third overtime period that the Bulldogs had, and it's Ward leading the rush here, and I believe Michael Ryder is the trailer as they create a scoring opportunity here. Ward working hard along the wall there to get by his man and then sees the Ryder coming in. They get a good shot. But that, that's what you're, lo you're looking at, too, is, is, is when you come through, 
when you come through on the boards like that, what you want to do, that's what I was talking about. You keep your feet moving, you fight through the check. Mm -hmm. that's what you, we've been talking about mm -hmm. that off the camera too. And, 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 and what Jason Ward did there, that's what the teammates have to do. That's what, you, that's what Houston is doing in the Bulldog zone. And if Hamilton will do that more consistently in the Houston zone, and, and get the, their cycle game back again, There's they will sustain, sustain that, that pressure, pressure needed to create the opportunities. Yeah. I just want to make one other point is and, and we'll talk about ugly goals because at, right at the very uh, end of the period, Yanni Rita took a shot from about 62 feet out and it hit something and almost got by Holmquist. So these guys, if, if they can just keep shooting and work hard and keep their feet moving, fighting through those checks, something's going to give. Well, mm -hmm. the team that does that is going to be the successful yeah. team here. And, and we see it, and we talked about Ward, and he, Jason had an outstanding year. He got called up at the, you know, the end of the year for Montreal and didn't have a lot of success when he got called up you know, in 12 games. I'm not trying to put a damper on his parade, but this kid, he's got speed, and if he moves his feet, he's going to be a hard one to cover. But if he stops skating, if he stops skating, NHL defensemen will eat him up, and I think maybe that's the difference, you know what I mean? you got to keep your feet moving while you're going to the net and shoot the puck with your feet moving rather than coasting because at the NHL level, that's not going to happen. Scott's got some numbers for us to look at here. <laughs> There's well, a no, shot. We, we, we were one of the things that, as we were talking, and not to harp on the refs again, because this is one of those calls that we had the too many men on the ice penalty that it's either a too many men on the ice or not. Now, there's, there's questions about how, you know, how close it has to be and everything else. Nonetheless, if we look at the Bulldogs in the playoffs, this is one thing they've had some problems with already. If you look in the regular season, they had 80 games, uh, and I think the actual number there should be 12, uh, sorry, yeah, 12 underneath it, 12 bench penalties. In the playoffs, now 18 games, and they've already got seven bench penalties for too many men on the ice. Rick can talk about this a little more, but in most cases, I would think that's just not concentrating either by the players or coaches well, or something. It's a breakdown somewhere. It's a breakdown, it's a breakdown. And, breakdown and there's somewhere. certain areas of it. First and foremost, you got players that are eager to jump up, eager to jump on the ice that are leaving a little too soon, or guys that are coming off aren't skating hard to the bench. Yeah. And those are two aspects of generally that cause the problem. Is has the, the coach and there's uh, the other questionable. These are ones that are far and few in between. Does the coach call up one too many guys to jump on the ice and he does not, you know? Uh, correct that mistake and having three guys he makes four and then the guy's not paying attention and you know other things like that but right now that's going to be an issue at after this game and you know probably after the playoffs are over that why were there so many bench uh, you know too many men on the ice and what w was it me as uh, uh, Jeff Ward would say is it me or was it the players but I think at the end of the day it comes down to the coach and he's going to have to address that. Yeah, but that's a very that's a red flag. That's for and sure. And one Scott. thing in the last game, a positive thing in this was uh, and Benoit Graton is not playing tonight. But last game, and Glenn could probably even remember this, Graton had his both feet over the boards and was ready to jump mm -hmm. on the ice. Mm -hmm. And right, right when he was about to jump onto the ice, he was paying attention enough that he saw the puck coming right into the skates of I can't remember Hinsey. who it was he, who was coming off to he was going to change on for. And he was like literally just leaning off the boards and pulled himself back because if he had gone on the ice, there's another one another right there. Point. But you get, but you're talking about concentration of guys eager to jump on. There's a focus. guy and, and focus who kept his eye on the play, was paying attention to what was going on, and saved them from getting a penalty there. There's been uh, some good performers tonight, and before we go back to the Coliseum, I just want to touch on them and then also go over our picks for goal scores. Plakanic and his line, yep. uh, ballet. ballet, they've been playing pretty good, creating opportunities. I like what Ward's doing. He's giving them the ice time. He's rewarding them for playing well. At this point, too, it's almost a survival of the fittest type of mentality. And before we go back to the Coliseum, let's just take a look at, again, our panel picks. And we'll flip up the graphic here. Glenn, you got Michael Ryder. <laughs> Michael Ryder <laughs> and, and Tony uh, Tutolino. Tutolino. Tony Creek Boy. Yeah. 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 Uh, Scott, Bill Lindsay, and Wanvig. <laughs> he doesn't even know. <laughs> Kyle, well, Kyle Wanvig. He's almost I'm just forgetting. To, I'm just trying to figure out how the proper pronunciation. picked him yesterday. <laughs> I'm taking um, my buddy Marcel Hosa, who I think he might just pop on here with some Pretty fresh legs. Like it, we've seen him I move the puck pretty good <laughs> uh, through the season. Hey, hey Brent Trey. Hey, Trey, what's going on? We traded this guy. What's the, going the, the on? Here, the trade. producer traded can, this can, guy. Can you tell Brent who the Brent general manager is? Yeah, Kelly, like who's that got that a goal tonight, <laughs> and Brent, our director <laughs> here cheater. tonight. Yeah. The big, the Big man in the the <laughs> man with the typewriter. Yeah. Hey, just because he gets pizza, he thinks he can just go. Yeah, I, I, think so I think what happened was with the money we kicked in, 
for the fun here. Right. For, the you fun. Know, for the fun. <laughs> got bought the pizza. So, <laughs> so he flipped. He's not on the yeah. Dominic Kelly bandwagon anymore. He's and I still say Jason down. Ward's the guy, you know, Matt Dominic Kelly. But I say Jason Ward's worked too hard and had too many opportunities. So Just one thing quickly. You mentioned about uh, Placanic and you mentioned about uh, uh, ballet. ballet. It's with all we've talked about, about the big uh, Houston players, it's a little bit of a surprise that the two little forwards that the Bulldogs have are being so effective, but they really are. They're holding their own. And Ballet was the guy we talked about it, and I think that last period, who threw the one big hit that <laughs> caused the first turnover. Oh, we missed the goal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for all, you, for all you fans who have just arrived home and have tuned in, thanks for doing yeah. it. For those of you at the Coliseum tuned in to watch, it's great action here. Calder Cup playoffs, <laughs> the longest game in Calder Cup history now. Four overtimes. We're going to go to the seventh period of hockey right now. I'm gonna have to down to the Cups break. Coliseum <laughs> with Todd Crocker and Roger Turner. Guys? Huh? It, what was that, Steve? I just woke up. <laughs> game on. Well, I tell you, boxing the boys back there doing a heck <laughs> of a lot of work. Holy smokes. By now, this game will be dissected nine ways from Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and there's water on the ice, uh, surprisingly enough, or Zamboni. excess water. Zamboni's exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> they just came out and sprinkled it like curling. You know? <laughs> Get a fine pebble out there. Well, we are, in fact, ready to go here for overtime number four, Quattro. If, uh, that's your pleasure. Dump down into Houston territory. Cullen picking it up now. Sends it along to Trudell. Trudell dumps it cross ice. Dominic Kelly just couldn't quite catch an edge. Bobby Allen picks it up now. Looking ahead. Lindsay is up there with Hins. Hins picks it up. Hins. Just slides that one along for Rafi Torres, who overskates it. Havlikovsky sends it back the other way, but Hakkinen is right there. Give away to me. Oh, the shot and the rebound is one big. Could have put that one away and sealed the deal. Didn't get it done. McCulloch throws it in there. Loose puck still. Ryder back the other way. Couldn't get it anywhere. Wallin sends it in. And Marc-Andre Bergeron moves it ahead, trying to find Michael Ryder. Ryder finds Stoll. Hosa following up. Couldn't quite get to it. And back the other way. A couple anxious moments there. Wallin skates around, finds an opening that closes real quick. Bronco with that stop off the shoulder and Mantic right there for the rebound. Oh, one that could not get to that one. He just outstretched the stick and just had nothing to go. Conklin 70, 70th save. It's the 71st shot. You don't want to bring things like this up, but uh, I don't think the uh, shots on goal goes to triple digits. <laughs> the two goalies hoping not. <laughs> Blue Jay. Facing Thomas Plutana. Hogan comes on. He's the late addition. Plutanek trying to dig that one out of there. He does. Hainsey moves it around. Trying to get some help in Yanni Rita. Rita has that one wobble away from him. Trying to get that off the glass and out. They do. Hainsey sends it right back in hard, and that's offside. Unintentional. They're going to give him the full length of the ice, too. Face off way back inside the Bulldog zone. Well, it looked intentional. Hard not to with a slap shot. You know, somewhere in the crowd here tonight, there are people discussing two words. Shootout. Probably. <laughs> you start making those irrational decisions when you get sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got to be fresh and rested to come up with just keep playing. Benesik dumps it off into the corner. Kluche goes down. Plakanic in there. Komisarek looking for it. And we have played the longest Calder Cup final in history now. We are uh, 
we have topped Cleveland Pittsburgh back in 53. That was a quite a match, I'll tell you. I remember that one. <laughs> I bet you do. Pittsburgh came out 3 2 winners at 61 46. Climbed out of that, drove home under the Soto. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you are now watching the longest Calder Cup. And the crowd seems to appreciate the fact yeah, that they they'll applaud anything. They're delirious. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, the Puppies for sale on the concourse. Hooray! Mr. Submarine guns out with bacon and eggs. That's messy, too. Oh, yeah. McCulloch tries to get that one out. Bishai with an opportunity. Thought he had Ward behind him, but Ward was coming in to follow up. Salmonine and trying to do something with it. Picks it off. Fires it in there, but Murphy just slid down and block it. That one gets by Ward and will slide in for Murphy. No icing on that. Murphy just real slow with it. So that could be said of just about every player out there. Two line pass. Bulldogs will have this one dropped inside their zone. 2.37 off the clock here in the fourth overtime. There are people that have gone home from this game and are now watching on TV thinking to themselves, that could be me there. Off the draw, Roche. I was there. Gets loose with it. Takes the shot. Conklin the save still. And off the post. That one nearly slid in, but... John. That post has been the friend of both goaltenders tonight. John Guitardell, hands above his head, leaning on his helmet over in the corner. Figure what else he can do to get it in there. Here's the replay. Roche with the shot. Rebound comes off. Shot by Trudell. Nestled right in there in the stick in the post. That one into the corner. Hakana moves that up the boards. Here's Dominic Kelly. Dancing with the puck on the Side boards and now picked up by Rafi Torres. Torres has a little trouble finding the puck. And he's bumped off of it. Cross ice. Bergeron grabs a hold. He's going to work with Commissaric. Tipped up. Torres trying to get a stick on it. That didn't work out. Bayou collides with Hins. Here's Bill Lindsay. Tries to cut in with it. Puts it back out. Couldn't get it out front. Now Torres knocks it up. And the arrows come back out with it. All bunched up in the middle. Trying to cut around out front. Here it is. No. Conklin stopped that one. In the armpit. He spread eagle in the goal crease. And the puck lands in his armpit underneath his, underneath his right arm. Outstretched. Stick side. Caffeine don't need it. <laughs> There's the replay. And you can see the puck actually in that particular angle. Which comfortably. <laughs> it's like it's magnetic. It knows these goaltenders. It goes to them. It's all it's been hitting for seven periods. Why wouldn't it go? <laughs> Keep hearing that Chevy Chase sound effect from uh, Caddyshack. <laughs> Hosa comes across the line, but Ryder offside on the play. In case you're unfamiliar and you've tuned in to find the late night show, well, I'll tell you what, this is it. We're at one apiece. Here in the fourth overtime, the Bulldogs and the Arrows, the longest game in Calder Cup final history. Started out being played in front of 10,419. Sometime Wednesday night. That's right. <laughs> Click and it goes chasing that. McCallick. Moves that one back. Rita goes in chasing. Back behind the net. Mechanic goes in trying to get that one. Ballet digging for it. Along the near boards. Put up and out. Henderson with it. Comes across the line. Takes the shot. Conklin comes up with the save. And now for the first time the Houston Arrows have the lead in shots on goal 74-73. Nah, there's many periods for the Bulldogs to resume that lead though. Probably <laughs> <laughs> young fans still here at Cops. Conklin probably thinking, hey, that was a 
Pretty easy save considering the last two. And the fans are resorting to anything to entertain themselves. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that is. It's a rally <laughs> snake, perhaps. Well, they had a pregame party. Tailgate party here at uh, Cops Coliseum. They could have a sleepover pretty soon. Rogers making s'mores. Travis Roach back for that puck. Hosa trying to lift it from him. Ryder trying to get in there and bump him off the puck. Hakana now. Bergeron. Bergeron moves it up to Ryder. He lets it go by him. Benesik moves that puck along for the arrows. Torres gets a stick on it, knocks it down. Now the Bulldogs trying to set something up here in order to make something happen. Here's Lindsay across the line and trying to get it to Hins, bouncing out front. And Holmquist didn't have to touch that one. Back the other way. Pavlikovsky at the line. Sliding along to Dominic Kelly, and he had some help on the backside from Trudell, but he went on the goaltender, and Conklin stopped that one. Out front again, loose puck still there. Hins picks it up. Five and a half off the clock. Reaching for it, here's Hins. He didn't know where he was going with that one. It's all just happening out here. Hainsey. Picks that puck up, he's looking out front. He doesn't have a lot of options, but he tips that one forward and he goes off. No one moving up ice any faster than he was behind him. No. Back out through center, that one travels the length. Allen goes back for it. Not a real serious chase from Lundvig. Not gonna waste his energy going after an icing call. 6.02 off the clock. This is, uh, as it says, a new AHL record. The longest game in AHL playoff history. And just, uh, that's the Calder Cup Finals, actually. The longest in Calder Cup Final history. The longest in history, and we've got time. Is <laughs> a South Division semifinal back in uh, 82. New Haven beat Rochester at the 74 minute mark of overtime. And that's just overtime. 74.08 actually. Oh, we've got time. And just a reminder here, the Toronto Supra, not the Arrows, the Toronto Supra on the Hamilton Thunder is rescheduled for Monday at 8 p.m. There is we talk. apologize of course to all the soccer fans that tuned in looking for that. There's talk that could be moved to Tuesday if the game's still going. <laughs> Chopping that one away is Henderson, but offside was Tuzzolino. The Canadian Professional Soccer League, as they attempt to bring a title to Hamilton this year, they're a good team last year. And they claim to be better this year, and the idea is that eventually Hamilton will end up in, uh, I'm sure, a higher league is uh, the intention. Maybe the A League, which is a fairly solid league in uh, the U.S. right now and parts of Canada. Bergeron going back for that one, touches it up for icing. They'll bring it back. Six and a half minutes. A lot of icing calls over the last couple of overtime periods as the passing breaks down, the accuracy's gone. Ability to stretch that extra stride for the puck. Well, you can't argue anything in the way of not getting your money's worth tonight. Off the draw, the shy. That one comes back behind the net. Diamond moves it along to Hogan. Hogan goes cross ice. Lands on the stick of A.U. Tavosi sends the shot in. Conklin knocks it away, and the rebound was tricky, and it's picked up by Shamalainen. Back the other way, Shamalainen goes chasing. Tops at it, and Holmquist had covered it up. Took the extra whack. Shamalainen still had the legs for that flurry. Holmquist got the trapper down to make the stop. Johan Holmquist. Native of Tulfta, Sweden. See Samalina cut around the Houston defense and just arrives just about the same time. As Holmquist got the trapper down to get the whistle. 
Off the draw, battle for the puck. Cullen picks it up. Pavlikovsky's bucket on the ice. Benesek, pass up for Trudell. That one knocked back the other way. Benesek again, tried to fire that one in. And offside go the Houston Arrows. And the mistakes being made now, I don't know if you could even call them that. Fatigue. And, and, and let's realize this isn't the first game in the first round of the playoffs either. These teams have been through a fair bit to get this far. That's 17 games each they have gone through. On top of the regular season. On top of your 80 game regular season, so. In the preseason. Okay. The training camp. Yes. Suffice to say it was a long time ago. <laughs> This game started. And don't shortchange the time. <laughs> Absolutely not. Down into the corner. Trying to get loose. The Houston Arrows. Trying to get something done in the way of uh, getting past Ty Conklin, though the Bulldogs are doing the same at the other end of the ice. Cullen going back for that one. Fires that up ice. Hainsey stops it from going the length. Finds Ryder. No help there. Ryder tipped it. Nobody there to pick it up. Collision. Hosa picks it up. Fires a hard one, but Helen gets in the way of that. Now coming out with it, the Houston Arrows trying to find something in the way of some room. Here's Dominic Kelly. He's dangerous. There's a shot. It goes wide. And Conklin may have got a piece of it. Along the near boards, Trudell sends one in there. That was off into the far corner. Dominic Kelly will try again. Spinning around, and Komasarik breaks up a play that Murphy had designs on. Slides out front, hard shot, big rebound. Conklin good for it, and here comes Rafi Torres along for Bill Lindsay. Lindsay the shot, the rebound! Home twist is there again. Torres can't believe it as he collapses to the ice. Rafi Torres looked like he could end this one. Bill Lindsay was going to be a part of it as well. Lindsay cuts to the net here. Inside of his check, frees up his stick, gets the backhand away, the rebound's there. Up into the trapper. Torres robs his, looks to the heavens. Torres, of course, over from the Islander organization, Toronto native. Placanic tries to pull that one in toward the net. Doesn't work out, but it's kept in. Ballet battling. Now it rolls out. Bergeron, careful with it. Working with Beauchemin. Placanic off his stick, rolls into the corner. Diamond goes after it. It's Ballet without the bucket on out there. Sent back out. Hainsey tried to send it back the other way. Bergeron puts it into the skates of Placanic, and that rolls over there by the bench. And finally, as it's knocked off, and into the bench of the Houston Arrows, they'll get a whistle and a face-off. And these two teams, I'll tell you, they're taking any rest they can possibly get. They get a new puck. Ballet gets his helmet back. It's a lot of skating, not only for uh, Bruiser. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of, of dancing for Bruiser. Hainsey in behind the net. Tried to shovel it back the other way. Hins gets over there for it. Hainsey now does get it up and out. David Cullen is there to pick it up for the Arrows. Nine and a half off the clock. Picked up by Lindsay again. And now ahead to Hins. Hins backhands it down the boards. Torres goes chasing. Bumps his man off the puck, but Cullen covers it up nicely. And the whistle. And the Bulldogs will get a key face off here. Deep inside Houston territory. And not only are the players going through, of course, uh, one heck of a workout here, but of course, the officials also, who do a heck of a lot of skating out there, the referee, is logging some serious time as far as that's concerned. And mileage. Yeah. Mileage. Stole off the draw, Bergeron. Trying to flip one in there, and oh. pops off his stick. Back the other way. One big tries to lean in and jam it. <laughs> and himself past Conklin, and that doesn't work out. 
Needs to go. Tenders will stop anything. Players, park, whatever. What? <laughs> What an unbelievable game these two goaltenders are having. Shots on goal by the Arrows, 79, and one player, and uh, by the Bulldogs, 76. And they'll drop this one to the glove side of Ty Conklin. Oh my. Anything, somehow. Bobby Allen puts that off the boards. Good back check by the uh, Hamilton defender in that play as well. But. Lift it up, and Tuzzolino saw the thing the whole way. He's looking for a can of corn, and he just dropped at his feet. Bobby Allen takes a shortcut, sends it up the boards. That hits the linesman. They'll try and bring this one back in. Hogan tried to stay on side. Kabosi, the shot! Rebounds there. Boschamon is able to clear it away, and he finds Jason Ward. Ward couldn't get that pass through. It was back the other way, but Cavosi had not come across the blue line yet. Nice shot by Cavosi there. Partial screen up on Conklin, caught it up in the seam of the shoulder. What, are you losing your voice? A little bit. <laughs> just a touch. I'll tell you, those guys back at the studio just look fagged. <laughs> they just look like they got no gas left. At least nobody has to look at us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Komisarek now goes back with it behind his own net. Here's Hins. He gets up through center, moves it along for Lindsay. Lindsay moves along Torres. Torres the shot. Blocker saved by Holmquist. Hins now. Still working the puck. Goes up high. Komisarek the shot. Goes wide. Hainsy the shot. Rebound. No! Let's go wide by Hins. He could have ended it. Back the other way come the arrows. A lot of energy expended there by the Hamilton Bulldogs on that rush. A good line for Jeff Ward. Here's Trudell, a little backhander. Oh, a great opportunity for Kluche. Couldn't get the stick on it. Placanic looks up front. Lindsay coming to the bench. Placanic going to try and do it all alone. Just tries to dump it in there, hoping he had some help. Ballet had not quite got there yet. It kept in. Cluche now drags it out. Bergeron goes cross to Ballet. He tries to feed the long to Rita. Rita's got Placanic too. The shot. Holmquist played that rebound beautifully. 12 minutes off the clock here. Henderson gets down there, and Bergeron. Took a swipe at it, gained control onto the backhand of Rita. Rita's got some room. Takes the shot. Blocker saved by Holmquist. 80 shots apiece now. Oh, we've got too many men call. Oh, they're looking. Both sides are looking for anything. <laughs> anything for an edge. 7.43. Oh, just indicating the changes. Not the way the puck had gone up in front of the bench. 7.43 left here at Cops Coliseum. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm not quite clear yet. Just going to check on the record book there. <laughs> Michael Ryder and Jared Stoll working on the puck. Bobby Allen has it hop over his stick, tries to go to the backhand. Wallene keeps it in. Pauline picks it up again, throws one across the crease. Juan Vig couldn't get to that one. Up and out. Mayu comes across the line again. Takes the shot. Conklin the save. He'll hang on. Ty Conklin has faced 81 shots. Yes, this is the new AHL record. Longest game in Calder Cup Finals. We're real close to setting the entire record. We'll let you know. <laughs> Selma lining down in the corner. We're going to announce that part really loud so that you hear it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dumped way down the ice. Holmquist will let it go. Cullen picks it up. Icing waved off. 
Up at the line, Komasarek tries to drift a hard one in there. Bashai throws it at the net, hoping it hit something and went in. Jeff Hogan gets it along to Tuzzolino. Tuzzolino looks in, and he tried to find Hogan back in the slot. There's a turn on it. Hainsey sends it up the boards, and that one gets by Trudell. Icing waved off. He wasn't ready. He just <laughs> nice, popped nice off the try. bench. <laughs> Six and a half. Left to go here in the fourth overtime. Lindsay catches in the glove. Nearly made a good play at second base. Tip back to <laughs> Pavlikovsky who dumps it back in. Mount staff getting punchy. <laughs> you betcha. You could say anything now and you couldn't hold me accountable. Oh. That one fired over into the bench of the Houston Arrows. That's a long one. They'll drop it back inside the blue line of the Hamilton Bulldogs. Roger now checking the time, trying to figure out if, in fact, we have eclipsed. 12 seconds will do it. The all-time. Longest overtime game in playoff history in the American Hockey League. Off the draw, that one. Allen will pick up. Allen trying to escape with it. Ballet gets it up and out, and that one will slide the length. Well, it won't quite get there. Roche goes back for it. And now we have the longest game in playoff history in the American Hockey League. One pops over Conklin's stick, and he fires it softly up the boards. Plokanek picks it up. He's got Ballet over there. He gets it on the stick. Ballet hangs up. Throws a backhander in there. Thought he had some help, but the Bulldogs were on the change. Back the other way. Across the blue line. Tuzzolino winds up. Hard shot. Big save. Rebound still there. Conklin didn't see it. And Wally could not find a way to get it past him. Two to three more stops for Conklin. The longest game ever played in the American Hockey League. And this crowd is happy to find out that they are part of the longest <laughs> game in American Hockey League history. That is, uh, that is playoff history. I believe only. I believe you are correct. It is. Hainsey moves that puck up along the far boards. It's kept in. Hard to believe a regular season game could have gone longer. Though. <laughs> Here's Ryder, the shot, he scores! Michael Ryder ends it! Michael Ryder ends it! 2-1, the Bulldogs win game two of the Calder Cup. On a bleeder, Holmquist had a hold of it in the trapper. Flopped out of the trapper and rolled in behind him. And that is the kind of goal you'd expect four overtimes in. There's the replay. He just caught the very tail end of it. Ryder with the big shot. Holmquist Trapper lets it go. Ty Conklin faced 84 shots and now Kluge is furious. He's knocked the net off its mooring to the Hamilton end went right after the referee. And it looked like a moment he was going to go after Ty Conklin. And Conklin raises his arms as he comes to the bench stopping 83 of 84 shots Kluche may find himself in big trouble from the league this game ends 1456 into the fourth overtime and the replay of the goal and the Bulldogs have won game two in the most dramatic fashion. Yeah, they go off the ice. Ron Hainsey, the last of the tired Warriors, make their way down the tunnel. Michael Ryder started it, and Michael Ryder ended it. What an unbelievable game. There is not much that couldn't have happened in this game. No, we saw it all. Multiple penalties in overtime, let alone one. And that is Michael Ryder's 10th of the playoffs. 
Unbelievable goal. Just the fans leapt to their feet when it dribbled across the line. Hosa gets the assist. Hainsey gets an assist. And the time, 14.56 in overtime. You know it's late in the game when the dance teams change back into street clothes. <laughs> and I do not think, well, the three stars could probably even make it back out. But we will hang in for just a little bit in case they do. We don't see any players down in the tunnel, but... Uh, We'll just let you know who they are. What a game. Here are the three stars. The third star is Michael Ryder. And the crowd is appreciative of Ryder's effort tonight with two goals, the opener and the closer. And Johan Holmquist gets the second star, deservedly so, facing 81 shots, stopping 79. And here's the star of the game, Ty Conklin, facing 84 and stopping 83. I cannot believe I'm even saying that. Jared Stoll gets the spark plug of the game. And the final is two to one, just like it was in the first game, however, just a little bit more time was played, Roger. I even hesitate to ask your analysis, but go ahead. What a crazy contest, back and forth, and and I think it and probably boils down to the two two most uh, symbolic uh, team traits I think for the rest of the series, and that is if Houston decides to pressure that Hamilton defense, Hamilton's defense gets cautious, overly cautious, takes too much time. Uh, that'll obviously take care of the Bulldogs in the series. At the same token, if the Bulldogs still continue to take advantage of speed up the wings, especially in the neutral zone, especially on that second pass, and bring that pressure into the Houston zone with their team speed, which I think Houston has an issue with, it's going to go the Bulldogs' way. The goaltending is going to saw off. They, they both got a win, and both have been outstanding. Well, <laughs> if the panel is still cognizant, if all their higher functions are still working we will in fact uh, get some great game analysis i'm todd crocker with roger turnin let's head back to the studio guy hey glenn glenn <laughs> stay with us buddy <laughs> it's <laughs> over Food here? Uh, it's over folks sure. <laughs> want to thank todd and roger and especially uh steve coulson and all our volunteers down at the Coliseum. They put in a yo some of them been there since noon today. Wow. They're volunteers helping us bring the big win of the Hamilton Bulldogs to you. Thanks to them. Thanks to those of us uh, here at the studio too. All our volunteers. When I say us, I mean all our volunteers Hello. here helping us. So Hello. I want to just thank them for doing that. Big win and a must win. Game, as we said off the top, in game two of every series so far, the Bulldogs don't lose. They do it again tonight. Took a while, yeah but they got it done. Michael Ryder with a big blast. A little bit of a screen, a little bit of controversy. The net may be coming off at the other end, guys, but a uh, big goal by Michael Ryder, Rick. No, oh, certainly. I mean, and uh, Glenn can attest to this mostly everything. He says Ryder's got to get a shot off because it's big and heavy. And as we saw, Holmquist handled every puck well, pretty well, other than the one that was thrown on him tonight. And the heavy shot beat him. He could not snag that puck with a glove hand. He got a piece of it, but it wasn't enough to keep it out of the net. Great win for the Bulldogs. I mean, again, they go in the Houston 1-1 better than, as we know. You don't have to be a genius to think uh, it's better than 2-0. Uh, so. One of the great uh, things on the ice tonight, one of the best skaters anyway, we thought may, might mm -hmm. have been Jason Ward. Scott. Jason Ward was, so we t said right off the top that Jason Ward is in every game, is a, is a factor in every game the Bulldogs play that he's playing. And, uh, and you know, the spark plug of the game went to Jarrett Stoll. I think everyone here pretty much agrees it could have been Jason Ward too. He was involved. Uh, at times he took a beating. He got... Uh, his head squeezed into the boards in that one play and uh, looked like he may not ever get up, but uh, he did, and then he had that big collision. Mm -hmm. But uh, but he stayed involved in, I think, in every period. He was he was a factor in just about every period. And I just want to say, for the record, you were right. The next goal was a big one. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Glenn, the, uh, the goalies, the, both of them played great, and they both looked fresh through all that overtime as well. Well, we were talking about that as we were watching, and, and uh, uh, I just I, I, I really like the way that uh, both Ty 
and Johan, they, they stay square to the puck. They Both of them are in such a groove. They're in such a zone right now where it, it takes a, 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 that type of shot that uh, that's going to beat them to uh, to win a game. But those two guys going post to post, uh, covering the wraparounds, up and down, uh, they were really, even though there's three goals in the game, with the number of shots, you could say they're basically they were flawless. The longest game in AHL playoff history here tonight in Hamilton. Bulldogs 2, the Houston Arrows 1, and let's take a look at the winning goal by Michael Ryder. Who had him in the pool? Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, simply. Again, guys backing up the backing up the defenseman allows them to tee it up. I mean, it's a great play. But, but such a going standard the thing. But that's such a standard thing. We've talked about that. And what happens there is you get the guy going to the net, it makes a little bit of a gap, gives him an opportunity to tee it up just over top of the circles. So you know if he's got a good shot, that's a great place to shoot the puck. And we said Holmquist couldn't handle the puck. So and the, the, that player going to the net is also a distraction. In the yeah, well, that's that, sure. I you mean, know, you, you, you know, all that two little thing. Plus, three other players. Pl plus, you're shooting past the two D. Yeah. So I think it was you know great way to end the game. A long game, the longest in history in the eight uh, American Hockey League Calder Cup, anyways. And a uh, great win, a big win for them. Guys, I just I, I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, you got the I, winning I, guy. No, no, in the no, pool. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I okay. had him in the pool for fun. Yeah, yeah. for fun. <laughs> bragging yeah. rights. Yeah, bragging rights. That's it. Um, for uh, for the Bulldogs to win, oh, like, well, while you're talking, we'll throw out the panel pick so you can brag. <laughs> okay, about it. okay. There you go. Oh, who had Ryder? There yeah. we go. There well, I go. thought maybe Brad would change it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I thought they were coming up, that's what I thought he was going to do. Let Let me ask you this, Steve. Um, with the Bulldogs, they, they seem to be, we've been, we were on them a little bit at the beginning of the game and, and, and how they might have been not just off kilter a little bit. Winning like this, getting that even strength goal, do they have the monkey off their back now? Winning like this going into Houston, does that give them the confidence? To, are they where they want to be now? I think they certainly do a must-win game at home. It gives them the confidence. They hadn't scored even strength. Very important. They've solved that. They can... Play with confidence now down on the road. Houston, though, they're going to come out in their own barn. They're going to be they're going to be ticked off because they've had some issues with the refereeing there at the end. Maybe the net was off. Maybe they're not. This series is anyone's game right now, and I think what that does, Hamilton fans, is it sets up. I think for sure we're going to see a game six back here in Hamilton. There's no neither of these teams is going to go down and sweep three in Houston and that basically assures us of a game six and let's set the next games up for you before we go off the air tonight. Game three will take place next Wednesday down in Houston that will be an 8 p.m. start or sorry 8.30 correction 8 p.m. start on uh, 8.20 Cham to catch the action there. Derek Wills and Al Craig will bring all the Bulldog Calder Cup action for the rest of the way. Then possible TV games Games four and five, next Friday, a week yesterday now, an 8.30 tip-off, and Saturday. It's very probable that those could be TV games, so check the listings for that. or Check the paper, check the website, check wherever, find out if those games are TV games. And if not, of course, all the action again on 820 Chan with Derek Wills and Al Craig. Then, folks, don't leave it. Get your tickets, because there will be a game six. And get your tickets for that coming back to Hamilton, and that is Monday, June 9th. Houston back at Hamilton, and if necessary, a Game 7, Houston and Hamilton, Thursday, June the 12th. Guys, you think it's coming back to Hamilton? Are, are they playing Houston? Because you kept reminding yeah. everybody <laughs> Houston and Hamilton. Yeah. I like to think that it's coming back to Hamilton. Uh, we saw a great showing tonight. And great. It takes a lot of heart to play that long and, and that well, and I think Hamilton proved to, I mean, the Bulldogs proved to Hamiltonians that all showed up tonight that they have a big heart. Scott, final thoughts. I think that uh, when this series started, there was a bunch of people, and I think rightly so, who were a little bit miffed at the big break between the first two mm -hmm. games in Hamilton, then the games in Houston, then back in Hamilton. I think a lot of the players right now are awfully thankful they don't play again until Wednesday. It gives them a few days to recover. Glenn, your final thoughts. I, you know, I just really like the way uh, the Bulldogs, uh, we talked about the game kind of being tilted. They came out in that last overtime period, and they, they played. And uh, I was really encouraged. Marc Andre Bergeron uh, had a had a good period. Uh, some of the guys who were, seemed to be struggling a little bit really started to come together. And with them winning, I really believe that that uh, that is they have the monkey off their back. I really believe that the Bulldogs that we know are going to be fired up and ready to take on Houston in Houston. The exciting part for me was seeing the crowd reaction at uh, one o'clock in the morning, one o four a.m., and they just leapt 
out of their seats and that you could certainly feel the excitement in the Cops Coliseum and that was good to see. Thanks to the 10,000 plus that uh, saw it there tonight and thank you for joining us here. Before we go off the air, we just want to again remind you, uh, programming note. Uh, that